Okay. Well, uh, as we wait for chat to trickle in, as they say, mm-hmm. uh, let's there we <laughs> discuss what the occasion is. Uh, hello, everybody. Today we are going to be convening for a, not after dark, not in any time zone that we're affiliated with, uh, a before no. dark, you could say, a during the day, or even perhaps a regular stream that people with normal sleep schedules light, could be expected to attend. Maybe. A daylight stream? <laughs> nah, who'd sign up for something like that? And today we are here to discuss the edgy bad boys of fiction, the hero's right-hand guy who likes complaining about being the hero's right-hand guy. And we've got a list, and we're going to be uh, ranking them on a, on a very scientific scale from S tier to F. Tier list. Tier list. Tier, tier list. list. Lancer time, baby. In Lancer time. We've been sitting on this for so long. Uh, for those of you uh, who typically watch us when we upload videos at uh 11 a.m eastern time uh on fridays uh the reason we did not do that today is because we put up a video at uh 12 eastern time yesterday uh fernando v movies cross channel collaboration this year uh one musical scene uh check it out if you missed it it's a lot of fun uh but we uh i personally felt kind of bad about not giving you any tasty video content today so i dragooned the others and we're gonna talk about something that's sort of in the same dimension as a trope talk so i figure it counts (laughs) We've been press ganged. You know that thing where you're minding your own business and then a (laughs) sailor for the British Navy comes up, knocks on your door, is like, hello, good sir, would you like to fight the French? And you say what? And then he knocks you out and you wake up on the deck of a ship in the middle of the Caribbean. (laughs) We've all been there. Do you have a compass that points to the thing you want most? Or is that uh, something you have to find on your own time? Because if it's not provided, I'm sorry, I'm I'm going to take my chances with the sea <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows floggings will continue until morale improves anyway yes so typically my act of chaos is hijacking the channel for myself but this time i've increased my chaos with participation of my friends so uh Yay. we've got yeah <laughs> it's the power of friendship uh so we have a a nice tasty list all right <laughs> Hey, I saw it in chat. It's, it's fair game. Oh, is it? Is it? All right. I guess we'll get to it after all these other, all these other all bad boys. Oi. Okay. Uh, whoo. Classic bad boy behavior. Right <laughs> I feel like we should maybe, you know, because we do these tier lists of different character types or types of genres or what have you. And I think it's important, you know, when we did the himbo list, obviously we started with Kronk because Kronk is the definition of a himbo and it was very idea. exemplary. Do we, do we want to uh, state the definition of a, a lancer for the audience just so they know what the scale that we're comparing all these characters to is yeah yeah i, be- I believe we can do that uh now typically the lancer uh exists as a role in the five-man band but lancers can exist in character dynamics of any size uh in a five-man band the lancer is the character who is the hero's like primary foil like right hand guy but also like the person who's most likely to be like huh, father should have chosen me you know that kind of thing it's it's the knuckles mm-hmm. to your sonic it's the raphael to your leonardo it's the other red themed person to a blue themed person not naming any names of course <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, sometimes it's the indigo themed person the red person who oh knows? yeah you can mix oh yeah I've, I've definitely seen that one a whole bunch <laughs> I, leave? I, I, feel, I don't know if I'm needed here I feel like this is all the lancer energy <laughs> no no what it's too many we need lancers. Blue, it's... we need someone to lance, so it's yeah. appropriate that we stay here. Yeah. Uh, in the video I made about the lancer role a while back, I, I mentioned that the name lancer comes from uh, a, an actual like medieval like position in the military, a, a horse rider who fought with a spear but wasn't a knight. Like, almost as good and potentially just as qualified, but not quite with that like heroic panache that we all expect. Uh, Lancers are frequently defined by uh, kind of rankling under being second best to the protagonist, but not always. You know, Lancer mostly exists to be a foil to the hero, so whoever the hero is, that kind of determines what kind of a Lancer they're going to get. Um, now, our uh, our tasty list has a pretty good iconic Lancer as the very first entry. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So shall we shall we pop this bad boy in here? Yeah, and just to kind of remind chat how this works, we have a list of Lancers that we came up with together, um, and we're going to try and power through that, and maybe at the end we'll take some suggestions from chat, but if you haven't heard your favorite Lancer yet, um, hang tight, they might be on the list, and then at the end, maybe we can circle back around, but uh, just to head off any potential spam in the chat now, (laughs) um, 
please be patient. We will get through the Lancers oh my, in the appropriate time. Oh, get over there. I will ban you personally if oh, you spam me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't uh, no, 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 no. tempt anyone. <laughs> Don't tempt Once me, again, Frodo. Paying. Get in the. Uh, but our first Lancer of the day. I'm just trying. Man There's who a... knows how to rock a vest, Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Han Solo. Yes. Han uh, Solo. Han. Named by an Imperial officer, Solo. <laughs> All right, wait. Sh uh, show of hands, who here saw Solo, a Star Wars story? Uh, I watched I it on an airplane. All right, yeah. that counts. That's yeah. more people than I've ever been in a group with who've watched Solo before. <laughs> um, yeah, I... Uh -huh. eh, it eh. was... Not as Perfectly bad fine. as like all the like <laughs> the press leading up to it would have you believe because it was like oh the they had to get an acting coach and it was like Alden Ehrenreich was good it was just the rest of the movie was kind of dull yeah <laughs> on principle uh, I didn't like it because the character went through a whole arc in the original trilogy and this just sort of had the, he meant he had to end this movie in a terrible place in order for that arc to happen mm. um, but the movie itself is just completely like fine, fine like, that's yeah. the only word i could really use to describe it like, there's nothing bad about it necessarily there's just nothing really great either that's it's just it sort yeah of perfectly mediocre fine. not particularly <laughs> yeah. exceptional great airplane movie yeah uh, <laughs> it's a space western it's like a feature-length episode of firefly with a slightly less charismatic protagonist it's yeah. fine uh but han solo's primary lancer energy is of course not when he is the main character it's when he's not the mm -hmm. main character it's when he's hanging mm -hmm. out with our boy luke I don't know fuck all about anything Skywalker. <laughs> That's when uh, Han, yeah. I know everything about everything because I'm street smart solo comes in and, and gets to gets to lancer it up, gets to lance like a, a classic lancer. So what are you guys feeling for this one? I feel like we can't really put him S rank because he's like no. iconic, but he's not particularly exceptional as it were. Uh, and he kind of gets yeah, along well, I mean, too well with Luke. This is, we should maybe discuss like, you know, what a lancer exists in opposition to a hero in many ways, like how they... Uh, oppose their respective leader, heart, whatever At they're in lancing. contrast, maybe not Yeah, opposition. contrast is mm -hmm, a better word. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, when we're considering where do we place him, how does Han contrast Luke, in this case, who's his respective right. Lancey? Uh, <laughs> I'd say the main thing is that uh, Luke it starts in the movie uh, earnest and naive and Han starts the movie uh, jaded and not naive. He he's very worldly mm -hmm. and and he's got like kind of a dark and brooding past, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I I think that perhaps their lancer dynamic is slightly foiled by the fact that as soon as Leia shows up, her sheer strength of personality kind of completely eclipses Luke whenever they're on yeah. screen at the same time because yeah. she's just <laughs> so much more fun than him. And then her and Han get that adorable dynamic going and have a much better sort of like back and forth dynamic mm -hmm. uh so while han still factors into the story as a foil to luke it's almost like he sort of drops that almost as soon as the first movie is over yeah it doesn't feel like he his character exists necessarily to foil luke because a lot of luke's conflict does not come from their particular little band of heroes so much yeah. as it does from the external conflict with the antagonists and the sith so I don't think Han is like a, an S or an A tier, a -tier Lancer for me. I yeah. can see him maybe being in the B tier because he's not bad when he is Lancing, but it's not enough of his character to rank him particularly uh, high for I me. I think personally. I'm okay with B tier too. What do you think, Blue? Yeah, I, I think B is is a good call. There, there's definitely an argument to be made that Han's characterization survives contact with Leia entering the plot a lot better than Luke's does. Oh, that's uh, true. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because he can uh, like because... sass back, but Luke just doesn't know how to fucking handle it. Yeah, he he yeah. crumples like a like a wet blanket as soon as Leia enters the 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 scene. I feel like um, we don't so talk I... enough about how much of a fun subversion that is because the first time we see Leia in the hologram, she's like like we got tinkly piano music and she's like, "You absolutely must save me. I'm a princess in distress." And then the first time we see her in person, she's like, "Your rescue plan sucks." Out of the way, bitch! And it's like, oh, give me the gun, short, idiot! Short yeah, troopers, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I love her. Yeah. I love her so much. No, All right. Great. So Han Solo has been enshrined. Han Solo's been placed in the tasty so who B read... tier. Who's next on the Blansters? Oh, tier I list? think we're gonna who like this one, and I, I oh, think boy. I know where I want to put him. Uh -huh. It's Samwise the Brave, motherfuckers! Uh -huh. It's the true <laughs> hero of Lord of the Rings. Best boy. Yes. Now I will say, despite my personal biases. I think it's important that we not just measure Sam based on how good of a character he is, but how good of a lancer mm -hmm. he is. That, exactly. That, how yes. how good We're of a foil. To determine yes. 
yeah, rank of character, it's rank of Lancer-ness. Exactly. That said, I still think he's S-tier for me. I think that, uh, <laughs> that Sam serves so. as an excellent foil to Frodo, that, you know, they, they go through very similar tribulations, but, mm-hmm. like, Frodo's being, like, actively, like, crushed under it, while Sam is basically suffering through seeing his best friend being actively crushed under something he can't figure out how to help him with. Uh, Sam's a straight-up sword-swinging badass in the, in the books and the movies, uh, actively resists the pull of the ring uh, because it can't find anything to tempt him with and it's not on him long enough to just wear him down. Uh, so Sam is uh, the best and the real MVP of the books, and I think that uh, I think Sam is so good that it makes people think Frodo is worse than he is Um, (laughs) because Frodo's not bad Frodo's whole story is a tragedy it's not his fault he got absolutely he pushed himself to the breaking point and got the ring absolutely as far as he could and no further Mm -hmm. and that's not a failing (laughs) yeah but Sam and Frodo obviously aren't in different stories but Red you're Mm -hmm. exactly right that Frodo is basically the the protagonist in a tragedy Mm -hmm. whereas Sam is like the protagonist of a you know of a hero kind of story so there's a lot to be said for how much like i think you know sam carries the the plot and is the, the only one who accomplishes anything is overstated um <laughs> mm-hmm. but there's a lot to be said for how much sam improves and helps frodo and is able to not you know do anything for him necessarily well in a couple instances yeah i think um, sam is an interesting case but, for a lancer yeah. too because i think when people think of a lancer they typically think like oh you know this is the the edgy side character who's yep. constantly butting heads with the hero but sam and frodo are undeniably uh at the very least friends and <laughs> <laughs> there it and, is you know I, but that does not necessarily make him not a lancer yeah. um that's just a different example of the possibilities of the lancer right. hero dynamic um it's like the right hand so i lancer yeah, exactly. And I do think he belongs in one of those those top two tiers, even I though I think it is often over he's often overlooked as a classic lancer because of that friendlier relationship, uh, but mm-hmm. with his respective character that he's spoiling. Yeah. Um I would say that some of the edge in book three. He a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, not as much Ooh. as in the movie with uh But the, if you're comparing him to some of the conflict. other lancers on this list, which you know <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um <laughs> the thing that I think like if we if we're to lock down a single characteristic that Sam has that contrasts Frodo, it is and I I don't know how to say this in a way that doesn't sound unnecessarily harsh to Frodo, it's loyalty. Frodo is constantly yeah. running off on his own and trying to handle everything himself, even though he really doesn't want to, and it's like, oh we've we've compiled the fellowship. Just kidding. Frodo's fucking off on his own. Okay, uh, great, fantastic. I guess we're splitting the party forever. Uh, and then, of course, it's like, no, Sam, I'm going off alone. Of course you are, and I'm going with you. And it's like, that's my boy. So uh, essentially, the fact that Frodo really does feel like he has to handle everything absolutely alone and at his side the entire time is the most loyal motherfucker on the face of Middle Earth, Samwise Gamgee. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that makes an excellent foil dynamic between the two and highlights Sam's role as an unconventional but absolutely top-tier Lancer. So my yeah. vote is for S-tier. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get him on the board. If only for self-preservation, we got to put Sam in S. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we first dropped the name, chat exploded. So we, we absolutely yeah, like, have I to. mean, if we want to stay above 2 million subscribers, we got to honor <laughs> this. <laughs> aye, aye. Okay, let me just add this other boy, this this yeah. complicated boy, this edgy boy, you mm. could say. Let me just get this 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 dubious yeah, of this morally dubious edgy. boy <laughs> it's not he's not one of my favorite morally dubious edgy characters on this list but he's gotcha. an important one he's pretty important i'd say uh it's the indomitable bucky barnes aka the winter soldier aka captain mm. america's best friend historians say <laughs> you know that guy <laughs> Uh, a lot of that going around to the Lancers. <laughs> <laughs> what, man? It's, it's not, oh, it's got to be gay just because the most important person in your life is your homie. Whatever. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Um, now, the, the thing that I think kind of hurts Bucky is that as soon as he becomes an interesting character, he's also, by virtue of being Winter Soldierified, separated from the person he exists to be a foil to. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing as even in, even if we're just taking the MCU canon as the only... Uh, as the only one we're using, uh, Bucky spends most of his time as the Winter Soldier trying not to hang out with Steve. <laughs> so yeah. he, his problem is that he he essentially is an antagonist with baggage as opposed <laughs> to a lancer. Yeah, and then when he upgrades yeah. to 
not an antagonist. He is the baggage, as he spends most of Civil War basically being the, the damsel in distress du jour. Uh, so I think that despite him really fitting the aesthetic, and it, it's like the only real juicy bit of the typical Lancer dynamic we get is the brainwashed best friend fight. And then outside of that, they don't really hang out, which kind yeah, of minimizes I would say, like, it. Bucky and the Winter Soldier, by exception, aren't necessarily the Lancer for Captain America, because it's not that they're contrasting their characters outside of the parallel of both, you know, men out of time situations. Right. Because Cap wasn't really necessarily in danger of becoming the Winter Soldier at any point. So no. you're not getting a lot of, like, we're not so different element <laughs> that sometimes pops up in Lancer relationships. And Cap I mean... is also contrasted with a lot of the other members of the Avengers or wider Marvel. Like, I would say a better Lancer for Cap would be like an Iron Man. Cap, Iron yeah. Man. Cap, Tony. <laughs> Iron Man. The whole point of the Avengers. <laughs> oh, we've got him. Yeah. We've got him on the list. He's on there somewhere at yeah. least. Yeah. We'll um, get there. We'll get there. But yeah, so I, I think, think this does take something away from Bucky's Lancer status. I that agree. He is not the strongest character to contrast with Captain America or Steve or whatever. Um, and he quickly loses any of the points of contrast once he's no longer actively a villain and kind of more of just a, yeah. well, I, I yeah, I go hang out with the Falcon for a bunch of time. <laughs> as, as far as like the, du the duo of, of Steve and Bucky is concerned, it's not so much like a hero Lancer pairing as it is a hero heart pairing mm. i think <laughs> i don't know if that's fully true but that thought came to me and i wanted to express it so I think, I think that might be like how i'm kind of seeing the way that this discussion is going well here's the thing i think you're right because in every movie where bucky plays a major part it's literally because he gets kidnapped and <laughs> steve has to yeah. rescue him because that's mm -hmm. what happens in captain america is what happens in winter soldier if you count the brainwashing thing you know they, they do the tuxedo mask thing with him the the thing mm -hmm. they did to every shoujo romance character yeah. in the 90s uh, he doesn't do much lancing no he really doesn't do that much no. lancing he mostly just kind of exists in the movie and doesn't seem happy about it at any point <laughs> up to and including I, I don't know if i'm worth all this steve it's like you shut up man the entire movie's happening yeah. because of you of course you're worth it uh, I, I, he is a very important character but as a lancer i would throw him in d, d? and i feel bad Ooh. about that but i'm gonna put him i'm, I'm gonna Honestly? say d all right. Yeah, I'd put him down there, That's too. That's fair. I was thinking quite... C, but I'm okay with D. Oh We've God. historically okay. used F tier for just blatantly not a Lancer and E for problematic. I would put him <laughs> in D as in, like, just the bottom the, tier of technically a Lancer, a Lancer but yeah. not it's just great. Stick this bad boy in. Oh, hello, car alarm. Stop it's been going clicking. off my street all day. Are you done? Great. <laughs> all right. My, my clicky click is getting a little bit... We're fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's chill. Uh, okay. Ooh. Oh, this one's going to be fun. <laughs> Oh, I haven't looked at the list at all. <laughs> what have we got to Dude, it's your list, kind of. Well, I did it's reorder all... the whole thing, rearrange the furniture while you weren't looking, color-coded everything. Yeah. It's fine. Everything's chill. And I just Googled Lancer characters um, and then went to, like, TV tropes and stuff because well, yes. the first, like, five or six results I got were just for, like, whatever, the anime Lancers or something. It's a game, like, but yes. To me. <laughs> <clears throat> Today, Inigo Montoya. <laughs> you know the one. Ah, yes. the, the guy from The Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. Or the movie mm -hmm. based on the Princess Bride. So we're are we working off the assumption that he's Lansing? Um, the Man in Black. Wesley. Wesley. Yeah, Wesley. Yeah. 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 I mean, who else would he be like, Lansing? Fazzini does not count. <laughs> no, I mean, if if you look at it really that count. way, they've kind of got like a you've got the big guy, the smart guy, and the Lancer. Uh, you've got uh, Fezzik and uh, is it Fezzik and Fazzini, yeah. and then yeah, yeah, and and then Inigo Montoya, uh, and then you get the Man in Black, who's the leader, and then you get uh, Princess Buttercup who's the chick slash the heart. So, I mean, it, you know, the book is designed to be the most, like, by-the-numbers sort of adventure fantasy it could be. So it makes perfect sense they'd slot into that. Uh, but again, I think we're running into a situation where Inigo Montoya is an incredible character in his own right, but does he really mm. get a chance to lance, <laughs> as it were? I, I will argue yeah. yes, because specifically with the the first fight that he and the man in black have dread pirate roberts wesley it is such a great showcase of both of their skills that because inigo is such a capable fighter mm. it elevates our understanding of how much of a badass wesley is so i think that is good early points in addition to all the stuff that happens later on with the way that they're able to work together and the fact that you know inigo also has his own like character stuff and his, his own goals and things to to work on but i think the initial fight and the dynamic of like like it's such a friendly chatty battle yeah but it's still like this intense mm -hmm. crazy sword fight i don't know if that 
that puts him in A, but I I think I think he's got to be up there because the the way that the friendship dynamic unfurls over the course of this fight with how they immediately have rapport they immediately respect each other yeah. they're already basically buds even though they're like business is business i've got to fight you <laughs> that's that feels super lancery to me i agree and also just from a writing standpoint like that scene is basically the character introduction for the man in black who has not spoken up until this point yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and kind of the major introduction for inigo who's mostly just kind of sat around uh while fizzini has talked the most uh, and the fact that this one scene, A, endears us to both of them, and B, strongly establishes their dynamic and mutual respect for each other that they then kind of rely on for the rest of the movie. Because they don't, like, see each other again until Wesley's, like, straight up dead, right? Like, <laughs> that when he, like, Basically, well, mostly yeah. dead, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Last, next time they see each other is after the, the rescue from the yeah. pit of despair. It's shocking mm-hmm. how little of that movie the whole gang actually spends hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, when they I are... I think that... Sorry, I was gonna say that might be a little bit of a knock to how Lancer can be for me because as much as I do, ab- I adore this movie and I adore that scene. <laughs> um, I think for me, like a Lancer has to, in, in contrasting with the character they're lancing, um, inform that character's character. That sentence is poorly formulated, <laughs> but, but I don't know how much I feel that we learn about Wesley from his interactions with. Inigo, uh, I mean, we learn that he's a capable fighter. We get to yeah. see the Dread Pilot Roberts have personality in that fight. Um, but that is information that we also get from the way that Wesley interacts with every other character in the movie. That so I don't true. know if he's like an A tier Lancer for me. Uh, I, you know, I think that there's amazing character. I love that fight, and it's a very well choreographed. Anytime you get through a high low bar ge- diegetically into your <laughs> set, I'm, you got me. 90s Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Cotta, which I watched last night. <laughs> yes, that one too. <laughs> the good shit. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, but... I I think I want to put him on the line between A and B. Uh, I'd say we can. I... I'd say we can put solid B or on the line. I forgot yeah. that on the line was an option. Yeah, we can put I on the line. I would go more solid B. Yeah. But, uh, are, are we ranking him in the same us, space so as Han Solo? That's true. Huh. That's the thing. Like, I don't think he does anything more descriptive to Wesley's character than Han Solo does to Luke. That's that true. Means. I think yes. we got to go B. Okay. But he's a good B. He's a solid, a well earned B. B. I, I think the the lack of of screen time between him and Wesley does him in. Yeah, it does. It does hurt him a little. Like if they had more interactions, I haven't, I haven't read the book in a very long time, so you know. But in the movie, at least, <laughs> yeah, the lack of uh, interactions doesn't give us a ton to go off of, and what there is, while it's good, isn't yeah. enough to, uh, for me at least, to bump him up today. This next one's going to be a funny. Fellow. I hate to kill you. Yep, uh, yep, yep. Chat's been having a great... It's the cardinal rule that whenever you bring up the Princess Bride, you have to just start <laughs> quoting it nonstop. Uh, yes. Now, this next one's going to be funny because you guys are going to need to take point on it. <laughs> oh, Blue, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Hacha! I may be a weeb. I may be the token anime watcher in this gang, but I was never a Naruto kid. Take it away, fellas! <laughs> yeah, I... Indigo, I don't know what your experience with with Sasuke Uchiha is and Naruto. I watched a lot of Naruto when I was young, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I have not gone back to it at all in about, like, 14 years. (laughs) Yeah, I would say I've kept up with the broad strokes through, like, spoilers of Boruto, but when the big three were a thing, I was a Bleach kid, and then now as an adult, I've been rewatching One Piece. So of the three, Naruto is the one I have spent the least time with. But we could not do a Lancer's tier list and not talk. Yeah. Chat is giving the full spectrum of answers on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so that reminded, this is how good of a Lancer he is, not a character. Sasuke is a whole ass kaleidoscope. Now, as, well, as I understand it, doesn't he turn evil like immediately? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 well, no. I mean. Hmm. It depends on when you define as immediately within the context of the show, because it's a long-ass show and a long-ass manga. Doesn't it spend most of the story with Sasuke evil and Naruto being like, power of friendship, and Sasuke being like, oh my god, fuck off. There's more of like a school thing going on, so there's a lot more of like, well, I'm just your ninja school rival, and then very quickly the plot gets a lot uh, more powerless than like, will I become an actually... Uh, certified ninja. Certified so, then ninja. You have issues. Yeah, you, you got to hey, graduate. It's, it's a whole yeah, thing. <laughs> the the last Naruto, 
The last of Naruto that I saw was the big Naruto Sasuke fight on the Great Hokage Bridge, which is like where they have their big fight when Sasuke first turns evil. And then there's a whole bunch of shit that happens after that. And I don't know any of that, but mm. like in specifically with the first stretch, like when they're like, you know, like squad seven or whatever the fuck. Sasuke is the edgiest of edge lords, and mm. Red, exactly to your point, wants nothing to do with Naruto's whole friendship bullshit. Yeah. So I it's I think what makes Sasuke classic like, dynamic embodies him as a lancer for me is that him and Naruto both have very tragic family situations, yeah. but they have become uh, yes, very different set. characters as a result of those situations, and it does allow them to contrast quite nicely against each other in the like, okay, well, you know, fox spirit dead parents but i'm still pretty happy-go-lucky versus like my whole family has been caught in a cycle of murder <laughs> and curse return. it's and, like, book wild that they're like 12 in the first season right <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah so it's like i'll never know true happiness again and it's like trick yeah. a juice box my god <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. Yeah. I do think he's a good Lancer, but I don't think he's a good character. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't that's, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> no, Indigo, you're right. You're right. He's a good Lancer to Naruto, but he's he's a bad, uninteresting character. <laughs> yeah, right. After you get past the consumes... flavor text of he's like so a, a hot, sad boy kind of guy, like that's all there is to him. <laughs> yeah, he has oh, hair in front wow. of his eyes. He broods. He <laughs> wears blue. It. Naruto wears orange. It's a tale as yeah. old as time. I honestly do think he's like an A tier Lancer because he does provide <laughs> constant contrast to Naruto. But again, he's he's not even the best character in that show by a long yeah. shot. No, I Indigo. I think you're right. We have to put him in B with an asterisk because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me just add a little yeah, asterisk. <clears throat> Sasuke asterisk and he goes in B tier and then I'll add a little text box at the bottom that says but he sucks <laughs> yeah and like many anime with extensive ex uh, expanded casts I think that there are other characters who could also arguably be Lancers to uh, Naruto but mm. Sasuke is the one you have to talk about if you're doing a Lancers yeah. tier list in or fact, chat you'll have to just live with that for now <laughs> I'm just gonna add the, that tasty little uh, footnote and also we can thus use the asterisk uh, for any case of a character where it's like they're a good Lancer, good Lancer but they Bad suck <laughs> Yeah. He's a good Lancer, but I hate them. <laughs> Shikamaru is another good uh, example of a Lancer character in Naruto. Oh. He's the lazy yeah. shadow guy, right? With the like the pineapple hair. Yeah, but he's but the, he's the only guy who actually made it to uh he graduated the tuning exam. Oh, he's the so. only one who got yeah. ninja certified? That's good. Yeah. Good for yeah. him. Because he's lazy yeah. but also a tryhard. <laughs> good for Shikamaru. Way to be a teacher's pet. All right, who is next? Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's oh. gonna be fun. We just Hatcha. All right. Hmm. <clears throat> It's so funny watching chat just absolutely explode and eat itself as soon as we bring up a Naruto character. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Oh, boy. Wow. Also, like, 2,900 viewers. Hello, fam. Wow. <laughs> how are you guys doing? Hello. Well, how'd you like to weigh in on the Watson situation? As we know, there's only one Watson, Watson. that really matters. And he, he has many yes. forms, many shapes. Sometimes he's Lucy Lou. That's okay. Uh... Watson, Excellent. the iconic Lancer to the world's greatest detective who isn't Batman, Sherlock Holmes himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that Watson is an excellent Lancer because he fills a very important role in the books, and that role is yeah. carried through to most of the adaptations and all of the good adaptations. Um, I would agree. Yeah. Watson has <laughs> yeah. to be a good foil to Sherlock Holmes because Watson is the POV mm -hmm. character and Sherlock Holmes is a genius but he doesn't always think out loud so Watson is vital to basically ask the follow-up questions and keep Holmes grounded in like reality so that Holmes will actually tell him what's going on uh yeah as a result Watson's explicit purpose in the narrative is to contrast Holmes which is kind of the whole thing with Lance <laughs> yes exactly exactly I yeah. think that Watson is he's an excellent point of contrast to this the obvious one is that Holmes is like a super genius and Watson is not. Holmes is kind of manic and very clearly like ADHD somewhere on the spectrum, something like that if you if you want to, you know, apply labels to that. Uh, and Holmes is very grounded and very like calm and very medically minded. Also, I think, I mean, Watson's a veteran, but I don't think Holmes is in any of the versions that I've seen. No. Yeah. So, no. so there's a lot of points of contrast between them. Uh, and there's also the fact that like, 
Holmes is a very, like, compassionate person, but he's also very sort of, like, fiery and energetic, and Watson is a lot more, like, grounded and sedate and, like, calm, and he's still compassionate, but in a very, like, I'm a doctor, this is kind of my job sort of way. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd say excellent Lancer, and this is highlighted by some of the adaptation versions. I will forever go to yeah. bat for the Robert Downey Jr. movies. They're <laughs> Hell yeah, I mean, they're, dude. <laughs> they're so action-y, but I love them so much. Oh, they're great. <laughs> they're they're great. fantastic. Yeah. They're so good. Uh, and I love their version of Watson. I love how they acknowledge that mm-hmm. Watson is supposed to be like a handsome, charismatic war hero and not like a little a little portly clown man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and to build on that, in elementary, Watson's played by Lucy Liu, and I yeah. also think they do something very good there, where she's like the the calming uh, influence to the often manic Holmes in a way that I think is played off incredibly well. Also, that show was very good. I rewatched it recently. I've been planning elementary to watch it. Elementary is good super good. I was tagging along through Cyan's rewatch of it. It's super good. Mm. The most unrealistic part of that show is the like season two B plot where they're like, we have to teach Watson how to fight, and I'm like, you can't lie to me. <laughs> This is oh. the most unrealistic part of the show is that she doesn't already know how. To yeah. live. It would be very funny if in canon she's just humoring them. It's like, oh, you're really, yeah, thanks to your excellent training. All yeah. right, I'm going to go star in a movie with of... Jackie Chan now. Yeah. I, I do think that um, specifically in like the, the RD, uh, RDJ Jude Law versions, they do a good job of, of showing the range of Watson's skills and not just having him be like Holmes's, you know, dumb friend which mm-hmm. i love martin freeman but that's kind of what they do in the bbc sherlock to be fair um, that's not the fault of the character or the actor that's the plot no, no, no. being like no, what no, the fuck course. is the point yeah. of this Ew, get rid of it yeah <laughs> it, exactly so yeah. they they let watson be cool in the rdj movies and i should go back and watch them because they are very good they slap bro um, and they, they complement each other well you get the mechanical benefit of, and Reddy talked about this one of your recent trope talks on detectives, uh, detectives, the mechanical benefit of having a character like Watson to elucidate the plot yeah. uh, and, and make it make sense for the audience. And then character-wise, you know, Holmes is like the feral drug-sniffing dog <laughs> and Watson's just like leading him by the leash. Yeah, <laughs> Holmes is the, well, you see... It's either mystery solving or cocaine, and Watson gets real (laughs) uppity about the cocaine thing. (laughs) Watson's like, I'm a doctor. What do you want from me? It's so good. I love it. Uh, Also, just side note, I love that in the RDJ movies, like, it's it's a dynamic, like, Watson and Holmes have a dynamic that if you want to, you could read as, like, a sort of romantic pining thing, but the movie holds up perfectly well if they're just best friends and Watson is, or Holmes is worried that, like, Watson's gonna get married. What if that means he doesn't have time for me anymore? Which is, like, that's, like, a fear that a lot of people have. Uh, It's so sweet. It's very sweet, and I love that they're just, like, we're homies, we're besties, and then, like, Watson's also concerned about that, and it's like, ah, just talk about your feelings. So I, I have a concept for an adaptation of Sherlock Holmes. Uh-huh. The premise is that crime is down in London and Holmes with nothing to do <laughs> goes to drugs. So Watson starts setting up crimes to oh, give Sherlock no. something to do like so that, that he doesn't go back on the drugs. That is the most, like, 2013, <laughs> like, Edgy <Edgy-a> remake. <laughs> this, is like the, uh, this is like that Elseworld story where where Alfred is secretly the Joker and he's doing it to give Bruce something to do. Anyway, are we yeah. thinking S tier or A tier? Because I don't think we want to drop below that for Watson. I, I'm going to go for S. Honestly, I would also say S. I, I feel agree. like Watson is kind of... Often forgotten in the Lancer discussion, but a great example of like a well done Lancer yeah. that yeah. is accomplishing the things that only a Lancer character can accomplish. He does a lot right and almost nothing wrong in the good adaptations, and I think that counts mm-hmm. for a lot. Perfect. Discombobulate. I, I, chat's just, chat's going just been off. saying discombobulate <laughs> nonstop. Oh, hey. <clears throat> Uh, on the subject of uh, when we were talking about Bucky, and we were like, Bucky's mm. not a great Lancer. You know what would be a good Lancer for Captain America? It's our boy Tony Stark. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Slash Iron Man. No, I think, yeah. It, in the MCU and many of the Avengers runs, I think Iron Man is probably the best Lancer to cap. Yeah. Uh, for some obvious, like, theming reasons, like, ooh, the old and the new. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to that level. That's what they do in Earth's yeah. Mightiest Heroes, which is good and well written with yeah. nuanced mm. character. No, we're not Great doing show. this. Everything's fine. <laughs> the MCU's fine. Tony Stark is a good foil to Captain America in almost every story they're in. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think that the sort of like, he's a relic of the past. He's a futurist, you know, uh, mm-hmm. they, they have a lot of fundamental disagreements. Uh, although I think, unfortunately, their Lancer dynamic is slightly undercut 
by the Civil War plotline not quite making sense for their personalities. Uh, because Tony Stark is firmly established as like, what's up, I bow to no authority and I don't play by any rules. And while Captain America will go off book to like do the right thing, ultimately it's all in service of doing the right thing. Um, so they need to do a little heavy lifting for Tony Stark to be like, we absolutely must bow to the US government and Captain America to be like, fuck you, anarchy forever. So like, I this is a case where I think the, the slightly poor writing sabotages their Lancer dynamic a little bit because it sort of makes them switch positions in a in a way that doesn't really fit them and that sort of hurts their foil dynamic because it's like what traits are they supposed to have that are foiling each other if they keep swapping what they are it, i don't know i i read it a little more charitably i've always thought that the way that they start with like tony stark is like i'm gonna do whatever i want because i'm the greatest and captain america is like yes i have to be you know boy scout good boy play by the rules and then you start to see, like, even though he's, like, a U.S. Army guy, he's, like, going off script a little bit. Like, oh, oh yeah. I'm I'm going to go, like, rescue Bucky and do things. And you see Tony starts to make mistakes and learn from them and realize, oh, wait, I'm, like, a mess and very volatile and need, like, coping mechanisms and, like, ways to restrain myself from going insane. And mm. Cap starts to see, like, oh, all these authority figures that I'm putting my trust in are, like, starting to, like, consistently disappoint me. Mm. I think the seeds of that crossover are actually planted pretty early so by the time you get to like ultron and then civil war is when they cross i i feel like it justified why tony's like look like clearly we're we're still making mistakes i i see like this is another one in the long instance of i have done something that fucked up and people died and mm. cap is like we can't let these authorities tell us what to do I was doing stuff for S.H.I.E.L.D. They turned out to be HYDRA. So yeah. I, I feel like that actually works the way that they cross. I think there are a lot of problems with the Civil War. Yeah. And they throw that out to turn it into, oh, you know, the the Tony Parents thing. I think that's mm -hmm. not as strong as it could have been. But I, yeah. I genuinely think the philosophical contrast between them actually works. I, I, I'm going well, go to go to Here's this. the thing. I do think that's correct. And I think that they do justify that like iron man started off very flighty very lackadaisical and became more responsible and cap started off very like i want to join the u.s army and follow the rules and kind of went increasingly like wait i actually can't trust authority figures uncritically i just think that they are established as sort of foils from the very beginning when they're you know it, it, the way their dynamic works in avengers is that cap is very much like we absolutely must follow shield's rules because he's being written by joss whedon who doesn't understand paragons it's fine and then Iron Man is very lackadaisical and cool and shit. And then by the point of Civil War, they've completely swapped positions. So they're still foiling each other, but like for opposite reasons. And this development is not given perhaps as much focus as it could have. It just kind of seems like we're supposed to be like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. They've always kind of argued. So <laughs> rather than being like, yeah, I've completely switched that. sides. That argument, though, is kind of the crux of what might make them good lances for each other in that they sort of switch sides because of the influence of you know tony on cap and vice versa mm. um and maybe there's an argument that they're both like, equivalent lancers for each other rather than tony just being a lancer to right. cap but uh it, i think you see it most in the the first avengers movie honestly as, as it is uh with tony's eventual sacrifice at the end of the fight to go you know fly up fly up into the space hole and over new york or whatever the heck happens in that movie um cap does very little cap, in that movie <laughs> yeah Cap makes Tony be a better person with some of his old-fashioned values, but in the same frame, Tony also gives Cap permission to question the authority that he frequently is taught to yeah. respect. Uh, I think Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes also does this dynamic way better yes. than the MCU. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. In addition, <laughs> I, I want to shout out like some of the like Avengers comics, but also in a lot of the Avengers comics, Hawkeye is kind of the Lancer to Captain yeah. America. Yeah. <laughs> also in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, like it's great because Captain America and Tony have this foil dynamic, and then there's just Hawkeye in the corner being like, whatever, awesome guys. And he's Lancer. just like, he's trying to be everybody's Lancer. Yeah. <laughs> and he's kind of I, like, I think that ultimately, like, as much as maybe the MCU mishandled the descriptive elements of Civil War, it doesn't that doesn't knock how the Lancer dynamic worked for me mm. quite so much. Um, at least between Iron Man and Captain America, because I don't think that the flaws in the writing of that movie um, are enough to undermine just how critical playing off of each other is to their respective character arcs, at least first, like, two phases. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd rank them, like, 
higher mid personally uh, if we're going mm. by MCU standards and if we're opening it to like the wider Marvel universe I think they're actually quite solid Lancers I think it's other. very dangerous to open it to the greater MCU verse because that gets you all the good written stuff and all the bad written stuff I think if we specifically say like MCU and then Earth's Mightiest Heroes are the examples we're considering because <laughs> I, I was going to say again back to Avengers mm-hmm. um, one thing that I like about the scene where they're arguing on the helicarrier where it's like oh you know take away the suit what are you yeah. everything special <laughs> about you came out of a bottle they're both wrong about each other because Cap says you're not the guy to make the sacrifice play and then in the end Tony, Tony does, does that yeah. he specifically He's like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do the right thing. It's very clever and then, planting, sort of. Yeah, it, it's, I think it's good planting. Um, and then, you know, Stark says, oh, everything special about you came out of a bottle. That's not true. Cap is a hero and it's in his bones. So I, I, I think for all the crap that we've gone on record about with how the <laughs> MCU has functioned, yeah. the core, like, dynamic between these two characters is good and i'm i'm gonna mm-hmm. die on that hill whatever whatever <laughs> rank we put tony stark in as a lancer i think that dynamic is really goddamn good and if that didn't work we never would have been on board with these movies i think that's if true. that wasn't good none of us would still be giving a shit I have right to now agree with lou on this one yeah. i think it, i think that despite the greater flaws of the mcu at large tony stark still remains a pretty solid lancer overall um yeah, all right. At least again for the first few years. <laughs> for the first, well, I think part of the problem we're running into is that after the big breakup in Civil War, they get very little time to like hang out. Yeah, you know, like there's there's like it's some sort arguing. It's the Andrew Montoya problem of like, well, how much screen time do you actually have to explore the dynamic? And you don't get it after the first like couple of Avengers movies. So. Right. Yeah. And then um, in Ultron, it was it like, what does Cap do in Ultron? Like, anything? They I have the know. argument on the farm. Oh right, the farm, the, <laughs> the farm human. It's, it's much more Tony's movie. Ultron's much more yeah. Tony's movie. Yeah, um, and also that's one um, where where Tony's like, "Let's go do mad science." Oops, the mad science is threatening to destroy the world. We'll fix this with more mm-hmm. mad science, and then in the next movie, he's like, "Guys, I think we might need government oversight." <laughs> I'm I'm gonna yeah. say I'm gonna say either B or on the line between A and B. All right, I would put him. I know B. I'm not gonna convince you guys of A. I'm I'm no, gonna go. Okay. I'm gonna put my offer is is on the line between a and b all right i could go b or on the line i think um it's not i don't if we're going by the mcu i don't think it is fair to put them in a but (laughs) you know if we're factoring in earth's mightiest heroes he slaps there so i just for that boxing ring scene alone oh yeah the fucking hilarious also one of the best versions of captain america just categorically i'll put him on the line also i'm gonna put in should i put an asterisk specifically besides the mcu one or are we are we leaving it alone that's fine. It's fine? Okay. It's a lot of text. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we don't need to add. We don't need to add a little, but this one's not great, but they're Ooh, not. It's, it's I'm Stark really is excited about this next thing we have on the list oh, because check. it's a bit of an open-ended debate more so than it is a specific character. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, um, how the okay. fuck do I? All right. Uh, <laughs> Before we write any names down, I think maybe we should just pose our question. Right. Um, Indigo wants really to know about how I handled that. Who I, is the I Lancer want to know of the Scooby Gang? Who is the Lancer of the Scooby Gang? I yes. personally yeah. think it's Daphne, but I'm interested to hear what everyone else thinks. Because for me, for me, Scooby is the heart, right? It's in the name. That's pretty easy, easy breezy. How is? Um, oh, I see. I was like, where is heart in the name? <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> I'm up to speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you could, you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Does that work? Unfortunately, we're getting every single character as an answer in the chat. Yes. Because if you make Fred the leader, which I think is a, a supported by the text. Fred Scooby certainly the thinks heart, he's the Melvin's leader. The smart guy. That leaves Shaggy and Daphne, right? And you could go either way with them lancing Fred, because Shaggy, on the one hand, is sort of a like, uh, discombobulated tag-along character to Fred's put-together uh, Indigo, man. Indigo, but I'm going to yeah. pause you right now. You're roboting out a little bit on my audio, so that's what the chat's... Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing it too. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I'm going robo. Blue, I'm hearing it from you as well. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I'm hearing it from Blue, yeah. Yikes. Uh, okay. Uh-oh. Maybe you guys want to hop off the call and hop back on and see if that fixes yeah. it? Yeah. Please yeah, hold, sure. everybody. And while they're gone, it's definitely it, it's Shaggy, right? If if Fred's the leader, in you go. How do I sound? Oh, you sound perfect. Oh, great. So that worked for whatever reason. Blue. I'm back. You also sound perfect. All right, good job, everybody. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but so you could make an argument for like maybe Daphne is. I think I've just talked myself out of my own argument because I think Daphne might. <laughs> 
is the Lancer. Because, at least in modern iterations, I didn't really watch a lot of Scooby-Doo when I was a kid, so most of my mm. uh, exposure to it is through the live-action version, <laughs> the James Gunn-written live-action oh, version. Oh, of course, of course. Um, I did have to watch Scooby-Doo meets Kiss recently for Movie Struck, which was actually a surprisingly fun movie, uh, all things considered. Oh, boy. But, um, yeah, you know, Shaggy opposes Fred in both personality, aesthetic, and often... Um, role within the mystery solving gang you know (laughs) yeah fred is very clean cut and shaggy is a Mm -hmm. bit of a mess uh he's he's the point of contrast he's a coward whereas fred is uh always you know first to split up gang you know classic stuff Mm -hmm. like that here's the thing with shaggy though i think you can make an argument that shaggy fulfills the role of the powerhouse because (laughs) whenever a task needs to get done velma's like i will give you a scooby snack if you do it and then shaggy's like boom got it so if there's ever a thing that Mm. needs to be accomplished shaggy's the one who does it as long as you can give him snacks i don't know if that discounts him from being able to be the lancer but i feel like that is at least an argument for powerhouse slash big guy i think the thing is there are practically speaking two options for who is team leader of the scooby gang and they are fred Mm -hmm. and scooby and no matter which of them it is shaggy (laughs) is their partnered character and point of contrast so i think it has to be shaggy i I think it has to be shaggy like yeah fair enough all right so it's shaggy very consistently does like get tasks done on the side without being bribed with scooby snacks uh (laughs) when she's not being damseled and especially in some of the more recent versions so i would say that if we had to put her in the big guy spot, that would not be uncalled for. So Shaggy yeah. as a Lancer, where would we place him? It's a good question. I do think he has a lot of key points of contrast with Fred, but I also feel like going in depth in the character analysis of the characters from a Hanna Barbera cartoon is, uh, I I don't know. It's 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 not. We're making a tall task for ourselves. Mm. We might be doing a lot of reading into things that aren't there. Yeah. Um, and Shaggy B tier, what are we going to do? <laughs> is he in the same category as Inigo Montoya? <laughs> I don't think. I think I maybe think like so. a solid C tier. C tier? Because he's yeah. definitely, I would say, after our discussion, a Lancer. Um, yeah. Is he like a really good one? Nah. Not necessarily. But he's not an awful one. <laughs> no, that's true. He's no, not terrible. He's not. I think the thing is like the ultimately he's about as good of a character as the other members of the scooby gang which is to say Mm -hmm. not particularly nuanced for most of the run (laughs) no yeah which is fine all right we'll just scooch him on over into the cozy c tier yeah and let's see what we got next uh heck are we um now we've got oh uh, all right this one's gonna be fun dante bosco voiced himself oh yeah it's it's the boy it's everybody's favorite boy. Here he comes. There he is. Okay. It's Zuko. Specifically for the one Zuko. half of one season, he actually hangs out with the gang as part of the gang. Yes. Um, yeah, you know, that, that bit in season three where they're all, like, hanging down at the beach. And it's like, oh, yeah. classic. We get so little of classic Zuko Lancer moments. We, we like, mm-hmm. always knew they were destined to happen. It was it was his destiny, and then but, we got like two moments where he was like, "Someone has to be the tough guy of this group, and it's not going to be any of you, so it's got to be me." And like, you know, whatever. Uh, but unlike some of the other lancers on this list who don't have a lot of time lancing their respective lancey, I do think Zuko does a much better job of being illustrative of Aang's character in this case, mm. in the fewer interactions that they have, and more importantly using the points of contrast and the way that their characters approach situations and the world at large to highlight things about Aang's character that are going to be critical to the finale and also give us a lot of insight into why Zuko has functioned the way he has up till that point. If you yeah. look yes. at the episode where they go to the temple with the dragons and oh, everything, yeah. and yeah. the whole journey of discovery, I mean, that, that's like probably the most obvious example, but also in the way that he opposes Aang in his uh, philosophical debate of like, how are you going to finish my father? My father. Yeah, yeah. Like, are what are you going to do when you fight my dad? Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to kill that guy? I want to kill that guy. <laughs> um, yeah. I think, I think Zuko is a really good Lancer, personally. I'm going to come do, out here with a bit of a heel angle. I would put Zuko in A tier because he is an excellent Lancer for the 10 episodes we get him. Specifically, yeah. like, the four of those episodes that we get him point-blank interacting with Aang. Zuko is a great character, and he's a great foil for Aang. He's, in fact, an excellent villainous foil for Aang for the first, like, two and a half seasons. 
And when he joins the group, he, be he becomes an excellent Lancer. But we get so little time with him and so much comparative focus is put on his character when he is not in that role that I think Zuko is another character who's a perhaps a better character than they are a Lancer because most of what makes Zuko so good is the journey he goes through to get to that point. And then we get so little of it. Like everyone remembers those episodes fondly because they're really good, but it takes us a really long time to get there. <laughs> I, I hear you, Red. Let me let me counter that with your favorite episode of Avatar: <laughs> The Blue Spirit, of course, of which course. is prime mm -hmm. early show Zuko, Lan uh, Zuko Lancer time. I think counts for a lot. Well, that's the thing. It shows that when Zuko gets his shit together, he and Aang will have a spectacular dynamic. But Zuko once again beefs it in the finale with not being able to like get past it because it's too early in his arc. His haircut isn't right yet. He can't be a good guy. Uh, so. <laughs> Again, it's like he's there are some characters who, as soon as they stop being like categorically opposed to the hero, they just become like besties. This is very common in shonen anime. Um, and Zuko is not that case because Zuko has so much more personal baggage that even he and Aang can be fighting on the same side, like fully, as shown in the Blue Spirit episode, and he'll still have this like back of the head, like it doesn't. It's not right. We're still enemies. It doesn't count. I still have to, you know, restore my honor. He's actively sabotaging his ability to be the ideal Lancer because while, while a Lancer talks a lot of shit about the hero, typically we, when their personal baggage factors into them being a villain, it's because they've had a good dynamic up till that point, and that makes it yeah. sad. Uh, I think I, that, like, Zuko becomes a top-tier Lancer, but we have to consider how he spends most of the story. No, I, 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 I will grant that. that. I, mm -hmm. I Sorry, Indigo, go ahead. No, I, I just kind of reiterate sort of what Blue was saying, though, I think at a different angle. Like, Red, I, I hear what you're saying, and normally the lack of screen time, I think, would be a bigger dip for me. But I think it is so clear throughout the structure of the show that Aang and Zuko, Zuko are meant to oppose each other or contrast each other in some way. You see it in episodes like um, Blue, you talked about this on the podcast a while ago, Bitter Work. Bitter Work. Um, yep. I was just going to say they that. Have mm -hmm. kind of parallel arcs that are better because they are played against each other, even though in the narrative they are not necessarily interacting the overarching structure of the episode is contrasting them. Um, I, I think that there is enough basis in there to make up for the fact that they don't actually have a lot of time technically in the gang. Zuko is still in many ways uh, a good contrast and a good Lancer for Aang even before he officially joins the group. Um, I think the problem is we're, we're running into... Where do we draw the line between a character foil and a Lancer? Because it is important that a Lancer foils the protagonist, but not every foil functions as a Lancer. When Zuko and Aang are going through parallel arcs in episodes where they're nowhere near each other and don't know what's happening. Like, we, the audience, can see, wow, you know, A to Z, these guys are the perfect, like, mirror to each other. But, you know, they're not really having a Lancer dynamic until those critical, like, final ten episodes. So I would say... A tier, possibly line between A and S because he's just such a good character. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I will accept mm -hmm. the line. I was going to say Indigo and I can also outvote yeah, you. Yeah, you can outvote me. You can nudge him up if you want. I'm just, you know. I'm, I would accept the line. I, you know, yeah. That is a good line point. Is good. Not every line foil is, is a Lancer, even if the foil dynamic is a big part of the Lancer character type. Um, right under Samwise the Brave. Line between A and S. All right. Yeah, because I think, you're right, you're, you're very right. He gets very little time in the gang. Mm. But the fact that he is such a great foil throughout the show and then also gets to be a Lancer at the end, I think is what, what mm -hmm. puts him on the line. I so agree. I think, yeah. All right. I, we got yeah. another non-standard entry here that we're going to need to debate this over is... which character to do. Oh, boy. Uh, let me just pop this sucker in here. Uh, oops. Yeah. So basically, so... when you watch Clone Wars, you know, we got Ahsoka, we got Anakin, and we got Obi-Wan. And they're all kind of Lancers to each other. It's like a Lancer ladder, it's, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or it's a, it's a Lancer, <laughs> it's Lancer rock, paper, scissors, you know? Ahsoka is Anakin's Lancer, Anakin is Obi-Wan's Lancer, and uh, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka don't really hang out that much, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Lancer ladder. Yeah. And also, it's a case where, like, Obi-Wan and Anakin are kind of, like, mutual Lancers, you know? Like, when episodes mm -hmm. are focusing on Anakin, Obi-Wan's the Lancer. When they're focusing on Obi-Wan, Anakin is the Lancer. This is... Fairly mm. common when you have stories where it's like, who's the leader? Who's the Lancer? Well, it's a military hierarchy. Neither of them directly commands the other. Um, so, which of these characters do we think is most like a Lancer? 
And where would we rank them? I think my gut instinct is that Anakin is the most Lancery, mm. specifically because he is Obi-Wan's Padawan. Even though he's already, like, you know, he's clearly a full Jedi at this point, like, he is still the learner to Obi-Wan, even mm. if they're, like, basically the same age now. Um, <laughs> That's not really how aging works. That way. Um, <laughs> I, mean, well, I, 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 I know, but, like, you know, the, even though they are... Space. They are on a much more even footing than, like, either of them in Ashoka. That's the point yes. I'm trying to make. All right, everyone in um, chat saying, Captain Rex, I see you. It's a solid point. But, like, all the clone troopers could be qualified as, like, Lancers to yeah. their corresponding Jedi. If we if we go down that rabbit hole, we'll be here all day. Um, so much of the, like, the thrust of Clone Wars is Anakin disobeying the shit that Obi-Wan tells him to do. I feel mm -hmm. like that makes Anakin, like the prime Lancer in this mutual Lancer triangle. Yeah. He's the isosceles end. <laughs> yeah, I think Anakin has the most Lancer inputs either going to or coming from him. Because, like, Ashoka, I think, is a good Lancer to Anna. Ahsoka. Sorry, my ability to speak has been tarnished today. Uh, is a good Lancer to Anakin, but doesn't really do any sort of Lancing to Obi-Wan in any sort of significant way, at least to me. And then Anakin is a good Lancer to Obi-Wan and vice versa. So Anakin's sort of like the crux of the whole Lancer web in yes. the Clone Wars. Also, I think um, it's important to note that Anakin has a lot of classic Lancer traits that a lot of the like loyal Lancer as we've discussed so far don't have. Namely, a lot of like, oh, they should have chosen me. I'm the greatest and I can handle this all by myself mm -hmm. kind of energy. Uh, and he's also got a bit of like, oh, yeah, he's kind of a jerk, but he's got a good heart in there. But, you know, obviously what they're actually framing is, yeah, he's got a good heart, but he's kind of a jerk in there because they're, like, foreshadowing the, you know, you got to blast the Imperial March anytime he does something mildly suspicious. Um, I think he's a, a pretty solid Lancer, but he's sort of sabotaged by the structure of the story he's in. Because, uh, of course, the whole thing is foreshadowing his fall to the dark side. Like, that, that's mm -hmm. the point of the prequels, but it's especially the point of Clone Wars. And depending on which arc yeah. you're in, it can be really good or real bad. Uh, so, I genuinely... Who makes a point? Also the war crimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also the war crimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think more than being a good Lancer, to me, Anakin is, like, a good portrait of a flawed man. Uh, mm. And the characters aren't mutually exclusive, but I think it keeps him from the S tier at the very least. That's fair. It would be a little weird to put him up there with Samwise the Brave. Uh, mm. I think we'd have to bump him under Zuko because I, I kind of went a little hard yeah. on like, oh, Zuko's a perfect Lancer, but I'm going to take off points for, for not enough. Uh, and with Anakin, like, we can find good Lancer moments. I mean, we all love the bit where the guy's like, oh, I'm faced with two Paragon heroes. Which of you will strike me down and brand yourselves a cold-blooded killer? And then Anakin stabs him in the back. <laughs> like, we all love that yeah. moment. That's classic yeah. Lancer behavior. Get your hands dirty so the hero doesn't have to. I don't have such weaknesses. Yes, but they're, they're few and far between. Like, there's a lot more moments where we get Anakin being, like, a sensible authority figure to Ahsoka or, like, a father to his men or, like, an annoying older brother to his men, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so, like, I think there's a good Lancer characterization in there. But in this case, it's almost like it's the opposite of Zuko. Like, all the Zuko Lancer content we got was great. The Anakin Lancer content we got was good, but very spaced out by a lot of not so Lancery content. Yeah. 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 I think I think we can like, make a case for A or B. Mm -hmm. I think S is out of the question. I agree. Um, I would, yeah, I would dodge A. I think he's too almost too much of a main character to really be an effective Lancer. Mm -hmm. like, I would hesitate to put him above the B tier. So pop him in the same category as Sasuke? <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Here he, he goes. Though, he's not the worst character in the world. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't get an asterisk. We like his character. All right, yeah. there he goes. Yeah. Under Tony Stark. All right, who's next? Uh... Two asterisks for war crimes. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Obi-Wan also commits war crimes. He false surrenders a couple times. Yoda commits war crimes. <laughs> That's my favorite running bit whenever I discuss really Clone Wars Yoda. Sort of... <laughs> war crimes I must commit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. This one's going to be fun. Uh, because Blue, I noticed that where where normally we put the asterisks next to the ones that you wanted to weigh in on, you put four asterisks next to this one. Yeah, this yeah. had a lot of Blue content coming at you. <laughs> it's Batman, specifically, Batman. obviously, in any story that is predominantly about Superman or highlights yeah. their relationship. Yeah. Yes. Of course, the downside of, <laughs> no, I'm of sorry, this... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chet just said the Geneva suggestions, and that's <laughs> 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 the 
are more like guidelines than what you call actual rules. <laughs> mm, been to Geneva? I have not. <laughs> Care? I do not. <laughs> Okay, oh Batman. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think uh, in talking about Batman, we have to kind of like oh God. line out our, our, our parameters here because there's been a lot of Batman and a lot of recent Batman mm. that fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so like, are we counting like, you know, are we doing the Justice League Snyder cut? Like, are mm. we doing any of that? Because the one that I want to talk about is specifically like specifically specifically the dynamic between superman and batman in superman animated series yep, yep. world's finest the crossover episode that's the best oh it's the <laughs> best one to the two of you because i got no context <laughs> what all right red where do we begin <laughs> okay so many good batmans i think that uh if we if we stick with the dc animated universe just to start with because that one really nails their dynamic i think and also we have the most mm -hmm. of it i'd say like they have dynamics in you know the snyder movies but it's a case of like quantity they hang out so little and they talk yeah. even less and they like each other for even less of that time <laughs> and they're just not great but the dcau is good it's good and it's it good. starts with world's finest the episode of superman the animated series that okay so the timeline is we got batman the animated series first and then after that was successful we got superman the animated series and to sort of anchor it there were a couple two-parters in superman the animated series where batman would show up or superman would like go to gotham to check in on him because he, something was wrong uh and whenever they got to hang out it was solid gold and it starts yep. with world's finest where like they immediately find each other's identities obviously uh bruce wayne dates but the way Lois. they do that the way they do that is really fun because mm -hmm. superman like you know looks through the building with his x-ray vision and bruce is like fucking cheater yeah so what happens next is bruce puts a tracker on, on clark's suit and follows him back to his house uh -huh. and like looks at him across the rooftops like four blocks away with his binoculars and waves yeah, like gotcha wave. bitch and then flies <laughs> off <laughs> seems like well played and also bruce is like dating lois throughout the episode not just to fuck with clark but, like, it's, you know, it's at least, like, 30%. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, at least a third just to fuck with yeah. Clark. <laughs> um, and then, you know, they got other crossovers. Uh, and then, of course, Justice League, the animated series, came out. And, like, it starts with Superman and Batman, like, rescuing each other. Because, of course, Batman has, like, a little, like, come save me button specifically for Superman. <laughs> um, yeah. And then throughout that, basically, a, a one-off line in Batman Beyond guaranteed that batman could never become a full-time member of the justice league because in like the episode where where terry is invited to join the future justice league like future superman is like ah oh, bruce never made it past part-timer which means throughout the entirety of justice league batman has to be like no i won't join and you can't make me um so he just kind of he's not in every episode but whenever he shows up it's solid gold um yeah and there's a lot of good episodes it, uh you do get some things where like the occasional line where you know batman's talking about contingency plans for all the different members of the justice league mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Superman's like, oh, yeah, what's your contingency plan? And Bruce is like, what do you think the Justice League is for? <laughs> it's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, you all exist to take me down if I go bad. Good fucking luck, though. <laughs> God, he's so cool. He's so cool. <laughs> um, it's, it's very fun. And, like, the dynamic they end up having in the show is just, like, they're besties and they really respect each other uh like they start off a little bit rocky obviously you know finding out each other's super secret identities isn't like the best way to make friends but by the end of that episode they're like absolutely homies um and you know in justice league like they they develop the kind of friendship where like when they're talking about concerns about like the justice lord timeline like what if we go bad and like fully just decide to take over the world and superman's like well you always carry that kryptonite and bruce like you don't get to joke man not right now <laughs> <laughs> Shit's getting serious, and it's like like Bruce is the kind of person who can actually tell Superman, like, you gotta take this shit seriously, dude. Uh, yeah. And they just have such a good friendship, and, like, it's... I mean, you know, if you want to ship them, you can. <laughs> Every time I watch one of those episodes, I'm like, I see it. I see the chemistry. <laughs> um, yeah. But again, you can read it any number of ways. Uh, I've also come to the conclusion that when I say you can ship them, I mean they should be besties, and that's not what everybody means by that, so that's fun. Mm. Um but they basically just have an incredibly good dynamic where whenever they're kind of in the scene together, they just play off each other super well. You've got Superman, who's like this this symbol of hope, and Batman, who is also a symbol of hope, but not at all the same flavor. Uh, if anything, I think the only thing that might be sort of sabotaging their their foil dynamic is that they are very similar in a lot of key ways. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think back to, Red, you sent me a comic like a month ago yeah. of... 
it was from either like the New Fifty Two or the Injustice timeline or something. It's not Injustice. Where, it's New Fifty Two. Yeah. It's New Fifty Two. Okay. Where they're basically Injustice. they're they're talking to I think it's like Catwoman and Lois, and they're yep. talking about each other like. Uh, Clark is saying, like, you know, Batman had everything taken away from him, and, like, he could have just been this, like, awful evil, and he, instead he chose to do good. Batman's, like, Superman lost his only family, like, the only his people, and, you know, he, he, he his entire his world, land. and he's here, and he still chooses, and they, they have this deep respect for each other, like, they each think the other lost everything, and still wants to be a good guy, and that yeah. mutual respect is a big part of it. I think one thing that's, that's easily forgotten is, like, okay, you know, we know Batman, world's greatest detective, Clark Kent is like, depending on the continuity, a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. <laughs> Those investigative skills are really interesting mm -hmm. to put against each other in whatever the context may be. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is is part of why they bounce so well in some instances, because they both do have that kind of like analytical, probing, critical thinking mindset yeah. that we don't often get to see as much with Superman because it's kind of secondary to his character. But it's uh, it's still good when we get those moments. Yeah, uh, I do think one one thing about that specific comic part is that it ends with basically both of them saying he's just a better man than I am. And that really sort mm -hmm. of highlights like they are in contrast, but they are also mirrors of each other in a very real way. Like they mm -hmm. have different vibes and attitudes, but ultimately they are very similar. You know, they're they're both justice minded superheroes, symbols of hope try to help everybody they can, investigate things. They have a lot of similarities. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's a knock on how effective he is specifically as a Lancer because yeah. he's an incredible so, character. I, say, I haven't seen the particular show that this discussion has largely been based on, but um, I feel like the Lancer dynamic is unique from the foil dynamic in that it's not just that you learn about the individual character and the opposite character from the way that they interact, but like, where is this sentence going? <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like they are uh, good representations of two variants of kind of the same thing, but I don't know if I'm getting that you're learning much about the other character from the way that these two interact, which I think mm. knocks them a little bit as foils and lancers. I think, I'll, I, even as good as the French. Oh, again, I haven't fair. seen the show, so yeah, feel free yeah. to correct me. But. No, that's that's fair. I think that what you, we can get from them is essentially, it's not so much how each character highlights the other by who they are. Each character has a very interesting perspective on themselves versus the other character. And I think the fact that these characters are fundamentally very similar, but see themselves as opposites is actually very interesting. The fact that Batman is like, look, I had no choice. I, I had to do this, but he's basically a god. He could have done anything and he chose to be this. And meanwhile, Superman is like, well, I had no choice. I had these godlike powers. I have to use them for good. But he had all the money in the world and he was just this lonely kid in an empty house. He could have been anything and he chose to be that. And it's like, the fact that you don't see that in yourself tells me some very interesting things about you. So it it's almost like mm -hmm. their their self image of themselves is the perfect lancer for the other one, but in actuality they're both really good people doing their best. <laughs> so I I would slap him in A tier and call it a day to be completely honest. Yeah, um Yeah, that's fair. Perfect. All right. <laughs> good work team. Get in there you. All right. Uh Oh, and I sorry. gotta go watch Some Justice League again. Damn, coming Comics up next. So good. All right, get. Oh no, hold yeah, on. Yeah, I, I dropped a couple quick suggestions it's in annoying. our list here Christ. because I thought of them earlier on. I know we can either skip them or, or no, what, no, but these are the last are... two ones on the list that I have anything to say about. Some of these are quite solid. Let me just. Sorry, everything's chill. Okay. Uh, all right. So that that first one, I'm. We've we've already kind of talked about that almost, uh, and I'm not I'm not super sure, but the next one, that one I think would be very yeah. interesting. How how are we sure. feeling about that? All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Stop off. Okay. Let me just catch on. Rip to the Castlevania cast. <laughs> well, the Castlevania cast are interesting, but again, like they're all kind of lancers for each other. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, yeah, when it gets sort of hard to isolate any one of them. Yeah, we, we can't pull a Clone Wars and be like, which of these is the most Lancery? Because it's like, well, Trevor's the most Lancery, but he's also the de facto protagonist. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's Glimmer from She Ra. Um, Wahoo. <laughs> now, we have a whole diatribe about Glimmer and Catra as excellent yeah. foils to each other. And by which, the way, yeah. Now that I've seen the show, I can appreciate it even more. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And the the fact that like when Catra ends up joining the gang, she sort of ends up 
much more solidly as Adora's Lancer is. I mean, she just goes through the Zuko arc, complete with the haircut. It makes perfect sense. Um, but Glimmer is very interesting because she has that sort of dynamic with Adora all the way up until that point, like midway through the final season where Catra becomes one of the gang. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that Glimmer is a very interesting Lancer because the way they handle her semi-inevitable slide into like well-meaning full-blown villainy is extremely cool and yeah. very on brand for the Lancer side of things. Because as we all know, a lot of the best Lancers have that moment of like, oh, whatever, I'm rankling under your leadership and I want to do my own thing. Uh, and in fact, a lot of them are like, I should be the leader. Glimmer is queen at that point, And she does think she should be the leader. <laughs> It's yeah. like it's it's all the classic Lancer tropes, really but reskinned to be pretty and pink and sparkly, so it's easy to miss them. Yeah, it's sort of a Lancer fake out. You're like, oh, it's Catra. Catra's the Lancer, and yeah. then they're like, it's not. Yeah, she, no, Catra's yeah. a Catra's climbing her way up evil middle management to become the big bad. <laughs> um, <sighs> I, again, I will highlight the fact that in season four, when they get their redesigns, Glimmer has one white sleeve, yeah. and Catra has one black sleeve yes. in their new costumes. They're dark reflections. Yeah, oh, so, so I, Glimmer is really good. I don't know where we're going to put her, but there's a lot, you know, from the start, Glimmer and Adora do not get along, mm -hmm. like, whatsoever, and I almost stopped watching it at first time, like, Glimmer <laughs> is fucking unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're but absolutely I, right. I think the, the dynamic that they have kind of, like, settles into, like, comfortable, mild annoyance yeah. in the first season, and we get some really interesting stuff happening in seasons two, three, and then, of course, especially four, when things really start to slide. Um, but there are some really cool little bits where, I don't know what episode it is, I think it was the Mer Mysteries, where the fact mm. that Catra, or not, um, uh, Glimmer and Adora have been yelling at each I think it's in season four, they've been yelling yeah. at each other and fighting so much, yet they are able to use them being believably in a big argumenty shout fest to lay a trap for a villain character yes. is really really cool and it flows completely mm. naturally that even the audience is taken by surprise it's like yep nope this sounds real <laughs> this seems entirely valid yeah um yeah no absolutely yeah. uh i think that glimmer and adora have a really fascinating dynamic i gotta stop saying fascinating because i said it too much in that specific diatribe and people in the comments pointed it out <laughs> um <laughs> but uh i think that what makes Glimmer work is that every Lancery like dickhead decision she makes is perfectly in character for her. And the character mm -hmm. that she is is more complicated than the stock, like, I'm competent but with an inferiority complex about the hero thing. Because like, Glimmer even has that trait. It's like one of the first things we see is that after Adora briefly turns into She-Ra and then turns back and Glimmer like takes the sword away from her and won't give it back. Like there's that little moment where she's looking at the sword and she like mutters, you know, for the honor of Grayskull and doesn't transform mm -hmm. and is like, oh, nothing, yeah. shut up. And it's just like, I mean, when you're watching that episode and you're like, she's unbearable. I was like, she gets a little better, but only by circumstance. <laughs> um, it yeah. takes a while yeah. before I she actually stops being like that. I think something about Glimmer that makes her really work as a Lancer for me is that she isn't necessarily a foil to Adora in the way that Catra is, and mm. she therefore can just be a Lancer. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes... Because those d terms, I think, are very close in definition, but there is some distinction between the two of them. Glimmer doesn't necessarily need to oppose Adora in the same way that Catra has to. She can... You know, they work together. They're on the same team for right. basically all of the series. Um, but Glimmer is interacting with the situation around them in a very different way that shows us not just her personality, but uh, it gives us a broader perspective on the plot of the series and also understanding like why Adora is ex uh, experiencing the situation the way she is and how that those two experiences aren't overlapping. And I think that lack of overlap in the yeah. middle there is what makes it really interesting for me as a Lancer dynamic. I think, yeah. I, I don't want to like put words in your mouth, but it sounds to me like sort of what you're going for is that Glimmer has agency of her own and makes decisions because of her own like internal logic. And then Adora is frequently on the back foot having to react to that. Uh, of like, okay, Glimmer just fully decided to do a thing that was kind of a dick move. What are we all going to do about this? Because, like, they don't they don't really have a boss. Like, Adora's the de facto leader, mm -hmm. but, like, Adora doesn't give orders. And Glimmer's the actual yeah. queen. So she, when she kind of comes into that role, 
does start sort of giving orders and they're like, whoa, hold on. We've just been, you know, the best friend squad. What's going on with all this like military shit? You know, what's what's Mm -hmm. up with that? Um, And Glimmer frequently acts based on her own internal drive to do things because I think it is accurate to state that Glimmer is convinced that she is the protagonist. (laughs) Um, Yes. mm -hmm. And the fact that Adora is so clearly the actual chosen one destined hero, I think it rankles on her a little bit, especially after Adora's chosen one destined hero-ness fails to save Glimmer's mom that one time. Yeah. Uh, is it fair to say that Glimmer thinks Adora is the big guy to her protagonist leader? I'd say that's accurate, yeah. 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 She thinks yeah. that Adora is like a blunt object to to hit stuff and break stuff while she figures out what to actually do. And like... It's very consistent in Glimmer's character that she runs off and does whatever she thinks is right. Like, And when we first see that, it's a good thing. She's going to rescue Adora from the Horde. That's a good thing we want her to do. But then she just keeps doing it, and we're like, oh, no. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think she's a really good Lancer because she tries so hard not to be defined by Adora she, or by her mother. Like, she, she sort of always yeah. has to have somebody she's rebelling against. And once she's queen, mm-hmm. she's like... I'm still rebelling against everybody, but also I'm the queen, so I can do whatever I want anyway. And it's like, oh, no. Um, yeah. I, I also think that Glimmer does not, you know, exist to inform Adora's character. Mm. But the fact that she specifically will, like, con- or conflict with Adora and call out her ridiculous, like, martyr hero complex is useful Mm -hmm. for understanding Adora's character in a way that without Glimmer being there, we wouldn't be able to see quite as clearly. We'd see, like, oh, Adora's doing hero stuff. Glimmer is the reason that we're able to see, like, what the fuck are you doing? You're leaving us all in the winds to go do hero things and getting yourself nearly killed. Like, stop that. (laughs) And it's only because of Glimmer that we actually start to, like, get a little bit of that being addressed in story. Because otherwise, those traits are like, yeah, heroism, great. And it's only because Glimmer were like, Adora, you need to yeah. slow your roll a little bit here. And then later, when, when we get Catra, Catra's the one who's sort of like being like, Adora, for the love of God, please put your own wants and needs for first, like ever, mm. like at any point. And Adora's like, I don't understand. Like, put myself first, <laughs> like in the way of the danger. So you guys are behind me and out of it. And Catra's like, holy fuck. Why do I have to be in love with somebody so stupid? Um, anyway, I think Glimmer is fantastic as a as a Lancer. I would put her A A to S tier, honestly, just in terms of like how effective she is, and yeah. the fact that she has yeah. a character beyond just foiling Adora. I think elevates her significantly in the same way yeah. that like Zuko's character arc is like it's a strength of his character, but it keeps him away from Aang for so much. Like. Glimmer doesn't really have that problem because her character arc is in immediate proximity with Adora almost constantly. And we get to see how their dynamic changes constantly. So I think on the line between A to S, at least. Mm. Indigo, what you thinking? I could go A or S. um, Mm. I think overall, you know, I think she, uh, I think the fact that she's not often thought of as a classical Lancer, even though, when you examine it even a little bit further, it's very <laughs> clear that like she does embody a lot of those classical Lancer archetypes. Uh, could potentially put her on the line, but honestly, I would be willing to overlook that to put her in S because she is, if you look at the text, yeah, the Lancer. Yeah. Well, I love that she's got like the literary kind of hides it, which is yeah. sort of the Samwise effect too, where it's like, well, the power of friendship is blinding you to the fact that they're actually that's the Lancer all along. Yeah, she she's got like she's got like the Barbie's dream house aesthetic, but she's got every single staple of the huh mother should have chosen me. <laughs> Why can't I uh, yeah. wield the magic sword? Yeah, yeah. I think the fact that we've also been singing Glimmer's praises for like fifteen minutes is probably <laughs> enough evidence. <laughs> okay, S tier it is. She goes next S-tier. to Samwise and Watson. Get Ooh. in there, girl. Okay, so these next two are from the same show, and I feel like we could probably talk about them at the same time even if we end up ranking them in different positions Mm, i think one thing to consider yeah this is where i fully have no like (laughs) reference point for any of the other characters on this list yes yes uh (laughs) so uh i guess blue uh there are a couple options here do you want to be the audience surrogate while we explain 
the general vibe? Do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I, okay. I can be the audience surrogate until Cyan gets back from work and then I'll, I'll we'll go make dinner. Um, so you got me until Cyan gets home. Okay. So let's, uh, let's right. have fun. Now, uh, Indigo, yeah. one thing that I think is important about these next two characters is that the manga for this has recently had some stuff happen. Red, I'm aware. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know many details. But we're going to find out a lot of details as soon as chat sees the two we're about to type it, in the same text I've box. Seen some, I've seen some spoilers, never fear. Yes, I yes. added a little thread to my conspiracy wall. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Connecting two points that we've talked about on previous streams. Uh-huh. And then I moved the line slightly down a bit, and then I moved it back up. Yeah, it's Bakugo and Todoroki. Yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah we're putting them in the same text box for putting ease. Them in the same text but box. it's possible we'll end up ranking them differently. It I, is technically possible. Yeah. Yes. I think they actually are similarly degrees of good lancers, but mm. let's let's talk about it. Right. So My Hero Academia kind of famously is like a next generation shonen, and I think Bakugo and Todoroki are both great lancers to yes. Midoriya, the main protagonist. Yes. Uh, but they're Deku. they're different um, eras of lancers. Bakugo is like your classic shonen lancer, and then Todoroki is the new gen lancer, and they just happen to both be existing in the show at the same time. <laughs> and I think that they contrast him in different ways and from different aspects. Oh, for sure, yeah. Actually, quite strong lancers. Um, I am. I've only watched the anime, but I have seen spoilers and caught like stayed up to date with the plot of the manga. So. <laughs> If I yeah. say something that has been like in in one panel somewhere corrected, please, you know, forgive my ignorance. But I just want to hear my boy use his raspy voice, you know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, it's that's funny that's when fair. he has to scream the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now the thing about these two characters is that mm -hmm. uh, I I've described Bakugo before as a lancer who thinks he's the protagonist, and that's very fun. And a, a key point of contrast between him and Todoroki is that Todoroki is the second generation of last generation's dickhead rival character. Yeah. Who always knew he was second best and mm -hmm. raised his son specifically to be better than the rival he could never surpass. Uh, so that's Todoroki's whole vibe is basically that he's been raised by the world's worst father specifically to surpass that guy and slash his new protege. And meanwhile, of course, Midori is like, boy, that sounds like you absolutely need therapy. Let's be best friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Todoroki's like, what is this sincere affection? I don't understand. And then they're besties. <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, every time Bakugo is like, what the fuck is happening? Why is nobody paying attention to me? <laughs> he like spirals more and more. Um, so Yeah, Bakugo is almost a lancer to just like the story of my hero Exactly, general. yeah, yeah. Um, so I I do worry that these guys might end up being in different tiers, but I think, and here's the thing, here's the thing. I watched the anime mm -hmm, up to a point, mm -hmm. and then I read the manga up to a point, and I haven't really caught up on either in a while. I know that Bakugo has undergone some character development in the manga that I have not caught up on, but mm -hmm. I've heard good things about it. Uh, because when Bakugo mm -hmm. was first introduced, it's like, oh, he's a rival, he's a lancer. And I was like, he's a... He's terrible. He's he's the worst. <laughs> he tried to get our protagonist to kill himself in episode one, and we're all just acting like this is fine? Um... And I was just kind of like, you know, if this doesn't get addressed, like, if, if he never apologizes or, like, this is never brought up in earshot of all of their cool new friends who, like, like Midoriya a lot and like Bakugo a lot, but like Midoriya enough that they don't like it when Bakugo is mean to Midoriya, then I'm going to feel like this might be a bit of a hole in the writing. And I've heard that that gets addressed in a somewhat satisfactory way, which is good. Yeah. But when I tapped out, it was still, like... Oh, their rivalry is finally becoming marginally healthy. And I was like, until he says, sorry, I ain't buying it. <laughs> so anyway. I think that they have to start out that awful early on, though. Because again, Bakugo is the classical shonen Lancer character and Todoroki is this new gen one. Mm -hmm. Bakugo has to start out as like, for lack of a better word, the Sasuke of the relationship. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when he does get his development later on, it's it's very cathartic for the audience. We've been spending a very long time with these two characters watching the development and also how the two of them kind of play off of each other. Um, the phrase that gets thrown around a lot is uh, Bakugo is um, win to save and Deku is like save to win. That's their approaches to combat. And the two of them ah. kind of start to take elements of each other's philosophies into their own fights once they get out of they sort of stop being just in school and have like a war going on right yeah the, the stuff uh, is happening plot <laughs> the whatever. whole thing 
Yeah. Yeah. I think um, uh, Chat pointed this out a little bit. Bakugo is very much cast from the same mold as Vegeta and, like, mm-hmm. starts off as fully terrible and then, like, gradually gets, like, a little bit, like, domesticated. <laughs> Not, like, a I good person. Bakugo so much, gets yeah. a lot better than Vegeta. Ever right, does, yeah. That's, to give him yeah. some credit. <laughs> well, that's the thing. The, the manga is clearly kind of a, a bit of a deconstruction of that. Blue, I feel like mm-hmm. we've been. Uh, <laughs> you, you good, man? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it is severely thunderstorming outside, so really? I'm just checking the weather radar. Oh, lucky bastard. Uh, All right. I don't know if any of that's coming through my mic, because I have good soundproofing in this yeah, room. I can't hear any uh, I I carry on. Uh, okay. my, my vote doesn't matter for this one. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Uh, so I think the thing is that, like, at the point that I sort of tapped out, Bakugo was still sort of having his crisis about, like, what do you mean I'm not the main character? Um... Mm-hmm. and Todoroki is undergoing an actual arc about, like, self-acceptance and sort of figuring his shit out. And uh, so I guess the question is, does emotional health make you a better or worse Lancer? <laughs> well, you know, that's a great that's a great question, right? Yeah. Because, like, obviously we have some pretty high-tier Lancers who I would say are relatively more emotionally healthy than some of the lower-tier Lancers on the list. Watson. We all know it's Watson. And Sam. And Sam. Yeah. You know. <laughs> to be but fair, Sam's fucking going think... through it. So, like, the fact that he's holding it together is, like, he's good in a he's crisis. He's going through it, but, like, clearly this man has some coping strategies, you know. Um, I Todoroki, I feel like what keeps him from being, in my mind, not as good of... If we're talking about who is the Lancer to Deku specifically, mm. they both are, but Todoroki needs Deku to oppose him in order to go through his arc almost more than Bakugo does at the beginning. Uh, because Bakugo is going to be active in the Lancer relationship in a way that will force both him and Midoriya to confront what is causing this uh, dynamic. Right. Whereas Todoroki has a lot of external pressures going on that are kind of completely separate from Midoriya and Midoriya's character. And just yeah. because Midoriya is the character that he is, that is sort of what kicks off Todoroki's whole crisis of accepting himself and all that jazz. So I hmm. I do think that they're good foils. I don't think Todoroki lances Midoriya in a way that causes Midoriya to have character we growth need a better verb in the for state this. we, we need... need something that's I... not as homoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Todoroki's lancer relationship with Midoriya there causes Midoriya to go through as good character uh introspection and development as Bakugo's lancer relationship with Midoriya is because Bakugo's constant opposition of Midoriya forces Midoriya to not only consider their own previous experiences like childhood friends into the whole high school thing and right. that actively both pursuing the same goal uh whereas Todoroki um yes there is some equivalent like exchange of character development going on there but I think it is skewed more to the Todoroki character development side than it is the uh Midoriya character development side so if I, I guess that could be a point in his favor but for me like if you're looking for the if you had to pick one lancer mm-hmm. in my hero academia it would have bakugo to be bakugo yeah it well, has to be bakugo because like todoroki's introduced as like i'm here to be your rival and then midori is like oh my god are you okay and then mm-hmm. they're just friends and like todoroki's just like his best friend at this point probably his least emotionally damaged friend frankly <laughs> um so i i would agree with that i guess if we're ranking by lancers we'd probably have to put bakugo above todoroki because I guess yeah. it's like, does, does Todoroki even constitute a Lancer to Midoriya after that very initial, like, we must be rivals because our mentors slash parents you know, were rivals? The big three of their class in My Heroes, they kind of, like, always get thrown together as, like, these are the three most powerful heroes of this particular generation of teens in high school. <laughs> That's got to be uh, fun <laughs> if you're, like, Momo and you're yeah. like, what's up? I can literally manufacture anything from my actual body. But, yeah. 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 And there's, there's an arc where they all work for uh, Todoroki's dad's oh, agency right. that was together, fun. and so they all get to, like, witness that together. And, like, I think that he could qualify as a Lancer, uh, and for the sake of this tier list, we should qualify him as one. But I think so much of Todoroki's character and arc is just so separate from Midoriya's uh and is so much more like Midoriya is a symbol in his arc but Mm -hmm. is not necessarily other than maybe kicking it off important for Todoroki to do the introspection that he has to after the tournament arc and come to terms with like 
his relationship with his father, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. He's a bit of a Zuko clone, but he's fulfilling a different role in the narrative. Um, I, I'd i say, like, Bakugo is the Lancer, and Todoroki is, for an arc, a Lancer, but... Right. Um, like, I would even put maybe, like, Ida over Todoroki in terms of who is a Lancer to Midoriya, if I, we're talking about that. I'd level. say that's... Yeah, Ida and Midoriya have actually, like, interesting points of heroism contrast, uh, because, yeah. like, as soon as Todoroki had a moment of self-discovery, he was like, yeah, I think I want to help people and be a hero, whereas Ida is still yeah, kind of like, much. what's up? I went on a quest for vengeance and tried to murder a man. <laughs> and everyone's like, ah, yes, the lawful good character. Anyway, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. what are we thinking for for tears? I Again, like, I sort of uh, tapped out of the Bakugo arc a little early, so in my head, he's still kind of like a yeah. dick off in his own little world. Uh, so you're, you're the expert here, so. Yes, uh, well, I, I think because Bakugo does get some, I would say, good character development <laughs> after a while, mm-hmm. and it's slow. And it takes a while, but he's pretty much constantly uh, playing the Lancer to Midoriya in a way that it then allows him to develop his character and his approaches to combat, as well as Midoriya approaching their, uh, his approach to um, not only combat, but like the whole idea of heroism and the whole like conceit of the manga and anime. I would put Bakugo like on the line between A and B or maybe even an A tier and then like put Todoroki maybe in B or line between B and C. I okay. think that they're both good, but... All right. Bakugo is definitely like the lancer or lancer. Let's put this Bakugo and let's do that on the line between A and B, you said? Oop. Yeah, sure. I mean, okay. you know. Here we go. Let me know what you think. No, I think that's okay. Uh, I think that Bakugo does sort of embody a lot of like the platonic ideals of, oh my God, stop moving around. Everything's fine. Sorry. If you um, look at Bakugo in any piece of character art with the cast in it, you're like, oh, the Lancer? And to oh, me, yes. that's got to count see. for something. The angry dickhead? Okay, yeah. I wonder who that is. Um, and Todoroki. Every time you guys say Bakugo and Todoroki, all my brain provides me is an image of Totoro playing Bakugan. Oh, my which God. Which is not what we're talking about. <laughs> Certainly not, but that would be very funny. Let me just add a new box for Todoroki and put him on the line between B and C, you said? Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. just above Shaggy. That sounds about right. Yes. I love Todoroki. He's a little sad boy, but I don't think he's a, a top quality Lancer yeah, um, in just... the show. <laughs> that show has a lot of potential Lancer characters. Well, it's got a huge ass cast, and like it's just got a, it's got that massive Shonen cast, but also because it's a school, they're constantly competing against each other in a way that just like really because there's some uh, they introduce some like upperclassmen later on and so, like yep. Yeah, and just a bunch just of other characters. I'm like, oh, more Lancers. <laughs> When's my boy Shinso getting the friggin' screen time? Shinso, he another. <laughs> He's a freaking tournament arc. They're like, oh, what if we added two more Lancers? Yeah, what if we gave him more you edgy sad boys to befriend? Massive friend. problem child running around. What if we added two more problem who are child. just miserable and here to look? Okay, I've got a enamel pin of bakugo sitting like two feet above me right now of course you do who would, who yo would by you... the way uh we've got we've got pins in the store if you yes. scroll down Hell you'll see yeah. the youtube shelf where we've got our pins on sale yes definitely if you want tiny versions of the plushies you see seated on the chair right now except Literally for the, the indigo ones yeah. except not me <laughs> yeah sorry I exist only in cyberspace next time the, the cool thing is that with the plushies you get 30 more percent of the red drawing because there's not the little <laughs> armchair little bit in yeah, the way <laughs> i had to draw the butt this time are y'all happy okay uh for the Who's next, next? one this one's another weeby one uh a lot of the next couple are good. Yeah, a lot of... We can rearrange them if we want. Yeah, this is, most this is why I tapped out at this point. I, I marked my little my little dots, and I'm like, all right, the rest of these guys, I got nothing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's some of the... I mean, like Ninja Turtles, a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe. Anyway. Um, we can do Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, yeah. That'd but but for now, for now, we're, we'll get the other weeby one out of the way. Okay, uh, okay. It's Grey from Fairy Tale. Grey Fairy Tale. I haven't watched Fairy <laughs> Tale since, lover. like, early <laughs> high school. <laughs> Uh, Gray was also my favorite character. Of course he was. I know how you work. <laughs> you know how uh, we did the mentors tier list, and I was like, wow, this is like 50% of my favorite characters in any given show, uh-huh, and now we're uh-huh. doing the Lancers tier this list. This is the other 50%. The other 50% of <laughs> yeah. my favorite characters in any given show. Um, so the fact that we skipped over Trevor Belmont must have been kind of a blow, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It's, yeah. You win some, you lose some. Um, I, I don't think Greg is a great Lancer, to be real. <laughs> I agree, but I wanted to share an anecdote for those in chat who perhaps hadn't heard this. As I understand it, the reason behind Gray's design creation is that the guy who wrote this manga was like, you know, I just realized I have a lot of, like, girl fan service in this. You know, I've got, I've got a lot of, like, scantily clad mm-hmm. ladies with, like, big boobs. 
you know, I should really put something in there for the ladies as well. So he introduces Grave Fullbuster, an angsty hot boy whose quirk is that he takes off his work. shirt when he fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's And they waste no time getting to that character. Absolutely quirk. It's not. like the page he's introduced. <laughs> he does it every single time. It's very funny. It's they so give it like funny. a half-assed explanation later of like, oh, he uses ice magic. Part of his training was to withstand no. the cold by taking <laughs> off his pants a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid, but like, it's so it's like, it's it like so the much. embodiment of like he a little confused, but he got the spirit. It's like exactly. how many shonen exactly. manga artists would go there? Honestly, would be like this one's fairy for the ladies. Tale. Say what you will about fairy tale, but there, I don't I don't know if it's just like my perception of it is warped or something, but I feel like there are so many female fans of fairy tale from the same era as like Naruto, where it's just like yeah, yeah, this one's for the girls and the gays, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fairy tale is for. It. I don't know what it was, man. It there was something, something about it. Water. <laughs> it was doing something right. Um, but yes, I think that like the thing with Grey is that his intro arc, he's that peak Lancer because the, the structure of Fairy Tale for mm-hmm. Blue and to those of you in the audience who didn't watch it, uh, like the first three major arcs are essentially each of the three characters, like protagonists, who is not Natsu, the, the, uh, he's not the main, mm-hmm. like Lucy's the main character, but really it's Natsu, right? Yeah. He's the one on all the box art. Um, Every single one of them has a traumatic backstory, and they're like, I must go face this alone, and our hero, Natsu, is like, not if I punch it first! And then he goes and punches mm-hmm. whatever their problem is. So we start with Lucy. Uh, do we start with Lucy, or do we start with Grey? Um, I think we start with Lucy, because she's... But her, her... Her and Natsu start... Yeah, but, like, her angsty backstory is an entire guild of, like, bad oh, guys. Oh, backstory. I, I, we meet Lucy first, right. but I do think we actually get to either... To Gray's I think backstory. it might be Gray first. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've It's, it's been a hot minute. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so in that arc, he's at his peak Lancer. He's doing like, I gotta go do this alone by sacrificing myself with this magic attack. And Natsu keeps being like, stop fucking trying to sacrifice stop yourself it. with this hey, dumb magic attack. <laughs> um, <laughs> like a little, little, little stick to bops him on the head. Like, no, cut that out. <laughs> I think he does yeah, punch do him at least also, once. Natsu does have fire powers. He has ice powers. Yeah, so, so you know, natural opposition. One of them's got like warm tone color palette the other one's got a cool tone color palette it's very standard mm-hmm. stuff they butt heads a lot they're like oh we hate each other but actually we die for each other you know super standard stuff i think part of what sort of undercuts gray's lancerness is that fairy tale is almost notorious for like every major villain that they introduce gets redeemed one arc later and just joins the gang and like each of them yeah. it's like dragon ball style each of them slots in as like natsu's next lancer so uh when, when they have the, the bad guy guild arc, they're like, we've got another dragon slayer. He's just as strong as Natsu, but he's punch proof. And it's like, oh no, how yeah. will I possibly hope to defeat this man with metal skin when I breathe fire? Oh, what could I possibly do? It's fine. Um, And then after they punch him enough, it's like, oh boy. And then he's joined my guild. He, he's good now. It's fine. And he's dating that girl who he kind of crucified that one time. Don't worry about it. It's cool. He's good now. He's very yeah. sorry. And then it's like... Yeah. They did that with Loxus, uh, who was another Pretty dragon. Much every uh, villain in fairy tale is liable yeah. to come back as a protagonist. After a while, they started introducing yeah. bad guys who were evil enough that like they just died at the end. But even then, it didn't really matter. Even then, uh, it was just a shot. They kept like it, escalating how evil they were. So it's like we're more dragon slayers, but we kill our dragon parents. Oh, we're so bad! And then, like two episodes later, it's like it was the worst thing I ever had to do, and they asked me to do it as a mercy. And it's like, all right, so what the yeah. fuck was that all about? <laughs> Why are you playing the heel? so bad the show seems weird it is it's very (laughs) weird it Um, It had banging music though oh it did sorry blue what's up i I bet i i actually have to bounce Ah. uh so uh thank you all for letting me join in on this this osp before dark uh (laughs) tier list stream thanks for obviously we're gonna be here for a while uh, with the rest of this tier list so everybody in chat please please stick around but uh that's that's me done for the day yeah uh this is fun i i like coming on these even if i can only contribute so much no this is great and having an audience right all right uh please have fun i'll I'll probably be in chat a little bit later good Um, join us uh, yeah all right i'm I'm gonna ride the high of that iron man thing for a while (laughs) (laughs) it was a great argument all right we will see you later my dude all right bye Bye. gang and he's gone even though that gray is introduced and you're like oh the lancer when you look at him and like the five-man band they got going with like urza and lucy oh and, yeah uh, happy happy, happy and counts, wendy and all that guess right yeah yeah but like in terms of how many lancer traits he exhibits other than him and not so occasionally butt heads for like comedic relief purposes i don't think he actually does that much to based on my memory of the anime really influence 
either Natsu's character by opposing him in an interesting way or informing Gray's character by opposing him in an interesting way because they're both kind of like, well, I'm going to sacrifice myself for my friends. And then, yep. oh, I was saved by the power of friendship. And there's not, uh, like, there's nuance and there's dramatic backstories. But at the end of the day, like, I don't think he's doing much as a Lancer yeah. to really be a Lancer. Well, other here's the than thing. Wearing the trappings of one. I actually remember that, like, they, they sort of tried to bring it back. And this was, like, I think after the, the anime had tapped out or, or at least stopped at that mm-hmm. point but like i'd read ahead in the manga and there was like a brief arc where it was like oh we've had another time skip and gray's evil now and within like two mm-hmm. issues it was like just kidding he's undercover yeah. with the bad guys it's like obviously yeah. um yeah <laughs> oh yeah um especially if you just compare it to like how much development like an understanding of nazi's character you get from his relationship with both lucy and urza as compared to gray it's like kind of comical yeah gray is (laughs) just he's clearly just like there because he had to be and then after a Uh while it's like what do we fucking do with this guy hey i love him for it oh yeah yeah no right and he's got his own arc (laughs) later on like his dad shows up and then his dad is like i'm actually the demon that killed your dad in his body and then after he died he's like just kidding i was your dad all along (laughs) pranked (laughs) i think he he maybe sits in the c tier for the trappings of lancerness but Mm. i would hesitate to put him any higher than that i would love Uh, to put him in the same category as shaggy from scooby-doo are you kidding me (laughs) (laughs) banging music though unironically Uh, just banging music absolutely i put it on my ren fair playlist (laughs) oh my god really (laughs) you're gonna be that guy Okay. Well, no, they, when we're, my friends and I are driving up to go to the Ren Fair, and I'm like, I'll put the place together, and I it, it's on there from last year. Last year we went; it was Pirate Weekend, so it also had like Pirate. Mm, of course, fun. of course. Now but. I'm looking at the list, and the next two that we have, I'm a little concerned about, on account mm. of how uh, that show sort of ate itself. It, it like turned into an aruboros of discourse and and Twitter mm. takes, and then it. It disintegrated, and nobody's spoken of it since. And I, dare we break the seal? <laughs> dare we invoke its name once more? I'll say anything. Um, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> for the clout, baby. <laughs> once more yeah, onto uh, the ooh. breach. Here we go. <clears throat> oy, oy, oy. I'd love to see what chat thinks we're talking about. <laughs> I know, it's not. A oh yeah, they, they figured it out. It's not though. Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Uh, Voltron. Voltron. Uh, <laughs> not the original '90s anime. No, not that one. I've seen like a couple episodes from it, and like, it's very funny. But uh, it's very. Fun. It's kind of fun in the same way that Speed Racers, like original anime, is fun. Where it's like, yeah, this is nonsense. But they have um, to censor a lot more deaths in Voltron than in Speed Racer. <laughs> you know, they do. Um, so Voltron Sven, has okay? the fun situation of. <laughs> that's that's the the crux of the whole reason there's two characters from the show on this list, right? Is because. There's Keith and Lance, who, yeah. when the show starts, are the uh, red pilot of the five, one of the five lions that forms Voltron, and the blue pilot, respectively, right? Yes. And uh, Shiro, Sven, <laughs> <laughs> is the pilot of the black lion. He's the leader of the gang. So when the show starts, he's in charge. Keith's his Lancer. Yep. And Lance is constantly... Lance... Lance, Lance wants Keith so Lancer. badly to be the Lancer to Keith, but Keith couldn't care less about Lance. Also, I feel like uh-huh. I'm going to get, like, fucking crucified for this, but, like, everyone was shipping these two from day one, and it's just because of their color schemes, all right? It has nothing to do with their personality <laughs> or their actual dynamic with each other because all they did was yell at each other, and Lance didn't like Keith at all, and Keith didn't even fucking know Lance's name, <laughs> which was the funniest thing. And everyone was yeah, like, as the captain of the enemies to lovers squad. I do have to go to bat for them there, but it wasn't it wasn't my ship of choice, but I could see why everyone was on board. I think it was just out of habit. It's like, oh, we got a couple, I guess, pretty <laughs> anime boys. We're going to have to imagine them kissing now. And it's like, I'm typically kind of ship and let ship, but I watched this fan base eat itself and like start yeah. going after the voice really actors bad. for having the audacity pretty to be like pretty fast. It got ridiculous. In a way that was alarming because even at was like 2012 or so like even then fandom was still pretty hefty but this one was it was wild it got really weird uh Um, like people going after josh keaton voice actor for shiro for being like i like shiro and keith's dynamic with each other and they're like how dare you sarah what do you know about the show anyway it was a nightmare and that's why everyone pretends it never happened because it was incredibly embarrassing for everyone involved that's when the show starts (laughs) uh, that's the 
take on <laughs> Voltron widely, but in terms of Lancerness, yes, sure. yes, in terms of the actual characterization, Keith starts as a Lancer to Shiro. Lance is like a proto Lancer to Keith, but Keith's not the leader, so it's sort of like yes. a, another Lancer ladder. Um, but then after season, the end of season two, Shiro disappears from the show. Uh, in the For original anime, he dies yeah. in this version it's sort of just like well he's somewhere and then uh keith becomes the new leader for some reason even though allura is right there and then lance becomes like the full lancer to keith um so it's we, they're different lancers because they're yes. lancers different leaders um yeah but they're from the same show so we're talking about them at the same time yeah so so uh Part of what separates the the remake from the original is that uh, Shiro does come back eventually. I think in the original, like yeah. Shiro's like twin brother comes back or something, and they're just like, oh, "Look, Sven's <laughs> fine. Nonsense. Told you." Um, but in this one, it's like Shiro's out there somewhere in like the astral plane or the Black Lion's mindscape or some shit. And also, yeah, there's like a clone of him running around, and we're just gonna upload his soul into the clone, and then he gets his own giant robot. And I was like, I can respect that. And then after season six, they never let Shiro and Keith speak again. So yeah. that's kind of a knock on their Lancer dynamic. <laughs> I feel like the directors were just like, we got to no homo this as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, God, anyway. I feel like both in being a Lancer and in having someone be a Lancer to him, Keith has more to learn from the Lancer relationship. Mm. But I don't know if that makes him a better Lancer or if that makes Lance a good Lancer for being able to be a better Lancer to Keith in a way that Keith needed a Lancer. There's too many Lancers in this. <laughs> yeah, that line got complicated. <laughs> I think that part how, of it. How how many lancers? Can, how many lancers can a lancer and lancer and lancer? Hey hey lancer. hey! Ah! <laughs> we stopped using the verb version. Um, I think that uh, the thing with like Keith and Shiro is that like Keith and Shiro have a really stable dynamic. Like they like mm-hmm. each other, and Keith is like you know they, they've got like a like a like a brotherly thing. I guess. Uh, I mean you know read that mm-hmm. however you want, but that is the canonical text of what Keith and and Shiro's dynamic is yeah. you know they're they have a they have a great like winter soldier fight on like a collapsing satellite like the last season they let those two speak to each other ever and there's like sure i love you you're like a brother to me and it's like there we go that'll snap them out of it uh so they don't really challenge each other that much like keith kind of flies off the handle and shiro's like hey bud remember we talked about controlling your emotions and keith's like you're right man i'm sorry mm-hmm. and it's just like and then there's lance who's just like i feel like a loose end for some reason and i'm gonna take it out on everybody <laughs> And then yeah. when Shiro bites it and Keith takes over, Lance is like, ah, this makes much more sense. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess, like, Lancer quality-wise, it's like, is it good to have a Lancer who is just, like, your ride-or-die best bro? Or is it good to have a Lancer who constantly belittles you for no reason? <laughs> yeah, you know, I tend to think of it in terms of, like, what is it doing for the story and the character, more so than, like, which variant is better than the other, because I think in certain situations, one could excel over the other, which then makes it difficult in this one, because we have both examples, and I think they're about equal in terms of quality, yeah, personally. that's good, we can put them in the same tier, I don't need to make another text box. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what tier was, you know? I think, that, like, just... I feel like I'm, like, venturing into a radioactive zone just by bringing this up at all. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I I also, like, just full disclosure, I don't think I watched the final season. I think I got through seven and was like, oh, this ain't great. And then I heard only bad things about eight, and I just yeah, fully did I also didn't. experienced the final season exclusively through GIFs on Tumblr. So. Okay. All right. So if it got really good, we'll never know. But I think I heard that, like, Lance's arc ended yeah. badly in a way that people didn't like. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? Uh... I think Lance and Allura get together at the end. It's like a whole. But then thing. she dies, or, no, or like Allura becomes dies, space, like, and then he becomes a farmer. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's. God, what a yeah. nightmare. Anywho, um, I think we could justify putting these guys literally anywhere except like A and S, like anywhere under that. And I don't know if that's just me being like I'm so like discourse poisoned that I'm just like let's get them out of here as quickly as possible. Yeah. I think if the show was better written and the Lancer dynamics actually had more of an effect on the particular character arcs of these characters, like you can make an argument that like by being Keith's Lancer, Lance forces Keith to like actually work as part of the team, but also the rest of the team does that. And you can make an argument that like Keith forces Lance to see like the value in himself and what he brings to this team when he's the leader and he needs Lance to be his Lancer, but like also the rest of the team does that. So I would put them maybe in like C tier. That's fair. I just literally never got the impression that they ever actually came to like each other, you know? Like, 
I could see some moments in like seasons two and three where it's like, I mean, okay, they're kind of friends. Everyone but, remembers like, the bonding moment, that. but everyone forgets that Lance denies the bonding moment ever happened, and then they just move on from there. And I was like, Keith deserves actual support, and y'all are not giving it to him. Okay. Oh, this one. This next one's gonna be all you, baby. I've I've only seen eleven Talking episodes. About <laughs> Sailor Moon. Sailor maybe, Mars uh, specifically. Sailor Mars from. Sailor Moon. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the context of the anime because that's really what I've been rewatching in the last year. Um, Noir from Rolling with Difficulty and I have been watching like five episodes a week since last Halloween and we just hit season five, so fresh to catch up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I watched those again. I think Sailor Mars is a good answer, personally. Um, <laughs> Sailor Moon, you know, the, there's a pretty classic five man band in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you got your six ranger in the form of Tuxedo Mask and your like mentor y character in the form of like the cats that tag along. Right. But for the most part, uh, and tag along kid in the form of Tribute. But for the most part, you know, you've got Sailor Moon, Leader, Sailor Mars, Lancer, the big guy in Sailor Jupiter. Um, smart guy in Sailor actually, Mercury. You know, smart guy in Sailor Mercury. Sailor Venus would then become the heart, but I think you actually could swap Sailor Moon and Sailor Venus in terms of Leader Heart. It just gets a little wibbly. But she has, like, heart powers, right? Stuff. Like, <laughs> Yeah, she ha- her, She uses, like, Venus love me chain and stuff. I think so, we like, can call her the heart without her any heart. sort of difficulty. <laughs> but regardless of that, like, Mars is ray is the uh lancer and i think that she's a great example of like a good lancer character done like a simple wheel meal well made because like usagi is a bit of a cry boy um cry boy cry boy cry baby <laughs> did you cry- see tomboy cry- and cry- like cross the wires yeah yeah I, she's a bit of a, like a, a bit of a cry baby uh she's not necessarily cowardly she cares deeply for her friends but like um how to describe this uh you know, at the end of the day, like, she sometimes lacks the uh, immediate drive to, like, jump in and take control, whereas Rey is, like, a very proactive character. Mm. She's uh, often angry and belligerent, although much less so than some of the other Lances on this list. Um, uh, she's, like, very, like, uh, powerful businesswoman. <laughs> <laughs> I think her, like, thing in the anime is she's like, yeah, someday my dream is to be, like, have a, a career woman and have it all. Uh, whereas Usagi's dreams tend to be a bit more like Mario about Prince, her, her friends run and, a totalitarian uh, almost, dictatorship on the moon. <laughs> almost more about being like I want all of my friends, the people around me, to be happy in a way where like Aww. Ray is very uh, fuck you got mine. And, yeah, <laughs> although that's not to give her too much shape because I love Ray and she does come through for her friends when she has to, and sometimes when she doesn't. They the friendship of the girls in the show is like what makes it great um but ray and usagi not only like butt heads in the in the way the show is written because they're like they they date the same they were dating the same guy oh. <laughs> at one point they were they had crushes on the same guy mamaro uh and the the way that they play that off of each other is that very often um usagi is supporting ray in the ways that ray needs to be supported uh, when it comes to her personal life, but then Ray is able to support her when it comes to their their Sailor Scout work in a way that Usagi lacks hmm. otherwise. And that sort of uh, dynamic that plays off of each other is unique to their particular like Lancer leader or Lancer heart contrast that the other characters in the show would obviously support their friends because the power of friendship is like 90% of Sailor Moon. Right. But only Ray is the one who's able to like finally give Usagi... Um, the boost that she needs frequently and in similar ways like usagi is able to give ray perspective in her day-to-day life that she, sh- she sometimes lacks when she gets in her own head i think it's a very fun um honestly it's like a pretty straightforward lancer dynamic mm. but uh it definitely like works you yeah know? well um, she sounds very solid I- yeah, I would put her in, like, B or A. B or A? Uh, okay. I, I don't think she's doing... They're not doing anything, like, particularly unique with the Lancer dynamic. Like, it's a pretty classic five-man band situation, mm. but it's well done. All right. Um, I will say I didn't see any of this in the... Uh, in the um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, mm, definitive uh, Sailor oh, Moon adaptation, no. <laughs> Seven uh-huh. Moon, uh, no. where I believe Sailor Mars has, like, two lines, <laughs> and one of them is like, the dance, silly! Uh, uh, Red, we're gonna see each other, like, in person <laughs> soon. I'm making you watch a bunch of Sailor Moon with me. It's All right, <laughs> we gotta start from episode 11. That's the last one I saw. Uh, I Entirely think they fair. just met Sailor Jupiter, maybe. Or maybe they hadn't even gotten that far. I put her in A tier, because I figure that's what she deserves. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people waiting for this one. 
Although I will uh-huh. see a lot of people waiting for what others that are on the list. Oh, oh you know, yes, you one. know, <laughs> one of my red themed boys. One of your red themed uh, boys. Stop himboifying my red themed lancers. We talked about this <laughs> previous yeah. episode. Yeah. So I take it we yeah. won't be discussing the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles version where he's the leader. No. Yeah. So uh, I haven't watched Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yet. Uh, I really like the character designs in it. I think that they're very clever, and from the clips I have seen of it, look very good. But I just I haven't had time to sit down and watch it. So classic tmnt four man group though raf is diff- so deeply the lancer Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no it's great he's the angry one and he goes off mm. on his own a lot and it's great it's very fun uh and let's see i've seen a few different cartoon versions of him uh the one in oh was it like the 2011 2012 3d animated one uh was pretty supportive all things considered like definitely less pissed than he had been Mm -hmm. but having watched Mm -hmm. that show and then some of the uh 2d animated 2003 one you recommended to me it's pretty clear (laughs) that the 2011 2012 one was like very strongly adapting that but again uh because like there were a lot of beats where i was like oh that kind of came out of nowhere and then i watched the 2003 one i'm like oh that's why they did that and it worked better here i think (laughs) Um, what makes graph work as a lancer character is that yes he is uh angry and often angsty in the way that like your bakugos might be but at no point does it feel like he would abandon his entire family Uh, and leave them for dead because he doesn't care about them. Uh, It would take an extreme, you know, Lancer going off on his own moment in order to separate Raph from his crew. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, One thing that I liked about the movie from, like, what, 2007? 2007 with Chris Evans. (laughs) Yeah, that's the one with Chris Evans as Casey Jones. So much. (laughs) It's great. I mentioned I I watched that at a young age, like, visiting my cousins, and it definitely, like, planted the seed of what would become, like, my idealized form of Lancers because that movie has, like... Raph is going off as like a he's like wearing armor and like going off to be a vigilante and like stop crime and when Leo comes back from his like training in the jungle uh, he's like oh what does this vigilante think he is someone has to stop that menace and meanwhile Raph's like well maybe he's just doing what you can't bro Uh, and then when he goes to confront the vigilante (laughs) obviously he finds out it's Raph and they have an argument and it escalates to a fight and then oh no Leo gets kidnapped by bad guys and Raph is immediately filled with regret and it's just such the perfect moment of like oh no I wanted to kick your ass but not like that (laughs) um yeah yeah it's just ideal it's so good um and I I think I mean I I feel like we're probably in agreement that he could go in S tier right like he's just such an like he's like the cronk to to this specific trope iconic lancer character and I think the fact that I never am annoyed by his lancer traits (laughs) makes him capable of reaching that S tier yes. for me, even though he is more of the rude, cool but rude archetype cool but one. Rude. <laughs> I also love that in the 2003 one, like they often open a lot of episodes with like one of the turtles narrating. And I like that in that one, he's like, I finally found someone as angry as me. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> all right, just spell it out a little more clearly for you, me. I, I grew up watching four kids on the weekends. So oh, that's yeah. why I grew up watching the 2003 Ninja Turtles. But yeah. I hold to this day, it's one of my like, <laughs> it's one of my fondest memories. It's just that, that show got me. <laughs> like, there was, I remember like crying over like season finales. Oh <laughs> of the wow! So this is deeply personal for me. Yeah. Uh, so I I am biased to a point, and I admit that. But also, I do think that you know you can't talk about a lancer without bringing up like Raph from the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and he's just so iconic. Fact, yeah, he's so iconic, and he's frequently well done. Um, gotta put him up top. Yeah, gotta put him. Up. And one thing I loved about because I've rewatched that 2007 movie recently with like an actually critical eye, and it's just mm-hmm. it just holds up. It's just like good for the most part, especially the stuff about Raph sort of being like, "Oh, I'm so angry. I want to kick my brother's ass," and then being like, "Oh no, my actions have consequences that I cannot stop." Ah, <laughs> it's just like yes, yeah, yes, I'll feel that regret. Raph is interesting part of Leo's character. Oh yeah. Oh, we didn't get to Yu-Gi-Oh! before Blue Bounced. No! (laughs) That's okay. We can add my boy, Joseph Wheeler. Joey Wheeler. Lord, what fools these mortals be. All right, here we go. Oh, boy. (laughs) Joey Wheeler. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, from from the Yugs, from the (laughs) Yu-Gi-Ohs. He's another New York boy, or Japanese, Mm -hmm. depending on, you know... (laughs) Location. What continuity you think makes sense? <laughs> Chat's mm-hmm. already meowing. I can see. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Joey Wheeler, uh, he's like a solid B 
best friend type Lancer. Uh, I like in his mm-hmm. very very early like season zero beginnings. Uh, he's a little bit more like kind of a snarky asshole, like school bully, kind of a dick. But then he like immediately yeah. turns it around and just becomes a good guy. Um, I guess like he he's kind of at his most Lancery in the season zero stuff that never made it into the anime. Uh, mm-hmm. where he's like. You know, he, he's kind of got, like, a delinquent past and, like, a rough home life and shit like that. Uh, and there's, like, whole arcs about, like, Joey hasn't been to school lately. We went to his house, but his alcoholic father threw a beer bottle at us, so we're not checking there anymore. And, uh, oh, no, he's running in with, like, a gang because they're threatening us to get him to comply. And it's like, holy shit, mm-hmm. what? Uh, but none of that shit made it into the Duel Monsters anime. <laughs> um, yeah, he sort of just kind of becomes, like, well, we'll let you, Joey take a crack at it to show how dangerous this new villain is, it's and then also warped. how much more skilled Yugi is. And it's like, well, all right. Yeah, yeah. They just use him as the wharf to be like, yeah, you sit back, you I'll handle this, and then he just, oh no, yeah. oh no. Unless I need my Valentine shows up, in which case, which also hilarious name, in which case, <laughs> Joey's allowed to do something uh, at some point. Sometimes, yes, and he does Sometimes. have a tendency to get brainwashed by the bad guys or grievously injured by the bad guys and then the characters are like no joey we care so much about you so yeah. like it, it it allows for some good arcs i just i feel like season zero joey slash manga joey is just such an ideal lancer and then he just gets watered down so hard for uh for the dual monsters anime that's kind of the iconic version yeah i would hesitate to put him too high on the list because as much as i i loved my boy joey you know we love joey we Miller. love joey in this house we stan a brooklyn but, boy <laughs> we stan a brooklyn lad but in terms of his lancer qualities yeah i I only saw the anime and i did watch season zero but even with the that, manga's I, fucking crazy <laughs> <laughs> I kind of recommend it. Well, I'll maybe not the last one. Eventually, yeah. I read Sket. There was like one year of my life where I tried to pick up Shonen Jump issues, so I would get like one random ep- like chapter of whatever Yu Gi Oh was up to. And I think at this point it was onto like um, what's mm. the one where it's card games on motorcycles? That's Five G- Ds, no, baby. Five Ds. <laughs> It'll be like one random chapter of Five Ds, like a month. Hell <laughs> but, yeah! Um, I've heard that Five Ds actually kind of slaps. <laughs> Yeah, I think it got like really goofy for GX, and then they were like, "Wait, wait, wait, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta walk it back for this mm-hmm, next mm-hmm. one." Uh, and then I think it got goofy again. But anyway, Joey's Lancerness. I don't know if I'm gonna like C tier. Ooh, C tier. I, I I've been a little more inclined for B, just because he's got a lot of hot. But we can like put him on the line, like with Todoroki. Yeah. <laughs> of it's yeah, like, I'd is this guy Lancer. even a Lancer? I don't know, but we like him, so he's okay. He's undeniably the Lancer of their uh, initial five man band. Yeah, I mean, like quality he is as a lancer like i I don't know if he's given much to you outside of like power friendship power-ups but also a lot of people in Yu-Gi-Oh aren't getting a lot besides the power of friendship yeah in general i mean we could argue we we could argue that kaiba is supposed to be the lancer to yugi in that they're like rivals Mm -hmm. and shit but like kaiba just he doesn't hang out with them enough he's not part of the gang and like kaiba is the rival to yami in the way that joey is the rival to yugi oh yes you're so right yeah and even then like (laughs) yami's just fucking minding his business like kaiba's the one who makes it weird (laughs) i mean we've all seen that bit right where kaiba's like i tremble with anticipation at dueling you again and yami's like i just care about finding my best friend joey wheeler (laughs) kaiba's like oh you motherfucker (laughs) okay um hey chat there's no gx slander here i think it's one of the funniest dubs of all time <laughs> isn't <laughs> you also the... played on four kids <laughs> isn't that the one where like there's a guy with like he has like a dinosaur bone instead of like one of his bones yeah. and as a result yeah. he has like dinosaur powers i think gx had me for the minute there like uh their kaiba clone showed up and his name was chaz oh yes chaz <laughs> we all know chaz. chaz everybody loves chaz yeah that's right chat put it up for chaz <laughs> Um, Oi, okay. Uh, the next uh, one's the gonna next be one fun. I think is all you. Oh, really? A hot... I, I watched this years ago, but it's been far too long for me to have anything intelligent to say. Oh, about it. boy. So, um, here's the thing choosing Kuwabara as the representative Lancer of Yu Yu Hakusho is a little bit tough to justify. Uh, because he is. He absolutely, he starts off that way. He's Yusuke's school rival uh who like immediately reveals that he has a heart of gold because of course yusuke begins the show 
by uh, dying. He, like, saves a kid from getting hit by a car and fully dies. And Heaven is like, oops, you did a heroic act that we absolutely weren't expecting from you. And you weren't supposed to die yet. And that kid would have been fine, actually. So, uh, good work, kid. <laughs> so, like, all right, there's going to be so much paperwork. So, we're going to give you a chance to come back. Uh, but while he's doing that, he gets to see how everybody in his life reacts to him dying tragically and all these people who he thought hated him or didn't care like his mother uh are like freaking out and just devastated and kuwabara his school rival who at this point has just been introduced trying to be tough and then getting his ass kicked by yusuke is like mm -hmm. he like crashes the funeral and it looks like he's being a dick but then he sort of like breaks down crying like you absolutely cannot be dead and it's like yes good that's the good shit <laughs> um and then when yusuke is <clears throat> sorry coming back from the dead uh part of <laughs> part of it involves like he needs like people who care about him to like kiss him in like dreams and i think one of them is kuwabara so it's like they like each other they've got like chemistry you know some stuff's going on there um <laughs> like you don't have to have like a homoerotic like rivalry slash attraction with your lancer but it helps um but the thing is after yusuke comes back to life and starts doing like spirit detective shit uh the show introduces a different character Hie, who is a classic villain. He's, like, fully vegeta E in his first appearance. And then he kind of gets, like, put on, like, heaven parole and reluctantly becomes a good guy. And then immediately becomes ride or die, like, Yusuke's best buddy, but, like, in a, in a sort of, like, a feral cat kind of way of, like, I don't like or respect any of you and I kind of hate all of you, but I respect this one guy. <laughs> so I'll, I guess I'll help him out. Um, and that, he, got, he kind of has more of, like, the personality of the Lancer and, um... In the sort of four-man band they end up forming, Kuwabara sort of gets slotted into the big guy role instead, uh, in terms of that he is physically the biggest. But then you could sort of argue that, like, Hiei hits the hardest. So, like, again, like, mm. classifying it as Kuwabara is, like, Kuwabara is the most consistently lancery character. He's the one who doesn't really have much else going on other than, like, well, he's got, like, a love interest, but that's 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 different. Um, like, mostly he's just kind of, like, Yusuke's best bud slash rival. Uh, and he is like, he's sort of he's sort of in and out, especially after the dark tournament dark. Um, so I think Kuwabara is a good um, he's a good lancer. He's a good foil to Yusuke in various ways, but honestly, they're they're kind of really similar because they're both like, you know, they're both humans. They're both delinquents. Um, <laughs> uh, they're both tough guys who like punching their problems. Um, Kuwabara is just like, he's he's kind of like dumber than yusuke and more passionate than yusuke uh so he's like more he's like more emotionally intelligent he's more in touch with his feelings <laughs> um uh and also like the problem is he sort of gets left behind by power creep because his main thing is he can make like an energy sword uh and then after a while he can make an energy sword that's a little better than the other energy sword <laughs> but everyone else is like <laughs> busting out like crazy like yokai fox transformations or giant dragons made of fire or like turning into a literal demon and kuwabara is like hey guys i can make my sword a little bit longer this time <laughs> so it's like all right good job um i think there's an arc where they just fully kidnap him and he's just the damsel in distress for the arc so like you know it gets a little weird later but he's he's a good he's a good lancer he's like a solid lancer but he doesn't really get a chance to do much of that after the first arc i guess um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he is also kind of the heart, but like, you know, most mostly he's the big guy slash use case Lancer. Um, <laughs> sorry, Chad's just like pointing out shit he did. Like, yeah, he did pull vault and punch that tiger that one time. Um, <laughs> Good for him. I think like I I I put him in B. He's fine. He's I I, I like him a lot. He's got a lot of heart. Um, <laughs> Sure, throw him in there. Yeah, why not? Um, oh, yeah, Chad is pointing out he's also, like, the only actually fully human being in the main team because it turns out Yusuke has, like, secret demonic ancestry that awakens after he dies the second time. And they had to kind of retcon, like, why didn't that happen the first time when he got hit by the car? And it's like, oh, he wasn't powerful enough yet, but now his secret bloodline has awakened. <laughs> now he's got crazy hair. Um, okay, uh... Oh, good. We're back in the zone where uh, where you can contribute. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe we should, just for the sake of not having to do every single uh, variant from the series of this particular character, uh -huh. just skip to the second of the two of these. Oh, really? Related ones. Yeah. Sure. 
Uh, no. Although I've seen every variant of the show, and I think <laughs> you've seen 1.5s. <laughs> uh, well, like two separate thirds, I'd say. <laughs> um, but uh, so we're 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 going with uh, we're going with this bad boy. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. It's oh, the more iconic right. of the dynamic. That's true. That's true. Although I'd say he's a little bit different than the other one. It's uh, Spock. Good time at the end, we can move back around. It's Spock. We're talking about Star Trek. Yeah, there are so Spock many Kirk. like person in charge is right hand man, persons in Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And Spock was the first, and I'd say the greatest, the one that everyone else is sort of trying to be or subvert. Yeah, I think Spock also kind of sitting in a similar position to some of the other like who's the lancer questions we've had on this tier because mm. kirk is the leader right of course but there's spock and bones who both interact with him quite a bit and often oppose him in slightly different ways uh i i think often people would say spock is the lancer to kirk but yeah. i personally think maybe that bones is the lancer to kirk <laughs> uh, more so than spock is because spock kind of fills the role of the smart guy and that does put him in opposition to kirk a lot but i <laughs> yeah, feel like you bones... can say that <laughs> If anyone's going to go off and have their own, like, <laughs> oh, Kirk, you damn fool arc, it's going to be fun, you know? Um, does he ever do that, though? Like, I mean, it's Star Trek, so, like, no yeah, one does anything thing. that ever lasts more than an episode. <laughs> yeah, nobody in Star Trek breaks the rules. <laughs> it's a utopia. <laughs> the most you get is people complaining and yeah, drinking a lot of synthahol or whatever. I'm a Lancer, not the smart guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that um, there are a lot of stories where a uh, character has, I'd say, more than one Lancer. Uh, like, for mm-hmm. instance, I don't think we have any characters from the TMNT cartoon because they're just all kind of Lancers to each other in different ways. It's like, is it Cyborg? Mm-hmm. Is it Raven? Is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I guess it's really just those two. But the point still stands. <laughs> um, and then you've got Robin, who has the actual Lancer personality, but he's also the leader. So when right. he runs off to have an angsty loner arc, they're like, I guess we'll miss him until he gets back. <laughs> um yeah. So I think that it's fair to focus on just one or the other, because I think while while Bones perhaps challenges Kirk a little bit more, Spock is the one who's partnered with Kirk more often. Like, they're a little bit more of an iconic pairing. Like, I don't think you would say, like, oh, it's Kirk and Bones before you'd say, and Kirk and Spock, you know? Yeah, um, my... Uh- my deep uh, favoritism towards Bones is also based on the fact that I rewatched a bunch of MASH recently, so ah, which is a similar vibe. Classic, classic. But yeah, no, I think I think it's fair if we're going to pick one to talk about. Spock is the one that you would discuss, even though um, Bones definitely also to exemplify some of those Lancer traits. But Spock definitely qualifies, I would say. Uh, I mean, let's just... Let's talk about it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Kirk, as a leader, is a bit more gung-ho and almost lancery in his own right mm-hmm. whereas spock provides sort of the measured voice on the side which i think could be a fun flip on the lancer leader dynamic because well, usually the... you expect you know edgy lonesome men and instead you're getting well Marka. well that's the thing like uh lancers have sort of an associated stereotypical personality but ultimately the personality of the lancer is strongly determined by the personality of the leader the fact that Kirk is kind of like a, a devil may care, like, uh, let's go do the stupid thing for scientific reasons. And then Spock is the mm-hmm. one who has to be like, Captain, this is highly illogical. You know, like, if if Kirk were more logical, he would have a Lancer that was a little bit more, like, happy-go-lucky or or sort of, like, reckless and, and stuff like that. You know, Lancer is a role in the five-man band, but hero and leader does not have an associated personality. Lancer just mm-hmm. has a lot of, like, if you have a leader with standard heroic traits, like, leads good and tries to do the right thing all the time, then you can easily have a Lancer who's a little bit more like, maybe we should do the stupid thing. Or, like, let's go be a dick about something for a little while for funsies. Yeah. Um, so the fact that Kirk is a little bit more, uh, has a little bit more of the traits we typically associate with a Lancer doesn't mean that Spock can't be a Lancer by embodying none of those traits. Right. It's, you know, it's the contrast, as Blue was saying earlier, to mm-hmm. the leader. And that means that if the leader has some of the more classical Lancer traits, the Lancer, in contrast, might have some of the classic leader or classic smart guy traits. And that doesn't make them any less of a Lancer character. It just makes them less of a Lancer stereotype. Yeah, I agree. Um, so here's the thing. I've seen a little bit of the original series but not very much. And I've seen the movies, like the new ones, and I saw a couple Mm -hmm. of the old ones. Um, 
So I haven't seen really enough of Spock to, like, make a categorical judgment. I've seen some of the episodes, but, like, you know. Yeah, I would say the Spock and Kirk dynamic is not necessarily as complex as I'm sure some people in chat are about to uh, accuse me of brushing over. But, like, like if you've seen the movies, you've kind of seen the Spock and Kirk dynamic. Um <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I, I know they they made Spock more of like a like a weird hot headed action star in the J.J. Abrams movies. Uh, yeah, I think they kind of abandoned a bit of. They're a bit more committed to the well, I have no emotions thing in the original series, but uh, ultimately, like, you know, does Spock oppose Kirk in some ways or contrast Kirk in some ways? Yeah, absolutely. Like we mentioned, Kirk is sometimes a bit brash and gung ho, and Spock is often more of the measured voice in the back, being like, "But the Prime Directive." Um, <laughs> But I'd also say, like, the two characters do definitely learn from each other, and there is a mutual respect there that uh, is one of my favorite parts of their particular dynamic. Um, often it, it does... Because, you know, this is the problem you run into with characters who are, like, quote-unquote emotionalists for whatever reason, whether they're yeah. suppressing it, like, or it's just like, well, they're an alien species, and they don't feel... It's... it's I don't want to say that Kirk teaches Spock to embrace his emotions ah. necessarily, but often the lesson that Spock has to learn is like, well, human emotions are not bad, actually. Mm. Um, and in contrast, the lesson that Kirk often needs to learn is, hey, think about what you're doing for like two seconds. <laughs> <my dude." laughs> so, Incredible. I okay. don't think it's necessarily like a strong Lancer relationship because I like they are contrasting each other and their foils in many ways, but I don't think that they're necessarily playing into a lot of the Lancer character type uh, points as much as they are foils for lack of a better word, um, which again, are running into the problem of like, well, what's a foil? What's a Lancer? Right. Yeah. Uh, so I would hesitate to put them, put Spock too high on the list. I don't think he's a bad Lancer necessarily, but I do think he's more of a foil and that keeps him from those like top tiers. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't know, B tier, C tier, something like that. Uh, maybe like maybe they'll like the line right okay. up there with Joey Wheeler. <laughs> Put him right before Shaggy. There we go. Yeah. All right. I love Spock. I think he's a fun character, but I don't know if he's a Lancer so much. Yeah, a lot of these guys need a little footnote that's like good character, but oh boy! <laughs> All right, this next one will oh, be this fun. Next one, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean we had to. We We're had to. Back he's on the thumbnail. Yeah, he's in the thumbnail. <laughs> Just add him in here. It's my boy, Kevin it's Levin. It's your boy, ben Kevin ben. Levin. So I, growing up, watched like the original Ben 10 series and then moved on to the subsequent like time skippy ones, wow. Alien Force and all that jazz. Yeah, Alien Force, you... Ultimate Alien. Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch the original series at all? I tried, but I was like, I was fully out of the age bracket when I tried to revisit it. And I was like, this is a little dumb. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's great yeah, if you're 10. Enough, I wasn't you know? 10. Yeah. <laughs> As a 10-year-old, it ruled, but of as course. a 24-year-old, maybe not so much. Not so much. Uh, yeah, but I think mostly we're talking about him in this context of, like, Alien Force and Ultimate Alien and any of the times right. could be When he's one, not a bad guy, he's Kevin. part of the gang. Yeah, he's part of the gang. He gets to actually play Lancer to Ben. Um, I think this great. does depend on which season, unfortunately, because I noticed, mm -hmm. like, a marked dip in quality, I want to say, after season two of Alien Force. Uh where it felt like there was like a revolt in the writer's room and they were like, we got to make Kevin evil again. <laughs> we made him too nice. <laughs> uh, so he starts acting like a dick and the others stop acting like they care about his well-being. And it's just like, mm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like the dynamic they had before, but now it's not there anymore. Um, I do think he's a very solid Lancer, especially early on, because uh, he's got the like antagonistic, like button heads dynamic with Ben, but like, whenever he forgets to like maintain that he's just like well yeah obviously i casually care about and like and support you and want mm -hmm. good things for you uh classic jerk with a heart of gold stuff uh there's even a couple but I, I don't even remember which episode it is it's like like ben's dealing with like a couple I, they must have been like holdovers from the original series like just class bullies uh mm. who are being kind of mean and like kevin is like fucking around with his car but like he like wipes his hands and like comes over like cracking his knuckles and ben kind of gives him like the no man i got this look <laughs> it's like yes yes <laughs> destroy them um yeah and i just i like that specific dynamic where kevin just kind of comes across as like 
kind of like the asshole older brother who's like kevin is in many ways kind of the raf of oh yeah like closer to a raf type lance if we're trying to categorize by like the existing s lancers yes he's not a samwise he's not a glimmer he's not a watson he's definitely like a Raphael. definitely in the same like a, yeah like he's the angry one lance lancer in a lot of ways <laughs> yeah agreed yeah. But I also think that, like, his character kind of suffered, uh, to be fair, so did Ben's, uh, mm -hmm. because they sort of, like, undid all their character development. It's like, okay, we already had Ben learn too many lessons about being, like, a good person and a hero, so we got to make him dumb again. Let's start f hacking mm -hmm. the Omnitrix again. That never goes wrong. Um, yep. And, uh, Kevin's been too nice. We're going to, uh, I don't know, he's evil now. He absorbs energy, and now he's evil. <laughs> and there's, like, a couple really good moments still. There's, like, a couple moments of just, like, I don't remember when it is. Uh, I think it's when they're actually, unfortunately, setting up the Kevin's going to be evil again arc with the with that mm. other guy with, like, the same powers who's, like, really evil. Um, and there's a bit where, like, Ben is fighting that guy and Kevin got warped super hard, like, all the way out through the wall. <laughs> and he's, like, stuck under something. And, like, this alien who they've been helping out is, like, dithering over, like, should I run away or should I maybe go and help even though I'll be captured? Uh, and Kevin just goes on, like, this full screed about why Ben is, like, the greatest hero ever and absolutely deserves help and support. And it sucks that this guy's not going to help him. And he's like, oh, I was just like you once. And it's like, yes, yes, give me that character development. And then don't undo it in three episodes, please. But you know how it is. Yeah, even, you know, writing aside, I think Kevin is giving me a lot of what Raph is giving me, but just not quite as good. Like, I <laughs> Like on instinct, I'm like, oh yeah, put him in like the A tier. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I think he's a pretty straightforward lancer. He's not doing a lot of particularly unique lancer things, but he's when the writing of the show is working. Yeah, doing him pretty well. I think that um, I I'm okay with putting him in A tier. Uh, I think we could justify knocking him a little bit lower, but I think uh, he's got a lot of heart, and we like the bits that are well written, really good. Um. And I love his dynamic with Gwen. It's like one of the only oh, so like, good. They, so good. and like they kick off that romantic subplot immediately. These two have like not seen each other in years, and immediately they're like, oh, "I follow you anywhere." And I'm like, somehow I'm okay with this. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I think what sold me on it is like like three episodes in, where she's abruptly like, "Why haven't you asked me out yet?" And he's like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Did you skip ahead in the script? We're supposed to keep this will they won't they shit going for another like half season." And she's like, "Nah, -uh. I'm a busy lady. I'll date other people. Whatever." And he's just like, "Okay, cool." Dumb little mullet. Why would I care about that? <laughs> oh, it's so good. That's the episode yeah, where she Kevin Levin in the eighth year. She she dates uh Mike Morningstar because nothing bad oh, ever yeah. came from trusting a guy named Morningstar, uh, and he's mm -hmm. voiced by Will Wheaton. <laughs> And I didn't Classy. notice at the time, but, like, I genuinely had a moment where I, like, I woke up and I was like, was that fucking Will Wheaton? <laughs> I hadn't seen the episode in, like, weeks. And still in my head, I was like, oh, my God, I know that voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good Lord. Um, this next Lancer I was excited to get to. Oh, yeah. You know, you've been having a bit of a moment with okay, this series God's recently. <laughs> <laughs> having a moment. Give me a second. I'll, I'll get the text box in there. It's uh, uh, it's knuckles. It's knuckles. It's your boy knuckles, the echidna. <laughs> knuckles, the, the sonic another one. red themed lancer. <laughs> another one. Brutally himboed in recent <laughs> Uh Devastatingly himboified. Makes me so mad every yeah. time it happens. It's he deserves better. Let yeah. me have my angry red themed lancers, damn it! But no, knuckles again, yeah. kind of like Raph and Kevin is doing a lot of the same things yes uh, uh like simple answer traits done relatively well uh you've been reading or like a more yes the the idw sonic comic run um yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what i will say is that knuckles actually does not get that many moments to shine in this comic run because he's basically off on angel island guarding the master emerald which is his job like every time he leaves to like fuck around with protagonist shit the emerald gets stolen or like subverted by bad guys or turned into like a giant robot dragon so he's just like look call me if you really really need help but otherwise leave me alone <laughs> um so yeah. there's a couple of arcs when he shows up and has a pretty good showing of it a fun contrast with sonic i think Knuckles kind of suffers from the vegeta problem of like well it was a very early usually what happens in any given run is that knuckles is fairly early on as an antagonist or full-on villain yep uh and then very quickly is defeated or joins the side of the good guys and then kind of just is also there and mad about it and then shadow gets introduced and everyone's <laughs> like oh 
the yeah. edgier version of Knuckles, and it's like, well, no, Knuckles is doing something different, kind of. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's that's accurate. Knuckles is usually introduced as a bad guy, but only because he's being tricked into it by Eggman. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as he learns the truth, he's always like an immediate change to fully unironically team good guy. They did that in the movie, and it worked really well, also, played by yep. Idris Elba. Absolutely fucking killing it I, in the performance. I don't know what Idris Elba's agent is up to, <laughs> but like, that... Im immense props to the man. I don't he know if his agent half the role. Yeah, but man, he will take any part. I don't know if his <laughs> agent had fast. fuck all to do with this. I think they, they were like, we want you to be Knuckles the Echidna, and he was like, I'm already on a plane to America. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I love the way he announced it, where he just posted the fist. <laughs> fist, and everyone was like, Is this real? Is this a clickhole no, article? No, 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 and then no, it was no, real. Like, I will not be doing a sexy voice for Knuckles, and it's like, like you're Idris Elba. Yeah, my dude. You're Hot. Yeah, you don't have a choice, my man. Um, so that version of Knuckles is great uh, and very classic, like introduced as bad guy. But then it's like, oh, actually, I've been misled and I'm just super lonely and stuff. And then Sonic's like, let's be yeah. buds. And then they are. So that's that's great. That's top quality. Um, and he's kind of got like his main thing, his point of contrast versus Sonic that makes him a good foil as well as a Lancer is that he is serious where Sonic is silly. Um, mm -hmm. So like Sonic is, you know, he he's... He's got to go fast, and he's he's fun. He, he doesn't put down roots. He doesn't stay grounded. Uh, one thing that uh, the comic version of Knuckles explicitly states is that he has actual responsibilities, and he's, like, the only person yeah. he knows who understands what that's like. He uh, does have, like, a rich and deep society that involves a lot of... Well, they did. He's the only did. one left. Uh, but like, yeah. One thing that <laughs> one thing that the uh, the IDW comics did, and here's the thing: I really like him as a Lancer. I think I can't put him in S tier just because, at no, least in this I run, agree. he doesn't spend enough time with Sonic to be the Lancer. Like, they're they're great foils, but like, if I knocked Zuko down for not spending enough time with actually like Lancering with Aang, then I have to be fair. I have to do the same thing with Knuckles. But like, one thing. They just did, like, the, the release of the, like, the 2022 annual for the Sonic comic, which is basically just, like, mm -hmm. a bunch of little short stories. Um, and in one of them, uh, Blaze the Cat, uh, oh. extra-dimensional princess, uh, master of the soul emeralds, I guess. Uh, basically, she, uh, everything's fine in her world. They, like, they, they stopped the pirates they were hunting. And she basically experiences the form of anxiety you get when you just finished something that was stressing you out and your brain hasn't adjusted and it's like something's gotta ha like i'm waiting for something to go wrong and everyone's like no mistress you you succeeded you should take a break and she's like oh god um and she fully like comes to i don't know it's is it earth it, no like mobius or whatever whatever mm -hmm. and she's just like hangs out with knuckles on angel island and is like i'm just stressing so much like the the emeralds are fine but like I just, you know, I don't know what to do. And um, he's like, look, I feel you. You know, every time I leave this island, I'm, I, it's it's a risk. It's a gamble. But, like, you got you to gotta learn to take these quiet moments when you can get them. And, like, just, just you know, just relax a little bit. Like, you're, like, the only other person I, I know who understands what it's like to have responsibilities. So, like, I totally get it. And I was like, yes. Everyone else yeah. is just a radical teen. And yeah. we're out here having to do, like, full person jobs. Everyone yeah. else just fucks around all the time. Sonic is actively like, yeah, resistance rebuilding the society is cool. Yeah. But you know what I got to do? Go fast. In, in a way, like, that we're running into the same problem with the Sonic characters that we kind of run into anytime we bring up, like, a superhero. Where, like, between the various different comic interpretations of the characters, the video games, and also all of the TV adaptations, like, there's just so many different variants of these characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and while they tend to follow the broad strokes, like, the IDW version... Uh, does not necessarily resemble Sonic X, which was my biggest uh, <laughs> understanding of the Sonic canon for a very long time, or like even like the '90s run of comics uh, where Sonic was dating that chipmunk lady. For okay, a while. we don't need to um, talk about that. <laughs> and the echidnas were all around, though. Like that's thing. That's changes, the Ken like, Penders thing, content. right? I think that's been banished to the so. non-canon continuity well, plot dimension. It's there, <laughs> <laughs> I read it. Uh, no, but. I, at least in Sonic X, like they have more of like, a traditional five-man band thing going on because it was a cartoon in the four kids block, of which course, is popping of course. up a lot. Yes, Sally Acorn. No, <laughs> don't, no, don't speak her name. No. Why are you do this to me, her. man? You had a vest. It was very cool. Uh, no. Um, when Knuckles is actually a part of the gang, which is, I'd say, maybe not the IDW comics approach to him, but like He's the sometimes. movie and some of the other TV. TV shows and some of like the more recent games, I think. Yeah. I haven't played too many of them. Um, he does slide, I think, pretty easily into that Lancer uh, spot without 
changing his character. Um, so I hesitate to knock him too much for the IDW comics making him have all these responsibilities and things to do because that's not, I would say, the majority of what he does in the, the wider Sonic no, universe. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the thing but is I don't like... think he's an F tier. I, I, I think that that's fair. He's yeah. too much of the RAF type to ever be that. RAF is in the S tier because none of the other RAF types can quite touch yeah. what he's doing as well as he does it. RAF um, is only a really good Lancer. He doesn't have yeah. anything else muddying the waters. I will say that I, I think that Knuckles having like responsibility is actually a genuinely good point of contrast between him and Sonic. Uh, and there's just a lot of a lot of good stuff. Basically, like, here's the thing. You gotta understand. Knuckles is my boy, all right? Like, I like a lot of the characters. Knuckles is my fave. So when whenever the comic deigns to remember that he exists and they're like, hey, man, listen, that zombie apocalypse thing that's been happening down there, it's getting really bad. We absolutely, like, you are our absolute last port mm-hmm. of, like, of shelter and resistance and we really need your help. And he's like, ugh, you always bring trouble to my island. Obviously, I will help you. Um, which uh, leads to a... It, it, this is, like the last battle before they solve the zombie apocalypse situation. Um, So when Knuckles gets in a brief heroic sacrifice, it's like, he'll be fine in five minutes, but that doesn't really diminish it. But like, he's genuinely like, Mm -hmm. Sonic, you better fix this. Or I swear I'm going to haunt you. And then he like punches like Zombot Shadow immediately infecting himself uh and they're like no and he's like just solve, fix the problem so everything's fine i'll just keep punching him as long as i still have my brain functional and it's like yes yes my boy so he's great everybody should read those fucking comics this is driving me nuts I, every time i talk about how there's good sonic media i feel like i'm taking crazy pills um i'm fine with like line between b and a tier i'd, I'd put him in yeah. a tier if yeah. it was just me but like you know you've got the other knowledge of other sonics yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I think he's a better Lancer almost in the other Sonic media, so I would be comfortable just putting him in the A tier. Perfect. But, uh, we put him in the same spot as Batman. And Kevin Levin. And Kevin Levin and uh, Sailor Mars. <laughs> Sailor Mars. Oy. Every time we do one of these tier lists, it always just becomes like a, well, I guess all these characters are about equivalent in this particular yeah. category. <laughs> well, it always just ends up as a bell curve. Like, of course it does. Yeah, of course. B and C are... Like, B is chocked full of characters to the point where we can't fit anything else in. Yep. And then A and C get, like, all the hangers on in either direction. Maybe you get a handful of S's. I'm surprised we haven't had any E's or F's yet. I was expecting a little bit more uh, trash from the Lancers, but I suppose we might that we might still get, get some. some good- I, I think we kind of tried to make this list mostly good, uh, but there's, there's, there's probably some. Maybe. I don't know. Actually, most of those on we'll the list look good. <laughs> um, There's a bunch at the bottom that I think only you know about. Yeah. Well, you know, nobody was supervising me, so obviously I had to go wild. But for now, let's talk about Hunter from the Owl House. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Great show. Great show. Uh, here's the thing about Hunter. He's basically doing the exact same thing with Zuko, um, but a little bit faster and with a little bit less lead time. So he's had very little time to actually be a Lancer. <laughs> In fact, I'm not sure he had any time in the same... Because we're I'm assuming we're framing him as a Lancer to lose, right? Um, yeah, I think that's the the easy way to put him. I think outside of the season two finale, he was not ever in the same scene as Luce with dialogue after he became a good guy. <laughs> yeah, so... I think... I don't think he's necessarily a bad Lancer, but the show isn't over and we haven't gotten to see a lot of right. him. Uh, and I also don't think he's like, because if we start out early in the show before Hunter's introduction, because he wasn't introduced in the first season, um, or at least not as like the character. That no, we he wasn't. No, I don't think he was even seen yeah. in the first season. No, I don't think we, I don't think we even see the Golden Guard in the first season. So um, you could argue that the Lancers in that situation would be either Amity or maybe Willow. Uh Mm. I because and because there's these existing characters that already play off of Luke in some of those Lancer slots, like Hunter is. If you look at the five man band that you have at the end of season two, like yeah, Hunter's probably <laughs> Lancer. Yeah, I mean, like, Gus definition. has to be the smart guy. Willow's the big guy with her magic. Amity mm-hmm. is the heart because she and Luz are smooching, and that yeah, uh-huh, that Luz means Hunter weird, has to be right? the Lancer. Um, he has to be the Lancer. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's doing anything like particularly lancerly. Like he is playing off of Luz. Um, I think that they play off each other in interesting ways. But I think that like I, don't know. I, st- I feel because here's the thing: he's such a good lancer, and it's such a good show. He's such a good character, and it's such a good show. But I feel like just because we're like, well, he will be a great lancer when they actually let these two hang out. 
I, I feel like we're putting him down in like the Bucky Barnes zone of like he he's there's potential there. We just haven't seen it yet. Um Yeah, I would say like I don't know if I put him I put him on like the line between C and D that's, right now. Yeah, that's just fine because by me. like I can't verbalize what he is doing that makes him a good lancer necessarily it's yeah. just he has all the trappings of a lancer and there's potential and the show's not over yet so it's possible that he'll be a really great lancer later on but right now yeah he's sort of just he was sort of like a narrative foil that is now slotted into the lancer okay as as often as the arc for lancers, i'm sure he's gonna get he a chance a villainous foil yeah to but he hasn't had his chance to truly lance what i'm gonna do or, is yeah. i'm gonna slap him down there on the line between c and d and i'm gonna add a little footnote with two asterisks that means but we love them <laughs> but we love them yes because yes. that's that's the only fair way to make this work just mm -hmm. so everybody knows uh okay I think we may want to just skip this next one and go right to the ones after it. Give me cause... just a sec. I can't see what it is. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Everything's fine. Just start up. I swear. <laughs> OBS is just not listening when I unclick my mouse today. Everything's fine. Tragic. I don't understand what's happening. Okay. Uh, Just a second while I get all this stuff sorted out. Okay. Here we go. And nope. Stop that. I like watching all the motions happen a few seconds delayed because I'm just watching the stream on YouTube with no, the tab muted. No, don't tell. I'm trying my best. There they go. Oh, I just watched all the the shimmies even moved a little bit. I know. It's fine. Everything's cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Who are we skipping? Ah. Uh. Yeah. We can we can skip that neck that one you have selected. Uh. And go yeah, straight to. These two. Okay. Probably. Could talk about uh, are we doing separate lancers or will they be together? I feel like they're the same show so far. Every time we've had the same show, we've just done them together, so we might as well just toss them together. Okay. This one's going to be funny because I think it's a real difference yeah. between like the aesthetic versus the actual... <laughs> the actual... <laughs> yeah, the actual <laughs> role in the story. So we've talked about one of the big three. I feel like now it's time to touch another one. Uh, it's not One Piece. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's Bleach. It's Bleach. Uh, it's Bleach. Um... Specifically, Rukia and Renji, who, again, um, you can guess one of those <laughs> characters. In the show. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake! Ah, sorry. Everything's cool. <laughs> the mouse rebelled Everything's again. Fine. <sighs> it's going great. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> um, it's just going back through the chat. People just going catch out real smooth when everything was wiggling around. <laughs> anyway, um, right. So here's the thing. Oh, I, huge. I watched like 90 episodes of Bleach, which got me through one of the filler arcs. And I watched a few sporadic episodes later that I was told were really good. And I read some of the manga, like up to the part where they got rid of Aizen. And I was like, all right, mm -hmm. we're done. And then the manga kept going. And I was like, uh... kept going. There's several more arcs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was, uh... yeah, that was something. Um, if you saw up through Aizen, you kind of saw through the point where people stopped having characters. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Please don't roast me for that. It's just true. Yeah, I'm sorry, chat's been like, finally our first E tier, and it's like, ah, maybe some uh, of them. Maybe. Um, yeah. Here's the thing that I think is very funny about this. Like, Rukia does not really have the aesthetic of the Lancer. She's kind of the, um, mm -hmm. she's the introduction to the secret world, as it were. She shows up, and she's weird. She has, like, powers mm -hmm. and shit, and then she has to share them with Ichigo, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but Renji has thoroughly, like, the Lancer aesthetic. He's got, like, red hair. <laughs> Spiky pony Fucking crazy <laughs> eyebrows. Uh, big crush on Rukia that automatically uh, makes him mad at Ichigo, even though there's nothing there. Uh, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they did later at the manga. I don't fucking know. Um, uh, I believe he and Rukia get like married or something. Renji? Like, there's like Rukia? a time Not Ichigo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess Ichigo that's good. And, uh, or Hime or whatever. Oh, of course they do. Yeah, um, sure. yeah we got to get the gingers together. Uh, so the thing with Renji uh, is that he's like framed as that. He's got the aesthetic. He's got the, like, rivalry with Ichigo. And then I think just power creep fucks him over, right? <laughs> like, he's barely around. Because he just shows up during, like, the, the fucking, what's it called? Uh, the Soul Society, like, the rescue arc. Obviously yeah. justified Ichigo and be like, huh, I'm like, whatever, man. I got to stop you. And then he's like, but you're friends with Rukia. How can you let this happen? And I don't even know. I, I mean, obviously, he, like, sides with him after that, right? He's like, you're right, actually. Let's be, let's go rescue her. Yeah. 
But they kind of slot into like a little bit of like a because they also got the three friends from like the human. Oh world. right, those and guys. Like, along, yeah, that's uh, Orhimi, Uryu, and um, Sato. I think it is. Chaz. And yeah, right. Chaz. <laughs> or Chad maybe. Chaz. <laughs> I think it's just Chad. I think it's just Chad. Um, and then there's like that tomboy like character, but I don't think she ever actually becomes important. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, and it's sort of like if you take those three and Ichigo and Rukia, you kind of have a five man band. Mm. And in that scenario, you could make an argument for like maybe Uryu being the, the like glasses guy who's one of the whatever it's called that fights the, the oh, soul Quincy's. The lock. <laughs> yeah, 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 Quincy's. Um, you could make an argument for him being the Lancer in that case, but uh, I would argue that he's probably the smart guy of that situation. Yeah. Um, he is introduced as being kind of a dick. Like, everyone else is just yeah. Ichigo's friend, but he's like, huh, I've randomly triggered, like, a hollow invasion for no reason to prove I'm superior. And Ichigo's like, you what the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna go fix that. <laughs> and then he was like, impossible, I miscalculated. Yeah. How can I be being overwhelmed by a problem I caused? And then after that, everyone's just like, all right, we're friends now. And I was like, back the fuck up. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's like, well, Chad's definitely the big guy because he gets the big arm power up thing. Mm-hmm. And Orihime is definitely the, the heart, heart because, because he's the token girl who isn't Rukia and is also in the friend group and that everyone has a crush on. And she has like healing you know, powers and, and like other shit that yeah. she never uses. Like, what's up? I have never. the power to instantly slice shit in half. And she's like, that's gross. That's I'm never cool. using you. And it's like, oh, lady. Ma'am. <laughs> uh, Ichigo is the leader. And then it becomes a question of like, is Uryu or Rukia the smart guy or the lancer right mm-hmm. um and i could see it going either way i personally lean towards rukia because a she interacts with each to go way more and b like i think as much as Uryu does oppose ichigo in some ways i think his character is more playing to the type of the smart guy mm-hmm. uh in a way that allows rukia to embody the lancer tendencies even I mean, though Renji is the one who has all the aesthetic choices of the lancer yes well, I mean, it's obviously Ryu has, has to be the, the smart guy. Problem of One Piece for me, where One Piece is like, well, literally anyone on the crew could be a Lancer to Luffy at any given moment, and in Bleach, it's like, I have literally no idea who's supposed to be the Lancer. Yeah. <laughs> no one seems to want to take on that mantle. And none of the characters are really consistent or have like relationships with each other for very long. Anyway, um, mm. I don't really think we're persuading ourselves very much because it's like by process no. of elimination, Rukia could be seen as the Lancer. Um, I think of the two, Rukia is more Lancer than Renji, but I don't think either of them are particularly good Lancers. Mm. Yeah, I think the thing is, like, Renji has the aesthetic, and then he just never spends any time with Ichigo, (laughs) ever. Mm -hmm. So they never hang out. Uh, Also, he's, like, he's got, like, the stock Lancer personality, but kind of so does Ichigo. (laughs) Um, yeah. Like, what's up? I'm a hot-headed asshole redhead, and I, like... It's almost more like Rukia is the leader, and then Ichigo is the lancer, frankly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the personality of the hero can be all kinds of things. So, like, just because Ichigo has stock lancer personality syndrome doesn't mean he can't still be the hero. And in that case, it makes sense to give a more stock heroic personality to his lancer. Mm-hmm. So that does still make sense, but it means that him and Renji don't really have any, like, foiling dynamics. <laughs> They're basically just the same guy, but again... <laughs> Um, yeah, basically. Yeah. One of them like never stopped growing his hair out. The other one constantly gets new, new one of them got bored just growing out the ponytail and started doing crazy shit to the eyebrows too. <laughs> I don't know, mm-hmm. man. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I could be persuaded to put this probably as low as E. Like they're not actively offensive to my sensibilities. They're just like yeah. technically they're lancers. The fact that we can't categorize one of three characters as a definitive Lancer, I think, puts them pretty solidly in the E tier across the board. Yeah, that's that's I, fair. Even though I, again, favorite characters in the game. Well, anime. yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think yeah, a lot of us probably liked Renji because of the character that he promised to be. Mm-hmm. And also, like, the problem with Bleach yeah, is... They showed me an angry red guy, and I yeah. was like, oh, like Raphael from Dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, sign me up. I think the problem Except I run he into... does not live up to the S tier Lancer that Raphael the problem I run into with Bleach is that they introduce like five million characters, and then there is no chance to give them all yeah. runtime. Um, all right, uh, this one. What I've got? Uh, hell yeah! Hell Let's do yeah! It. This one's gonna be fun. This one's fun. We talked about her it's... semi recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just her. Oh. What's up? Uh, no, no, all, all good. My oh. cat was walking in the room. I thought she needed something, but nope, she's just chilling. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Riza Hawkeye. From it's Kamala. your girl. Yeah. Ooh. Um, 
Yeah, so Reza Hawkeye, uh, Lancer to Colonel Roy Mustang slash right hand lady, uh, one of several right hand people uh, in the entirety of Fullmetal Alchemist. I, I mean, when I did the right hand man video, I was like, I could have so easily populated this exclusively with examples just from Fullmetal Alchemist. I tried so hard not to. And even then, I was like, I wrote this example specifically with like the conflict with pride in mind. And like, I can't think of a better one. But it's just like back to back with three others. Um, yeah. Anyway, another reason- great example of like a lancer leader dynamic where the lancer and the leader have a deep amount of trust and respect for each other. Oh yeah. Uh, kind of in the same way as Frodo direction. <laughs> mm, yes, very much so. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it's another case where the uh, the leader in that dynamic has traits that are commonly associated with the lancer, and as a result, to foil the the lancer does not have those traits. So. Mustang is like, he's, you know, he's a military badass. He's pretty tactical and calculating. But his main thing is fire. And he's, you know, he keeps it, like, he keeps a lid on it for most of the show. But we do see very eloquently illustrated at the end that he has a problem with rage. Uh, very justified rage. We'd probably react the same if we saw Bestie Mays Hughes get iced like that. But the point is, like, so he's kind of got, he's kind of got the hot headed side. And Risa Hawkeye has the, like, cold clear-eyed you know she's a sniper she kind of has to be that sort of like cold and calm and emotionless i mean she's not emotionless is the thing like you might Mm. read that into her if you see her early on but it becomes pretty clear that like she actually has a really just extremely comfortable rapport with mustang like they just really understand and trust each other um I think there's, like, a moment of clarity the first time we see them having, like, a coded conversation on the phone where he is pretending to be, like, chatting up some girl he's going to go on a date with later, and she's pretending to be that girl while she's, like, sniping, like, homunculi from a rooftop. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's just so good. Uh, So, obviously, the main thing with Risa Hawkeye is that she's incredibly loyal to Mustang, and he's incredibly loyal to her. So that's not a point of contrast with them. That's just, like, they're straight-up ride or die with each other. Um, almost literally. Uh, and, uh, the main thing is basically Mustang does not trust himself to hold himself to a, an ironclad moral standard. So basically it's like, all right, Lieutenant, I'm trusting you to shoot me if I ever do anything wrong. And she's like, understood, sir. (laughs) And there's a few great bits where he's like, I was contemplating human transmutation to save Risa who got her fucking throat cut. And she glared at me because she was absolutely going to murder me if i did that (laughs) it's like yes yes um so i i mean i she's an easy s tier for me she's just so good there's there's a lot right with her and nothing wrong with her in terms of being a lancer i think Mm -hmm. yeah i'm struggling to think of anything that could be a counterpoint but i'd be happy putting her in s tier perfect let's just slap this bad boy down there okay uh the next one's gonna be a little bit interesting (laughs) Uh, okay. Uh, let me just, so we've mentioned that, uh, a lot of these Lancers, you know, they've got dynamics with heroes that aren't really standard, as it were. Mm -hmm. This is almost the exact opposite problem (laughs) in that, uh, this character is the Lancer in this story, but his name is also on the box, so... (laughs) Inuyasha. It's Inuyasha. He's a very classic, angry, red-themed Lancer boy who just happens to be the guy whose name is on the box. But he's not the main character. Kagome is the main character. And despite being her love interest, he is also her Lancer. Like, they they foil off each other constantly. Um, yeah. She's very gentle and compassionate, and he's a rude asshole, but he's got, like, a heart of gold in there. And whenever she, like, sees through to that, she's like, ah, he really is nice. And he's like, fuck, are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> you better cut that shit out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he's, like, his own angry red-themed Lancer. <laughs> Mostly because Kagome just my own more than me situation, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's mostly just because Kagome doesn't really put up with that shit from him, because <laughs> she's mm-hmm. like, "Aw, you try so hard to be mean and scary, but I see you're actually deeply compassionate and caring." He's like, "No, shut up. Who told you?" <laughs> so, uh, I have a great deal of affection <laughs> for this show and this character. Um, I don't want to let this like color my judgment, but it absolutely will. So, you who've watched this show like more recently with a more critical eye, uh, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, I think he's, like, a pretty solid Lance overall. I think it's very fun that he is ostensibly one of the main, like, the main character who's named the show after, except Kagome is 100% the main character. Yeah. Uh, 
She's the so POV character. Of, we yeah. always follow her. <laughs> it's sort of the Lucy situation in Fairy Tale where it's like, well, like Natsu's like the fighter guy, but Lucy's the POV character. So who's the main character? It's Kagome in the situation. It's Kagome. But, we spend um, more time in Kagome's head. Uh, whereas with Fairy Tale, it's like Lucy's ostensibly yeah. the POV character, but after a while, it's just like, oh, we left her on the shelf. You know, whatever. <laughs> She's <laughs> fine. Um, I think he's an overall pretty solid Lancer. I don't mm-hmm. think he's doing anything particularly unique. Uh, I am constantly frustrated by every time uh, Kikyo shows back up. Fucking, <laughs> I, I real, swear to God. I was trying to get through the show, Red. I was trying to watch all of it. I got to like season four and I was like, I can't. If no, Kikyo season four is the good time, one. That's it. that's it. I'm done. I'm um, sorry. I didn't like it either. I feel like the show liked Kikyo more than anyone who watched the show did. So like whenever she came back, we were supposed to be like, oh my gosh, it's Kikyo. But in actuality, it was just like, God damn it. Why do people keep throwing her off cliffs? It never sticks. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. I think he's a solid Lancer overall. He opposes Kagome in interesting ways. And then yeah. similarly, Kagome is his foil in a lot of interesting ways. Um, yeah, I do. I do think that <laughs> alongside. A lot of like, particularly hot takes about Inuyasha <laughs> the Lancer. I feel like he's a pretty standard red themed Lancer he's, archetype. Yeah, he's cast from a very standard mold. I think that the interesting thing is that he's one of the only angry red themed Lancers who is in an, in an explicit romantic relationship with the hero he is the Lancer to. Uh, mm. We've got like Riza Hawkeye on here in a Lancer dynamic that is also heavily implied to be romantic. Like I, saw, I think someone pointed out in the comments that it's it's like never it's like we never see them kiss. But I was so baffled at the idea that these two weren't going to get married <laughs> as soon as it was legal. Anyway, it's fine. Um, so, you know, I, I think that adds an interesting edge to the, the Lancer thing because that means that he can do the standard like, oh, I'm a dick. I'm, I'm rude and mean. But, oh, no, are you in danger and hurt? Let me help you out. Like, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. other Lancers do this. But, like, when it's like a romance thing, they do it a lot more. And that's always just kind of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like maybe like. No, go on. Line between B and A tier, maybe, uh, or just. I mean, I put maybe him in solid A tier. I feel like he's better yeah, at this sure. than Bakugo, and we put Bakugo on the B to A line, so you know. I feel like Bakugo is doing more interesting things as a lancer for me than Inuyasha ever did in well, the that's show. Fair. But I also <laughs> no, that's fair. I I think that Inuyasha gets a lot of points from being a simple meal, well made. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's fair. We put Sailor Mars in A, so yeah, I feel like yeah, I'm same era, yeah, same, same vibes. So if I'm the red themed dickhead of the group, and I'm here to yeah. act like I don't like you, but secretly I do. Uh, let's just put him right next to Kevin Levin, so everyone can really marinate on that for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh boy, howdy! This all right, one this is, one's gonna uh, be all you, baby. On. So in the, in the Pokemon anime, <laughs> yep, yep, uh, in like Indigo League, right, right, okay. Mm-hmm. You got Ash Ketchum. Right, he's your your leader, he's your protagonist, he's your hero. Mm-hmm, um, you've mm-hmm. got Brock, uh, and you've got Misty as sort of his his two companions. But also, also, and this is important, mm-hmm. you've Pikachu. Right, mm-hmm. hear me out, hear me out. Mm-hmm. I think of the other three characters in that particular alignment, Pikachu is the Lancer. And listen, listen, I know what you're saying. You're saying Sophia, you're crazy. Pikachu is clearly the heart. But no, no, <laughs> <laughs> wrong. You're uh-huh. all wrong. <laughs> Who opposes Ash the most? in interesting ways <laughs> pikachu you know it's it's episode one <laughs> episode one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ash is like he's running late he gets he gets yes indigo is big brain he gets the pikachu and pikachu's like i hate this kid what's he doing <laughs> they have to learn to trust each other what is a classic lancer leader dynamic learning to trust each other despite their differences despite uh-huh. their antagonism yep. um Brock and Misty are pretty much more or less always going along with whatever Ash is doing. Like, Misty maybe has the most opportunity to be the Lancer of that dynamic. But again, early anime problems. Sometimes she usually just becomes the girl. Um, my whole thesis for this is that I think it's really accurate to describe Pikachu as the Lancer to Ash. Because that's how their <laughs> dynamic plays out. Um, I don't have a lot of coherent arguments aside from that. Because I kind of forgot I put him on the list. But <laughs> uh, I think I'm right. I called you out on this directly. <laughs> I was like, Pikachu's on here? And you were like, listen. I was like, isn't Brock uh, the Lancer? And you were like, well, actually, uh, I'd say Brock, Brock is more like... not the Lancer. Yeah, yeah. I that feel was very the... confident in saying Brock is the big guy or the heart, depending on how you want to play it. And you can maybe make an egg argument for a smart guy. Um, if you're going to argue that someone who isn't Pikachu is the Lancer, it's Misty. But I, I you know, I just think I'm right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a very important question. How long... Yeah proportionate to the runtime of Pokemon as a series 
does Pikachu maintain this bad boy Lancer persona? The whole show. Really? He's alongside Ash, and Pikachu's the character who's always there, so they always have an opportunity for Pikachu to be like, hey, buddy, let me zap you because you're doing something dumb. But is he challenging him at any point after you that? Getting zapped, you know? Okay, but That's at what point does that stop being a character quirk and start being a running gag? Well, I'd say, like, him zapping Team Rocket is a running gag, because we're not getting any character introductions from there. But I would say, like, Pikachu getting mad at Ash and doing the little angry Pikachu eyes uh, is a character moment, because it shows Pikachu um, in exerting some understanding of the situation that they're in, and also uh, dissenting from what Ash's choice to do things is. Um Again, if we're taking it seriously, Misty is probably the Lancer. But I think that Pikachu is off forgotten when they are describing the four-man band of Pokemon and should be given his due. Chat is saying oh, anything it... from Charizard is the real Lancer, which isn't better, to he's only the Lancer for one episode, to oh yeah, he's a pre like real Lancer for like six seasons there. So I have no idea what's going on anymore. <laughs> You know, that's that's fair. Um, that's Also, chat, bringing up a good point, because Pikachu refusing to evolve into Raichu is a whole plot point, which is a direct challenge to Ash and also shows, you know, agency and Pikachu's part that I feel like we're overlooking in this argument. But mm -hmm. if we're going to place him somewhere on the tier list, it could be somewhere on the bottom. The tier list. Somewhere on the bottom? <laughs> oh, we can finally populate the D through F zone? I wouldn't put him lower than Rukia and Renji. <laughs> okay. But... Because I think he is a Lancer. So we're not putting like, him in the not a Lancer danger zone. Um, yeah. So far we have not had a not a Lancer. But I will say that uh, <laughs> given that he seems to have a consistent personality through most of the show and actually has dynamics with the protagonist as a result, I think we can rank him higher than Rukia and Renji. <laughs> but you not it by is. much. <laughs> You can put them on the line between D and F, that feel, or D and E, that feels right. All right. Um, Why not? Come here, you. I think Pikachu is slept on as a Lancer character, and this was really just my backdoor pilot for that. I didn't particularly <laughs> think through this argument beyond uh, that point. Pick but it up, it is the fun. CW. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Okay. Uh, well, this next one's going to be uh, fine. <laughs> It's going to be fine. Maybe we just go to the one after it? Well, we can do that. Uh, I, I guess that one's a little bit better. Uh, although yeah. I think uh, we're going to suffer from the fact that our favorite version of this character is probably the least Lancery he ever gets. I, I've, I've been around the, uh, to spoiler it, X-Men comics games for a while. Yeah. I would say uh, I pretty, feel pretty comfortable talking about this character as a Lancer. Yeah. Uh, it's Wolverine. It's Wolverine. It's Wolverine. Wolverine, I think, is he's almost like another platonic ideal of a Lancer, uh, except he's almost directionless. That's just kind of his personality. So he sort of acts like that to anybody around him, um, whether I'd that's say yes and no, because Wolverine, uh, I, I, the version that both of us have consumed is X Men Evolution, which yes. is one of the best versions of X Men ever made. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But, like, in a lot of the comics runs, Wolverine is, while he definitely has that, like, well, I've been around for a really long time, bub, and I'm going to be kind of like a worldly wanderer type, is pretty set on sticking around the team. And that worldliness is kind of used as a point of opposition to some of the other X-Men who you could argue that he is a Lancer for, particularly Cyclops. Mm. Um yeah, they usually make him kind of a Lancer to Cyclops, but they also sometimes turn that into a weird love triangle thing, and part of why evolution is good is that they don't do that shit. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, so Wolverine has the, like, jerk with a heart of gold attitude. He's got the, like, loner thing of, like, yeah, you know, I'm hanging out with you guys, but I'm also kind of too cool for this place, so sometimes I'll just go off on my motorcycle and do whatever, and, like, have solo adventures and shit, mm -hmm. uh, which is very classic Lancer stuff. He also sometimes has the wharf thing of, like, I'm going to go off and fight the bad guy myself, and then just immediately gets his ass beat, so that's that's another point in his favor. It's just kind of the question of, like, who is he consistently the Lancer to? And in Evolution, it's kind of Xavier, uh, because, like... Basically, you know, in Evolution, most of the other X-Men are sort of, like, aged down into being, like, fairly young mm -hmm. teens. But Wolverine and Xavier and Storm and Beast are kept kind of, like, older than that. Yeah, the 
there's you know so they're yeah. basically the faculty so like xavier is like the principal and wolverine is the cool teacher uh and he you know he calls him chuck and it's really fun um and i think they have a decent sort of a foily lancery dynamic but it's also kind of like yeah yeah yeah, I don't know if I would say that evolution is the best case for Wolverine as a lancer, just no. kind of in general. Because I occasionally you do get Wolverine lan like as a lancer to Charles. Um, I think a lot of the like Sony movies have played into this a bit because uh, yeah. they tend to age up the characters. You see a little bit in uh, uh, what's it, Logan. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look back to like any X Men comics team run, I would probably argue that the person that Wolverine is usually the Lancer to is Cyclops because typically it's less of a who is our older mentor guiding figure and everyone else is a teen and more of um, at the, by the point that like Wolverine's introduced it's like okay now we're yeah. this like 20 something fighting squad and there's just so many of this them. guys coming in to like throw off the <laughs> dynamic of you know Cyclops and Gene and everything and typically he's directly opposing Cyclops who's kind of like the straight laced leader where Wolverine is more of the like I've been around the block before and I know that yeah. sometimes you gotta like break a few break a few whatever Legs to make whatever, a kid yeah yeah to make a soup or whatever that phrase is so um <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I just, in that context I couldn't remember the phrase there's some really funny comics <laughs> comments actually just about like <laughs> Wolverine fighting Magneto by himself ah my bones <laughs> Oh, a classic. A classic power set. great example of synergy between, like, <laughs> cool hero and cool villain yeah. that clearly were designed separate from each other. Yeah. Magneto's power set is being Wolverine's bone-hurting juice. <laughs> Another good comment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ah, I think bones. Wolverine's overall a pretty good Lancer to Scott and a weaker Lancer to Xavier. Yeah, um, So yeah. it kind of depends on what version. If we're saying this is the X-Men Evolution Wolverine, I would put him pretty low on the list. But yeah, but I think are, overall... it up to the wider wolverine universe yeah um i would put him at I, least in the c tier i think that's the thing like we can justify putting him in c tier because like he's he's got the personality down it's just he he really is kind of a lone wolf you know like he mm -hmm. in the comics you know even when he's hanging out with the group they often kind of peel him off so he can do his own thing like there's a bit in uh i want to say god loves man kills where like Logan ends up, like, smashing through, like, 15 floors of the building and ends up in the sewers, and they're like, oh, he's probably dead. Let's capture everybody else. And then, obviously, that means that Wolverine gets, like, a solo adventure to go rescue the gang. Uh, and then after that, he just kind of goes back to being, like, the, the short, angry one. Um... <laughs> Sorry, Chad's still going on about the bones thing. Uh... Oh, I don't know. I don't know why. Ah, my yeah. bones is so funny to me. I would be pretty comfortable putting Wolverine in the C tier and just sort of putting a little, you know, he's, yeah. I like him a lot. Oh, you know what? I think it was, I, sorry, chat's right. That happened in Dark Phoenix, not in yeah. God Loves Man Kills, um, ah. which is also really good. God yeah. Loves Man Kills is really good. But the other problem there is that uh, Xavier and Cyclops are both captured from like the very beginning onward. So mm. I don't, I, don't have anyone to I mean, I'm sure Wolverine's to. there because he's always there. Wolverine is like the one constant of the Marvel Universe. Um, yes. Let's put him in the same no tier as Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Hell yeah. That Hell feels yeah. right. Yeah, um, why we're not? We're entering the part of this list where oh, yes. uh, <laughs> I don't know most of these. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is the part where you guys just left me unsupervised. So I just added a bunch that I wanted to talk about. Although one of these, I know you said you watched the show for, I think. Uh the the top one yes yeah yes i have i will i watched the <laughs> mm -hmm. i watched the 20 whatever reboot of it yes that's what that's the only popular. one i count you think i watched the fucking 1980s thundercats i think you might be the exception to the rule my dude what <laughs> but yeah the next guys from thundercats uh i'm gonna red i'm gonna go ahead and just like <laughs> change the color of all the ones i don't know from the rest of this list oh yes please do <laughs> yes that that will make things easier um so uh tigra am i right uh he um he's pretty platonic ideal of how a lancer functions uh i i use that you show you used as... him in the lancer video yeah. didn't you yeah i, I used yeah. him as an example because he's really classic stuff uh not only is he like very much like second best but also kind of like better than the hero in a lot of ways and sort of like mostly just butthurt that he's not the chosen one um he's got one of the only like lancer character arcs i've seen where he starts off like full like uh i should be the chosen one i'm better than you in every way and then like 
evolves to, oh my God, leadership is so hard. <laughs> and after that, he never gives Lion O shit for that again. Like for the entire rest of like the tragically gone before it's time show. He's just like, all right, buddy, do what you got to do. You, you've actually, you actually know how to herd cats. So, you know, do whatever. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so he's got like an interesting arc. Although this does mean that like his, his lancerness is sort of like linked to an arc and implicitly a problem that he sort of solves. And after that, he kind of stops being an issue and just sort of becomes like one of many team big guys, as it were. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's, I mean, like, he's a really classic Lancer. I use him as an example so much because he's really, like, by the numbers, but in a very well-done way. Um, also, solid performance. Pretty good show. You know, maybe if people had given it a chance, wouldn't have died after one season. I don't know. So I'm not, not pointing any fingers or anything. It was but. in that block of, like, Cartoon Network programming where a lot of shows died in one season. Uh, yeah. That was the same time that, like, Symbionic Titan and, like, oh. Generator Rex went on for a little longer, but it was the same. I think Generator Rex got a finale, right? But, like, I don't it, think the others Yeah, did. but it, it it had, like, a period where it wasn't airing and then it came back. It's the whole thing. Anyway. Right. Yeah, and Tiger's, you know, pretty solid. Again, pretty, like, by the books. Yeah. But, like, simple meal, well-made situation. Um. I think we can put him anywhere in A and B on the line. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that feels right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the line. Okay. Uh, right under Knuckles. It's what he deserves. Uh, that's what we all. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. Don't finish that sentence. Nope. Just not. Didn't. Didn't do it. Uh, no. The next. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Red, I believe you'll be doing the hard carry for the end of the stream. Oh until we get boy. The last two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, should we just go through in linear order? Uh, are, are we? Is it Christmas already? <laughs> go for it. Okay. Talk about what you want to talk about. Also, I can't. What did you? Did you actually not watch Gravity Falls? No, I didn't watch. Bro, Gravity Falls. it's good. You I know. It. I heard it was great. I have. I've got to watch thirteen seasons of NCIS. <laughs> it do takes you, a lot of time. Do you? Do you have to? Who's forcing you? <laughs> I want names. I don't know. <laughs> me oh. indigo indigo is forcing me <laughs> okay all right well you know at least i didn't do csi because i just heard that one was bad and i was like okay maybe i can skip it but then i did watch all of psych recently so i guess you know right you win some you lose some anyway who are we talking about reboot it's, it's <laughs> that's the show yes um <laughs> <laughs> the character is matrix technically enzo matrix but when he grows up and gets his edgy bad boy remake uh, he drops the first name. He's like, that child is dead. I'm Matrix now. I'm super cool and badass. Um, Matrix is a very interesting Lancer. I, he's definitely, he's getting two asterisks no matter where we put him. Uh, because I'm speaking for all of us when I say we love them and they slap. Um, here's the reason why I don't think I can actually justify putting him quite top tier. Because the character who he has a Lancer to, he does not spend very much time with. Because the entire point of the season they're in is to find and rescue that character, Bob, uh, who got launched into the web at the end of season two in a staggering tone shift that heralded how season three was the best thing ever. Um, so basically, the reason why I think Matrix's character is incredibly interesting is uh, he's very purposefully different than who he was as a kid because he spends the first two seasons as Enzo as basically just being the tag-along kid, kid sidekick. He's not a Lancer. He's, like, he's clearly, like, the kid appeal character. Like, if you don't watch the show and relate to the cool hero, you'll watch the show and relate to the kid sidekick who goes on fun adventures with his super strong dog. You know, that kind of thing. Um, mm. uh, and then, you know, season three has a rampant tone shift, and Bob gets launched into space, and suddenly, basically, Enzo is the only guardian the system has. So he's like, okay, all right, I've been training for this, you know, Bob's my best friend, so I know what to do, and I'll, I'll you know... I'll stop the virus that's been uh, ravaging the system and everything will be fine. And for about four episodes, he does a pretty good job of it. And then uh, some shit goes bad and he and his uh, bestie slash future girlfriend, Andrea, with an AI in it. It's very clever. Everybody should watch this show. Uh, get stuck in a game. And in order to survive, rather, the, the mechanics of this story involve that games sort of drop from the sky and anyone trapped in the game has to participate in the game and defeat the user who's playing a character in the game and if they lose when the game leaves they get destroyed they get nullified turned into these weird little mindless slug things through convoluted reasons they have the ability to instead basically change their code to sneak away with the game when the game leaves they will 
be carried away with it as though they are part of the game. Everyone at home thinks they're dead, but they survive, and then they basically just hop through systems trying to get home. In the process, growing up, Enzo becomes Matrix, Andrea gets really tall, you know, standard growing up things. Mm-hmm. And the whole time they're still like, we gotta find Bob, he's out there in the web somewhere, we're out in the net, maybe we can look for him while we're out here. And when they do finally find Bob, we learn some very interesting things about this, because the Matrix we see is very like, he's edgy, he's mean, he's very deeply scarred from his experiences. Uh, he's very has very little in common with like this sort of like hero-worshipping kid we got to know for the first two and a half seasons. Um, and then as soon as we meet Bob, it's like he snaps out of it. It's like he realizes what he turned into to survive. And he's just filled with so much, like, almost self-loathing and shame at this, like, weapon he's turned himself into. Uh, whereas, of course, Bob is just like, oh, Enzo's really tall now. That's cool. <laughs> um, still sees him the same way. Uh, still doesn't treat him like a kid. Is like, okay, yeah, you you know, you've done a lot. You've changed and grown. You know, we all have. But, like, you know, we now that we're together, it's it's time to go back and, and fight back and save the system. And, and it's just... Basically, it's like having Bob back after he's been gone for like the first half of the season is like it's a breath of fresh air. You don't realize how much you missed having this sort of like goofy, good hearted, but ultimately very heroic paragon around until you don't have him. And it's just the the edgy foil character that sort of grew up to resemble more closely the villain that they've been opposing than the hero he idolized as a child. Um, And it's only when that hero returns that we really see like. Look, they do work well together, but this is a rolling tragedy, and it's so good. So, uh, his character's really good, uh, and he is a good Lancer to Bob, at least for those, like, that back half of the season that we get. Uh, but they really don't get to spend that much time together. Uh, the, the best we really get is kind of when they're sort of on the, on the ship trying to get home, uh, and they get to spend some time together and sort of, like, unpack that character stuff. So, I'm willing to, like, I don't know, I put him around the same place we put Han Solo of, like, this character has a really good Lancer's characterization in there, but we don't get to see it very much. Um, uh, I would maybe put him like, I mean, I haven't seen the mm-hmm. show, so ultimately your choice, but mm-hmm. it sounds maybe more like on the line between me and see, because mm-hmm. it sounds like there's like barely any Lancer stuff surrounding a character that otherwise is solid, I guess. Again, I've never seen oh, Reboot, dear. so ultimately your pick, but... That's uh, all right. Uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, there like there's a couple solid Lancery moments. He like flies off the handle at one point. Uh, when um then when they get back to mainframe the system, uh, they find that it's been absolutely wrecked in their absence. And uh, there's a moment where they're sort of like mournfully looking at like, oh, the virus is completely taken over, and like they've got this like like this guard tower with a spotlight and they're like doing reconnaissance but matrix fully snaps and like charges it just firing his gun wildly and bob's like matrix now and it's just like that's classic lancer flying off the handle stuff but it is kind of the only big moment i can think of that's specifically about their dynamics so i'm willing to put him on the same place we put spock and joey wheeler (laughs) but i'm adding two asterisks just to satisfy myself um yeah go nuts (laughs) (laughs) come on man you got to give me this. I've never in my life convinced anyone I know to watch this show. <laughs> that weighs on a gal after a while. Um, <laughs> well, I guess uh, we could go to the next one from a show you haven't seen, which I have less to talk about. Um, or we could skip ahead to one of the ones that you have seen. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd rather just keep moving down the list. Okay. Uh, All right. I feel like the last one is going to be a humorous place for us to end. Yes. So keeping the order generally chat's gonna straight, riot if otherwise. we don't add a corresponding entry for certain other participants uh <laughs> it's fine i just saw i saw comments about it before um the next comment is mabel pines comment character the next character is mabel pines from gravity falls twin sister to dipper pines um i didn't watch gravity falls yeah I had the whole series spoiled for me at some point i'm sure it's very good if you watch it in real time but I don't know. I didn't get around to it. Okay. Uh, well, it is a good show. Um, it has a lot of these, like, overarching themes about family uh, and specifically this, like, story of there's a generation where these twins who were really cl- close, like, grew apart and sort of betrayed each other uh, or at least, you know, one of them maybe turned on the other and, and broke their relationship. And then in the current time, we've got this other generation with twins who haven't grown apart but do have highly contrasting personalities that could potentially grow apart if they don't resolve this in a healthy manner. Um, So 
Dipper is basically the POV character we follow most of the time. Um, and Mabel mm-hmm. is, in that way, his Lancer. Uh, but she's not a very standard Lancer. Not, like, not what you expect from one exactly, uh, personality-wise. Because she's, like, you know, a goofy 12-year-old girl. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> she, she has a lot of focus on, like, unicorns and boy bands and, uh, you know... Stuff like that. And Dipper is like, I'm trying to unravel the like Twin Peaks style mystery of what's up with these journals and, and what's going on in Gravity Falls. And, uh, you know, there's there's good stuff there. They have points of contrast and a lot of very interesting stories together. Um, they definitely have a lot of that good Lancer, like, oh, they kind of act like they hate each other, but actually they, you know, they really do care about each other. They just don't always know how to show it. Um, mm. And the sort of like undertone of hey, we had characters like this who were similarly close, uh, and the one who corresponds to Dipper, like, fully, basically left, uh, isolated himself, only came back when he needed something, immediately (laughs) beefed it really hard, and vanished forever. Uh, Not forever, he comes back later. Spoiler alert. Um, And then the one corresponding to Mabel uh, worked tirelessly to bring him back and he proceeded to be completely thankless about it uh, and just was like, all right, anyway, back to my important shit. Um, So essentially you've got these two kids who have like a slightly contentious relationship but ultimately care deeply about each other. Uh, And then you have what could happen if their contentious relationship overpowers the fact that they care about each other as sort of like a cautionary tale. which is cool. I think that's a very interesting way to narratively do it. I think that Mabel is sort of, like, she works as a foil to Dipper, obviously, but there are a lot of episodes where she kind of goes off and does her own thing, uh, or purposefully, like, she finds herself bored with whatever Dipper's doing, so, like, she just kind of, like, leaves him to it and goes off on her own adventure. Um, Mm -hmm. So she's maybe a little bit too independent, because, like, you know, when a traditional Lancer goes off on his own, it's a temper tantrum, you know? It's a, fine, I don't need you guys. I'll go deal with the villain myself. Whereas with Mabel, it's like, oh, you're playing D&D? That's so boring. I'm going to go hang out with the gals and, you know, hunt this unicorn for sport, stuff like that. Um, so I think we could put her in, like, B tier, C tier. Like, she's a good character. We do like her. But I don't, I don't know how well she qualifies as a Lancer. Yeah, she sounds more like a foil than a lancer, which again uh, probably ran again. a lot earlier in the streams. Yeah. I'd maybe suggest C tier, but as will be the caveat with a lot of these last ones, I didn't actually watch the show. Yeah, so. of course. <laughs> um, I defer to your expertise. Yeah, we're, we're putting her in C, but she's getting two asterisks, so everybody knows there's no hard feelings. Um, get in there, you. Right next to Wolverine. Classic archetype. Oh, totally yeah. Totally the same characters so this is the third one that i don't know <laughs> we can't mix up the order if you want i'm telling you it's okay no, no, no. It's, there's only three more of the remaining okay well word of warning i really like really this know. one <laughs> not Go as on. much as a reboot but that's okay uh <clears throat> just add a new source and Oop. there we go it's rc from transformers prime uh this is another case where like you sort of have a non-standard to a degree leader lancer dynamic because uh while the leader is fairly you know archetypical by hero standards it's like okay it you know it's optimus prime there's only so much you can mess up optimus prime it's like oh he's he's like strong and wise and a good leader and like like a father to his men basically um but because there's sort of this element of like military chain of command uh you know similar to reza hawkeye RC, as his, like, right-hand lady, is not so much the rebellious type, but more like, you know, okay, you're going to be really level-headed about this. I'm going to go charging in maybe without a plan and possibly get in trouble. Um, so, you know, she's a, she's a very fun character uh, with a lot of interesting arcs of her own. She also has a standard-issue Lancer tragic backstory. Uh, she had a partner. The partner got super axed. Uh, by, like, one of the other bad guys, and she's pretty butthurt about it, and for a while it took her a while to, like, trust again and stuff like that. Um, so she's great. I really like her. Uh, she's, if anything, a little bit personable by Lancer standards, uh, <laughs> because, you know, she she's maybe a little bit brusque, but she cares very deeply about everybody around her, so, you know, I she's, she's not that, like, brusque. She doesn't really even have a veneer of being a jerk. Uh, so, like, she's good. I mean, I could... 
I could easily put her in like A tier, you know, uh, again, it's like simple meal, well made. The, the, the party breakdown of that team is pretty standard. Just get, you've got if Optimus is the leader, you've got Bulkhead, the biggest of them. He is the big guy. Uh, Ratchet is the smart guy. Uh, Bumblebee is the heart because everybody loves him. And then there's RC who is thus the Lancer. Um, and it's not even a process of elimination thing. Everybody fits into their roles very clearly. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but you know, they introduce a bunch of other characters later. It's fine. Um, so I don't know if she's good. Uh, I, I feel bad, like immediately slapping her up in like the rarefied air up with knuckles and Batman, but you know, she's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know anything about this one, so I will once again be deferring to your expertise. Um, you gotta watch this show, bro. Sound, I oh, I really forgot. RC like actually lost two partners because uh, because uh, one of them was tragic backstory, and then the other one died in episode one because he was voiced by Dwayne the Rock Johnson and it was much too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they got Starscream to just straight up murder him, and then like every time he and RC are like in the same scene together, he'd be like, "Oh, just like I murdered that partner of yours." Tee hee hee, and then she tries to kill him, and he's like, "Oh God, what's happening? Consequences for my actions." The show's good. You should watch it. <laughs> I, Transformers was like that one media property that I never got into and I don't know something about cars just never really uh, yeah, I felt the same way and then I watched Transformers Prime and now I like it god damn it where did, why did she move hold on get back there um, alright so the next one is again two uh, yes. these ones I do know <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's bundle them together even though they might it's... end up in different tears almost certainly uh yeah, yeah i'd say that's accurate <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about dragon ball z yeah Chat. It's... don't worry it's exactly who you think it is yeah of course oh for god's <laughs> sake please hold uh okay everything's fine <laughs> i don't know what has gotten into Streamlabs today but oh she feisty this morning evening Oof. whatever the fuck uh it's vegeta and piccolo so yeah you know piccolo the og vegeta um <laughs> Mm-hmm. followed by vegeta the new model the vegeta vegeta <laughs> yes um now as we know these both follow very standard arcs introduced as mm-hmm. primary antagonists beaten by the hero not killed instead like hey let's have like a rivalry going forward um the very funny thing about piccolo is if you read the manga you can tell like the initial plan was oh we're gonna have like a like an arc where like younger Piccolo comes back because uh, Goku foolishly spared him and he, he makes his life a living hell. And then immediately they go into the Saiyan arc and Piccolo kind of gets fast tracked into heroism <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> look, I know we were fighting to the death like last week, but you know, th- like the weakest of these aliens is 10 times stronger than me. So I need you to help team up with me so we can beat him. Piccolo's like, huh, I hate you. But, you know, I guess we can hang out and then I'll adopt your son or whatever. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, so Piccolo's arc is pretty good. Uh, and he, I mean, the bulk of his, like, redemption arc really happens around Gohan, where basically he's like, oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm like a demon king and I hate everybody, but this kid's all right, I guess. And then that escalates to, okay, I guess I'll take a bullet for the kid and die and yeah. doom the entire Earth in the process because all the Dragon Balls will stop working when I, I explode. Like how much of Piccolo's arc revolves around Gohan makes him a weaker Lancer in my head. But mm. Yeah. Because it's just sort of getting away. Because he's both these characters ostensibly are Lancers to Goku, um, but Piccolo is most interesting and I feel like gets the most development in his interactions with Gohan, who is Goku's kid but yeah. still not Goku a separate character yeah um, and Piccolo is not a Lancer to Gohan he's more of a mentor no uh, he's a mentor yeah and basically after this like Piccolo and Goku are just like friends like they just hang out yeah. and, like drive cars together and it's very cute so we love him he's getting two asterisks but I don't think he's very high tier Lancer no um, I would put him down in like D oh Jesus D. Christ oh I swear to God, everything's <laughs> fine nobody freak out all right, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm just gonna add a little new Piccolo box, and then we'll put him down there, and then we can figure out what to do with, with the problem child, Vegeta. <laughs> with, with Vegeta. Uh, Who is the more land three of the two Lancers we're discussing? Oh, DBZ, indisputably, I would say, pretty uh, non-controversial statement on that. Where are we put, we're, we're putting Piccolo in D again. I forget. D. D. Yeah, that makes sense. Down with Bucky Barnes, but right above yeah. Pikachu. <laughs> Of course. Of course. It's what he deserves. All right. As is right. Vegeta. Vegeta. Well. Oops. If you ask someone to think of a Lancer, (laughs) 
uh-huh. I'm probably going to say Vegeta. Yes, so... guilty as charged. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy? That guy with a lot of issues. <laughs> that guy who willingly accepts an evil power-up just to fight the hero a little bit more. You know that guy. <laughs> yeah. We've all been that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who among us wouldn't temporarily, like, sell their soul to an evil mind-controlling witch just to be able to punch our friend a little bit more yeah. effectively because we're having basically a midlife crisis? I think Vegeta hits, like, a less complicated version of the Sasuke effect for me where it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a Lancer. Like, that is, that's a Lancer. And he's kind of a dick kinda. a lot of the time. But he's not a bad Lancer because... <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I think the one thing I... I sort of run into with Vegeta, and this isn't a knock to his Lancer status, it's more just, like, his arc overall, is that Mm -hmm. I don't think Akira Toriyama really knows how to write any, like, loving relationship that is not mentor-student, so he just kind of speed runs all the romantic subplots of, like, oh, Vegeta and Bulma are gonna bone and then maybe get married, I guess. Yeah, like, Goku and Chi-Chi are married, Goku doesn't know what marriage is, but she's nice and, you know, it's fine, I guess. It's like, okay, cool. But then, like, the dynamics between, like, like Piccolo will be like, I'd gladly lay down my life for this child, what's gotten into me? And, like, Master Roshi, even when he's wildly underpowered for whatever they're dealing with, is like, well, if my students need help, here I go. So... You know, they've got some of the best dynamics in the series, you know, the mentor-student stuff. But whenever he has to write a romance, it's like, fuck if I know. But the problem is, like, Vegeta and Bulma getting together is, like, retroactively supposedly an important part of his, like, domestication arc. And it just isn't Mm -hmm. there. It's like, they go from, like, oh, we hate each other, maybe. Or, like, whatever, he's just crashing in my house. To, like, all right, we have two kids. (laughs) Good job, team. Uh, (laughs) Vegeta's going to... Bitch slap a god of destruction for her, I, I guess. How did we get here? Whatever. Sure. Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, but he is a very classic Lancer archetype, and even if they've sort yeah. of shift, like shuffled him around a little bit, changed his stuff a little, retroactively said that Vegeta isn't one to underestimate an opponent in battle, <laughs> which was the funniest thing I've seen from the super manga. Um, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm inclined to, because we put Sasuke so high, I'm inclined to put Vegeta at least. Sasuke levels. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I think, you know, I think Vegeta is basically what Bakugo is, like, trying to be, so we can put him higher than that. I think mm-hmm. we could put him in the A tier, fine. I, I hesitate to put yeah. him in the S tier just because, you know... No. Oh, excuse me. Everyone in the S tier <laughs> is just also a good character, uh, and Vegeta's very iconic, but there's a reason why most of the versions of him are, like, him plus something else that makes him work a little better. <laughs> be a little more consistent um yeah i'm i'm cool with that yeah i'd say either the line before between a and b or just straight up in a right next to kevin lemon perfect nice who's next Uh, the next two oh all right (laughs) all right uh you know what i i think we can actually skip the first one of those and just get to the um the second one the first one's fun but like it's he's very standard wait um one more one more (laughs) and this one gets me an opportunity to talk about a show i like that I think, like, nobody this generation has really ever considered watching, but that's okay. <laughs> Everything's that was fine. Most I'm last, a butter. Uh... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's goddess from Slayers. Remember Slayers from the 90s? Oy, oy. <laughs> that anime that every my dad watched? Every time Fearless Slayers comes up, and every single time I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll watch it someday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you watch it not dubbed, it's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's actually a hilarious downgrade to watch it dubbed after you watch it subbed. <laughs> Especially because, like, the entire cast of Yu-Gi-Oh! is in there. And Dan oh, Green, beautiful. doing his level best, actually killing it as one of the main villains of, like, season two or something like that. Um, and then, uh, damn it, who plays Kaiba? You know the one. Oh, oh. That um... guy. Uh, probably trying his level best as Gowry Gabriev, but, you know... It was like the Eric 90s. Stewart. Yes, Eric Stewart. Uh, I mean, nobody knew what they were doing. It was the Wild West. Crispin Freeman's in that show, and he doesn't even sound all that good. Like, no hate on any of these people. It was the 90s. Nobody knew any better. But it's just, like, it actually has emotional impact in the Japanese version. Uh, and it's funny, because, like, I think they did, like, 
three seasons of it, like in the '90s, and it was it, it was like that thing they did in Sailor Moon, where like every season was named something different. So it's like Sailor Moon, and then Sailor Moon R or whatever. So yeah, they had like Sailor Slayers. Moon R, Sailor Moon S. Sailor yeah. Moon Super. Yeah. Sailor Moon Super. And then they had like slayers and then slayers next and slayers something else and then like in like i want to say like the early mid 2000s they just released two new seasons of slayers <laughs> like and it's like what the who the fuck is waiting for this uh i mean i, I thought they were pretty fun anyway so I got us from slayers uh so basically the party comp in slayers is a little bit non-standard because the main character lena inverse is basically the most powerful sorceress in the world. So the power scale is already a little bit fucked. Um, so in any combat they're in, she has at any time the opportunity to cast the Dragon Slave, which is basically the magical equivalent of a nuke, uh, which can blow up entire villages and basically renders all standard low-level D&D encounters completely moot. And she's the main character, so that's her vibe. Uh... <laughs> And then everyone else in the party is not as powerful as her. <laughs> um, so she's kind of the team powerhouse and also the, the leader. Um, and then she has a bodyguard, a guy with a pretty cool magic sword, <laughs> um, who is very good with the sword. That's Gowry. He's dumb as a rock and very pretty. Everybody likes him. He's great. Uh, I think he gets kidnapped in one of the seasons. Who cares? Um, and then uh, there's, oh, for fuck's sake, who am I forgetting? Uh, Damn it, I don't remember her name. Uh, she's like she's like a cleric, like a white mage, but her main thing is she punches stuff a lot. And then there's Zilgadis. He's got the only actually like nuanced tragic backstory of the bunch, and it's a fucking doozy. Uh, and he's like he's like both a sword fighter and a sorcerer, which means he's not really as good at either as either the swordsman or the sorceress in his party. <laughs> And also, he's physically tougher than everybody else because he's kind of made of rock, so he gets warped a lot. <laughs> um, he, like, tends to, like, charge into combat, and then to show that the bad guy is really serious, they'll manage to make him bleed, and it's like, oh, shit, we're out of the comedy zone. Now we're in the danger zone. Um, Amelia, thank you. The, the other girl's name is Amelia. And also, um, there's this, like, fifth ranger, Zelos, uh, who's fully, like, a demon, like a like a force of evil, but he just really likes them and, like, likes hanging out with them. So he'll just show up and cause problems sometimes and then help out when they need it and then fuck off. So it's a very weird show, but it's good. Um, and Zelgatis is, like, it's baffling because he's kind of the, the character played most seriously when everyone else is sort of having, like, a we're fucking around, it's a D&D &D campaign sort of tone. Uh, and he's the guy who brought like 30 pages of background to the table and was like, my character began his journey looking up to th this great mage, uh, always wanted to be strong and a swordsman, but he was weak and frail as a child. So the mage, against his wishes, physically transformed him into this powerful chimera man, but he hates it because he's gross looking now. And it's like, okay, all right, cool, cool, standard stuff. Everyone else here is just kind of having a good time, but you know, good, good backstory, keep it going. Um... Very classic Lancer thing to be, like, tonally wildly out of whack with the rest of the cast of, like, everyone else is just having a good time and you're the one guy with, like, the actual tragic backstory and the reason to, like, personally hate the villain because everyone else is, like... Yeah, it's just that meme of, like, everyone, part they, like, stick figures partying and the one guy in the corner, like, they don't even know I have a tragic backstory. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like that, like, oh, we will stop you with the powers of friendship, love, incredible violence, <laughs> and justice um so he's fun uh <laughs> like he's sometimes the butt of the joke but they do play it pretty seriously a lot of the time uh which i like i personally think like i like it when shows know when to be silly and when to be serious and if i had to mm. criticize i think maybe this show gets a little bit too goofy with things that they could have played more serious but like you know that's the it's doing it on purpose like if i'm not into right. that that's because i'm not into it um but I think he's a he's a pretty good, just archetypical Lancer. He works as a good Lancer to Lena. He's also, he's introduced as an antagonist, classic stuff, uh, working for the bad guy, and then basically just immediately, like, turns to start helping her. Because he's like, I actually fucking hate this guy. He turned me into a monster, and I'm really mad about it. Let's defeat him together. Uh, and uh, they also, like, they kind of do this thing. I don't need to go into the super details of this, but uh, he often kind of fucks off at the end of seasons to, like, go and do his own thing sometimes with Amelia, and then he'll just show up again at the beginning of the next season because, like, him and Amelia are by far the most popular secondary characters in, like, the series of novels that the show is based on. So even in stories where he's not supposed to be involved, it'll be like, oh, it's our good buddy Zogadis. He's back again. Yeah. So, like, we get plenty of time for him to be a solid Lancer. Um, 
even some later arcs where like he actually kind of goes rogue because like he's got a personal motivation. He st he wants to stop being a weird monster man, so he like fucks off to like, oh we have this way thing that like might make you stop being a weird monster man. He's like all right peace out everybody and just like fucks off and and goes to try and do that and they're like no so got us with power of friendship we want to help you and he's like no leave me alone <laughs> i'm busy so i think he's pretty classic archetypical stuff um it has been a little while since i watched it so i think that like you know a b somewhere on the line i'd be fine with uh i always feel bad trying to put anyone in the s rank when the other people on the call <laughs> don't know what the fuck i'm talking about um yeah, I feel like we've been avoiding putting too many of the, like, well, they're just an Arctic Bull Lancer characters in the S tier, so I probably wouldn't vibe with that. But, like, I don't know. Yeah. B sounds right. There's a spot on the line between B and A in that corner that might be an appropriate place to just try and squeeze <laughs> Yeah. Right under Vegeta. <laughs> right between mm. Tigra and Inigo Montoya. Um, but, yeah, he's great. Uh Sorry, chat's just making fun of him. He's S tier in the boat anchor tier list. I forgot they did that to him. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, uh, I take certain characters more seriously than the story they're in, and then I feel bad when they get treated like punchlines, and I'm like, that's the point, but, you know, still. <laughs> so this is, we've reached the end of our list. We have one last, uh, maybe we could flip this up into two, but <laughs> I saw... <laughs> Early in the stream, I saw someone asking for Danny from Rolling with Difficulty, who mm -hmm. is a lancer without a leader to lance, mm -hmm. and therefore a poor lancer in many ways. <laughs> uh, I'll just add. I don't you know in. if we want to make. No, we, we can do it. Uh, I'm curious what chat's input is. Uh, yeah. So Rolling with Difficulty is the D and D podcast both of us are on. Danny is the character I play. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think that she's a complex and interesting character who has so far mostly been around to deliver one-liners and fix the ship. Uh, but also... And break when we the ship. Went and break the ship on occasion when yeah. it's thematically appropriate. Uh, and when we did the Q&A for the mid-season, it came up someone asked, it's like, oh, if you guys were in a five-man band, who would your crew be? And what we landed on was Kiana's the heart yeah. uh, pretty easily. Finbar's the big guy. He's our big druid chef man. Uh, Virla, the robot wizard, is the smart, smart guy. guy. And yeah. Danny, the... <laughs> punk mechanic with a penchant for blowing things up is the lancer uh and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the thing you may notice is notably missing from that dynamic is a leader, is a leader. <laughs> well here's the thing it looked like a peek behind the curtain when austin first started this campaign he was like yeah you know here's like a like a printout of like you know the general vibes and when you're building a character i want you to think of what role you want to play on the ship mm -hmm. and none of us wanted to be the captain and i at least in my case it was because i was like well you know i've never played D, &D with this group before it would be really like i've never done an actual play like, podcast before to like jump into the the chat and discord and be like i'm the captain now. yeah none of us wanted to be like what's up people who i know to varying degrees of closeness i'm gonna be in charge from now on like none of us wanted to do that <laughs> so none of us did it so we're all just kind of like hanging out fucking around uh and which is good very cleanly made characters that fell into the other four parts of the five-man band naturally it <laughs> so is possible that like as out. we played we sort of adjusted it but like some of it was the stats it's like my yeah. character could have been a big guy but everyone likes her too much <laughs> yeah well you know yeah that, i think your character's placement is influenced by maybe the most by the way that the play ended up going out because mm. the course of season one a big thing that brought the group together was rallying around kiana um, yeah, I I don't think the play changed Danny's Lancer status too much, or changed Virla's smart guy status necessarily. But Finbar and Kiana definitely had some waffling. But um, yeah, we so we don't have a captain, we don't have a leader. Yeah, uh, so Danny is uh, leaderless. She's just a, leaderless, just Lancer. a Lancer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, just out there Lancering it wildly in the world. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, I feel like Danny has some of the Lancer attitude, but a lacking a character too technically be a lancer too mm -hmm. it's a little mm -hmm. bit dubious uh also yeah. despite you know being rather rebellious uh danny has never run off on her own to do any sort of ill-advised mission in any real concept like mostly it's because you know where you go you take the ship and we all hang out with the ship and come too. Yes. Um, you all really have gone on ill-advised missions with me by default. Is what's happened? Well, yes, but you know, part of the part of the the je ne sais quoi of the Lancer is that they tend to go off on their own and leave the crew behind. And uh, mm -hmm. Danny just kind of doesn't really have that many connections outside of the crew. 
as far as we know. Um, so yeah, pretty much just the the workers of the heap, and other than that, yeah, everything for her is in the brass. We haven't spent that much time there uh, in the last two seasons. So I don't I don't think Danny is a particularly high tier lancer um, because. I don't think she's done too much Lancer stuff yet, Not so other much. than personality and aesthetic. Uh, yeah, she keeps setting me on fire a little bit, but I have evasion now, so it's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't exactly feel comfortable dropping you low on the chart, but uh, it's your character. F -tier. <laughs> we can. I don't know if she's technically a Lancer. <laughs> technically, maybe not a Lancer. Technically, maybe not a Lancer, um, but she'll get the double asterisks anyway. No yeah, matter where she goes. And really, that's the only metric. It's very funny trends. to put myself in the F tier. Feels <laughs> I agree. I, I think that's some real bad boy behavior on your part, perhaps. Ooh. Yeah, real bad boy behavior. Bam. You know, if you're putting, then you go on this tier list. S tier all the way, baby. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Oh, <laughs> so it is I written. <laughs> Classic bad boy behavior. There she Strike is. Strike it out on my own. Um. <laughs> well, I'm the one who held you hostage for 10 minutes while I explained why Reboot's a really good show, which I think was pretty bad boy of me but you know whatever um all right let's see chat has a lot of thoughts on characters we can include i'm seeing a lot of shadow and here's yeah. the thing shadow is very archetypically similar to a lancer but his key game shadow you know the shadow game the one that just got the real-time fandom by snaps cube um has a lot of tracks and he can play the game a lot of different ways and depending on that he winds up as a lot of different things anywhere from straight up villain to a slightly edgy protagonist who's just fully a good boy so is he a lancer or is he a villain protagonist i think he's more a villain protagonist personally yeah. um i think the existence of knuckles <laughs> kind of precludes the need for another knuckles alike in the sonic universe you think that but they do um, keep turning up it's just like every time a they villain they really like to make an angsty hedgehogs that's sort of their whole thing yeah in, uh, <laughs> that's sort of the whole conceit that's of kind of the whole vibe <laughs> well the thing is like every time uh like a villain turns up who's not like a giant hulking monster or eggman then the odds of them getting redeemed are pretty good but they all develop, like, unique personalities or, like, had person. So, like, Silver the Hedgehog is not a Knuckles alike, you know? He's basically just no. Trunks, but with anxiety. Um, yeah. And, like, Shadow's thing seems to mostly be like, oh, I just don't know who I am because the ending of the game made it completely ambiguous. Maybe I'm a robot <laughs> or, like, a clone or the original Shadow, the ultimate life form, whatever. Um, so, you know, he's he's very edgy. I will give him that. He's fantastically edgy, and he's got great theme music. But is he a Lancer? And if we put him on the tier list, could we put him anywhere other than F for technically not a Lancer? I don't think he's really a Lancer. Um, I hmm. think he's got too much of that villain antagonist stuff going on to properly slot into the Lancer archetype. Yeah. I also believe the official rule for writing him in the Sonic IDW comic is that Shadow is not allowed to have friends, which means, first of all, which ouch, but second of all... He's, not a lancer. Yeah. <laughs> kind of means he doesn't really hang out with anybody. I guess, like, he and Rouge are kind of... Well, no, they're just friends is the thing. He refuses to admit it. That, like, see, in Sonic X, that's what Knuckles and Rouge are buddies, though. That's, like, they're... They got, that's an like, odd little... friendship, given that Rouge is constantly Isn't trying to it? steal the Master Emerald. But, hey, I like it. <laughs> it. I like an odd friendship. It's kind of a femme fatale situation. All right. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I'm seeing a lot of Zoros from One Piece. I'm, I think I'm the only one of the two of us who has consumed any of that. You, show. You're the only one. I saw like I saw None Piece. Does that count? Uh, I'm gonna put Shadow in F tier uh, and add a little yeah. a couple asterisks uh, just for funsies. One Piece is an interesting case actually because uh, the thing with the crew of the, the Thousand Sunny or um, Merry Go, whichever version of the ship. The ship has a name. The show. So there's two ships. They both have names. Uh, it's a whole. There's a whole. I just so I've been rewatching the show. Because um, I read it, I was current up to Fishman Island when the series was airing back in the 2010s, and oh, then yeah. I kind of let my anime phase dip a little bit, and then it resurged in the pandemic, as I think was a common trend amongst 20-somethings. Uh, oh, a lot of us uh, escaping into around, happy memories from our teens and childhoods. Yeah. Wonder why. So I started this time around, I'm like, oh, I'll watch it, because I never watched the anime, and it's pretty good, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, I just got to Water 7, which is where the, in uh, Eni's lobby, which I could be watching right now. <laughs> and instead I'm here talking about uh, Zoro Lancer. That's where the <laughs> ship changes over. It's a whole thing. Yeah. 
I think the thing with One Piece is like that it's a big crew of pirates that are all rallying around Luffy, right? Right. And so the instinct is to say Luffy's the leader, and then all the other ones slot into other five man band archetypes. And when you're in the East Blue, which is kind of like the first big arc uh, or big saga in the series, um, it kind of makes sense. There's four other characters on the ship at any given moment. You've got. Uh, you know, you've got Luffy, who you could argue is the leader, and then you could say, like, okay, Usopp's the smart guy, maybe, or maybe Nami's the smart guy, mm. or maybe Nami's the heart, because she's the girl. Right. But I would Don't they have another Luffy's girl? The heart. They do add her later on. They have, like, uh, seven or ten, ten members or something right now. What? But, uh, <laughs> they add them periodically. It's a whole oh, thing. Of course. Power but, of friendship. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first guy they recruit is Zoro. So usually if people are talking about One Piece, they're like, okay, Zoro's the Lancer. Zoro's the guy who uses three swords, which made him immediately my favorite character. Because oh, yeah. anyone whose thought process goes, what if I could put sword in my mouth and then I would use three swords is a genius in my book. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a classic <laughs> maneuver, you know? The only yeah, problem yeah. with dual wielding is that you can't be triple wielding. <laughs> exactly. Uh, great character. People are usually like, okay, that's the Lancer to Luffy. He's got the personality for it kind of but i would argue that like luffy is not the leader of the straw hats like ostensibly captain what? yes but if Wait. you put him into five if you're putting them into five man band archetypes he's the heart he's oh, not the leader oh well yeah yeah that's fair i guess and in that case well then who's the leader who is the lancer um i it kind of seems like sanji and zoro are the two who are always bickering on the ship they're kind of the two big guy candidates uh they're also typically the two Lancer candidates, so you could argue, make arguments for either of them. Zoro could probably be a good Lancer to Nami, who usually slots into the leader spot if Luffy's the heart in that case. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I personally, <laughs> personally, I think if you're gonna say, if you the easy answer is Zoro, because that's the generally accepted one, that's the one on TV tropes. Uh, um, yeah. I guess, but like... I think, frankly, he's more of a big guy, yeah, and not really a great Lancer, even though I love his dynamic. I think it's great. They have such a deep trusting relationship. <laughs> Sometimes but it's more of like a Riza Hawkeye second in command thing. Mm. Uh, and it's quite pulling off, I think, the Lancer angle of that particular type of Lancer leader relationship. Sometimes I see people discussing like, oh, this is the layout of the five man band of this, this, this group. Except maybe, you know, like uh, maybe this character could actually be any of these roles. And I'm like, OK, so this is not a five man band. <laughs> You're trying yeah. to apply a trope I that think, doesn't fit. I think you can make an argument for the five man man fitting in the East Blue Saga of One Piece, but as soon as they start adding any other crew members to it, it immediately falls apart. Because then you get right. like the little reindeer, Doctor Chopper. And, oh like, yeah, well, okay. is he the heart or is he the smart guy? And then you get Nico Robin, who is the other girl, uh, and well, then she's the smart guy, right? So then what is the? It, and it just starts to fall apart pretty quickly. Yes. So I, I would say that maybe there's not like a good Lancer candidate in One Piece, and that's then okay. you can make arguments for like the other pirate captains that pop up <laughs> later on. But even then, like it's it just starts. To, it's a show with like an infinite Lancer potential, but not a single really good Lancer <laughs> candidate. Uh, well, while we're not discussing this other thing, uh, I saw a good ti- <laughs> uh, a good example in chat. Uh, it's Tigress from Kung Fu Panda, a nice. very classic Lancer archetype in the. Uh, thought she was going to be the leader slash the hero archetype. Um, But unlike a lot of Lancers, she gets over this remarkably quickly. Um, Basically, as soon as, like, Master Shifu stops being a dick about it and it becomes very clear that, like, Poe is actually, like, really trying, you know, he's, he's not... He's not making a mockery of this on purpose. He's, like, actually just trying to do what he can do. Uh, She kind of starts respecting him pretty quick, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um... By the time two rolls around, she and Poe are basically just best friends, and it's really cool and just very sweet. Uh, And (laughs) it's one of those, like, they definitely start out as Lancers, and she sort of evolves into, like, the Risa Hawkeye type Lancer of, like, loyal right-hand lady, but at the same time, like, very much not afraid to be like, all right, you can't do this. Like, you you can't participate in this fight. You've got tragic backstory written all over you. We're going to go deal with it. You stay here and be safe. Mm. Um. Which is uh, which is good because, you know, it's important for a lancer to be able to challenge the hero, and I like that she never really loses that like willingness to. All right, no, we can't do this, man. I, I, I'm putting my foot down, uh, and also it kind of goes both ways. He, you know, one thing that I like about these movies is that everyone has very different strengths, 
and uh, Poe being the dragon warrior does not negate or overlap with the strengths of the other participants. Uh, so there's, just, there's like, I don't remember which bit is it. Uh, I think, is it the, the second or third movie where like Poe gets kicked into Tigress and she just like catches him, flips him and flips him around again. And like, he's already like pointing back at her. Like, you see that? You see what she just did? That's so cool. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, he's so ready to hype her up. It's great. Um, so I think that, again, this is a fairly like non-confrontational Lancer dynamic. But it is definitely mm-hmm. a solid Lancer dynamic. They have good foil relationships, but also Tigress clearly really does care about Poe, and Poe cares about Tigress. Uh, they've got uh, classic moments of like, all right, I'm going to go handle this by myself. I-, I guess the only inversion from the norm is that basically whenever Tigress goes off to do something by herself, the entire rest of the Furious Five go with her, and they just leave Poe by himself, um, Yeah, which is pretty funny. But uh, honestly, the rest of the Furious Five are kind of like mostly just accessories to tigress doing her thing which is fine that's okay they don't need to have personalities um i know there's a show affiliated with this i haven't seen it um but i think tigress is pretty high tier uh doing a lot right comfortable putting her pretty high up yeah i think she's i'd say like a tier maybe on the line between a and s um yeah yeah I would hesitate to put her too much. I don't think I do the line between A and S, but I could confidently put her in the A tier. I feel okay. like okay. She goes on top of Sailor Moon. The S tier seems to be pretty much reserved for like archetypal lancers. Uh, yeah, Tigress. She's an archetype, but that's because uh, everyone who isn't Poe in Kung Fu Panda is basically in a completely different movie than everybody else. Yeah. Um, um, okay. I gotta make dinner soon. So maybe we do one more of these, oh, and then <laughs> sounds like a plan. Uh, I also think I need to eat food. Uh, let's yes. see. I made mm. shrimp scampi last night, and I'm eager to heat up those leftovers. Ooh, very nice. I know, very fancy. It was on sale at the Kifu. Ooh, love it. The shrimp was. I had to make the scampi part, which is just like... It would be pretty like interesting if you made the shrimp part. I understand they need yeah, to right? be sourced. <laughs> um, I've been working on this for years. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chat's noticed that we already put Piccolo on the list. <laughs> Guys. Piccolo uh, is there. All right. I don't want to do this as the last one because... It's not a show you've watched, but a lot of people have been asking about uh, Leverage, and I can explain why. Yeah, pop off. Well, I can explain why we don't have any characters from Leverage on here, which is the problem is the team dynamic is really, really good, and everyone is kind of Lancers to everybody else. Like if you look it's on the TV the tropes page, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's very similar to One Piece. Like if you look on the TV tropes page, there's basically an explanation for why every single character except for Nate, the leader, is a Lancer, and it's like, oh well, you know. Elliot is like his his loyal like right hand guy, but he's willing to step in when Nate goes too far. But Sophie's the one with the closest dynamic with him, and they actually play off each other. And meanwhile, like uh, Hardison's the one who's like planning on like uh, starting his own crew and is basically like being mentored by Nate. But he's like he's like young and and inexperienced in contrast to Nate's like you know older. And then like Parker is the one who goes off and and does things by herself and kind of flies off the handle. And it's like all right, so they're all well rounded characters that can't easily be classified. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We can't just keep yeah, mashing them into the, the lancer. Of an extended cast, you know, like so the Sailor Moon cast. It's pretty easy to describe how good of a lancer Sailor Mars is because there's five characters and they all pretty much easily slot into the five man band. But as soon as you get a show like Leverage or One Piece, it's like, well, yeah, there's some arguments to be had here, mm-hmm. and maybe that makes it difficult to determine exactly which character you should be talking about for a tier list. So that's yeah, fair. yeah, I mean, you know the. The characters in Leverage are all good, and they all have a lot of good chemistry with each other, and there are basically mm-hmm. no pairings of characters in Leverage that are not interesting to watch play off of each other, which is a sign of how well-written it is. So everybody should watch it. Um, let's see, is there... <laughs> you want to hit up your... Uh... Hmm? We got <laughs> false to Elinua. Oh, Elinua? we we can't. Uh, Helen was not the Lancer. She's obviously the heart. I mean, we... <laughs> false is the one I put all the Lancer traits into... But I don't know. It feels weird. <laughs> well, because Aaron is the smart guy. Aaron's right? absolutely feels... the smart guy. Right. Uh, you could make an argument that Alinwa technically fills the role of big guy slash powerhouse. Because <laughs> she's probably got the most raw power on tab. Um, I mean, you know, I, I didn't design it to fit a five-man band. I've got, like, three big guys in the extended group. <laughs> um really the struggle i mean false is definitely the lancer i <laughs> think that's, that's he's also kind yeah. of the big guy but like i mean you know he's kind of a lancer to everybody he's one of those like perma lancers with the tragic backstory who kind of just plays <laughs> off of everybody else that's very funny that you call it perma lancer because that is the phrase that uh, the contract work i was doing was always under is like oh yeah 
permanent freelancer. You're a permanent oh, <laughs> freelancer. Oh, what? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's just, you know, I've been a bad boy for a long time, Red. <laughs> a very bad boy. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't know how to... I don't know how I'd rank him. I don't know how effective my writing of him is. Also, like, I... Well, I think he's pretty clearly the Lancer of the group. I'm glad. It's not a controversial statement. I don't want to spoil anything, but, like, the stuff I've kind of been storyboarding now is really playing into, like, aspects of his character that, like, have been there, but I haven't really gotten to show off yet. And it's, mm. it's real Lancer. It's real Lancer good stuff. So that's where my brain is at. So I don't know if I can talk about this confidently without just, like, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> blowing some reveals I have down the line. Um, I don't know. I, this might be one of the rare cases where I'm like, all right, chat, just tell me what letter you think. <laughs> just give it to me straight, Doc. <laughs> um, oy vey. Uh, oh, God, there's so many characters. Um Guys, I already talked about One Piece without Nightwing's a we can't do this decent so. example, actually. <laughs> I mean, Nightwing is a little bit like, like I feel like Halo opening up the, the Bat Fam extended universe kind of can of worms could potentially uh, affect the Batman ranking up in A tier. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a pretty solid like Lancer two Bruce. Uh, but also, like, when he's running the Titans, he's the leader, and, uh... Yeah. Also, his dynamic with Bruce. Right, okay's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> he's right there with the asterisk. Yeah. Um. Oh, boy. Um. <laughs> Lance from Symbionic Titan. Did you watch Symbionic Titan? I did watch Symbionic Titan. Oh, if you oh. asked me for any salient details other than there is a robot and then the two uh, alien people and then they form a bigger robot, I yes. couldn't tell you anything. All right, that's I know fair. Lance looks exactly like Kevin Keith. Levin. And also Keith from style. Voltron, yes. And also <laughs> Keith from Voltron. Yeah. Uh, and the girl kind of looks like Pearl from uh, Steven Universe, and that's all I got. She actually looks almost exactly like a color-swapped Ashi from Samurai Jack Season 5. Oh, wow. Um, unfortunately. But, uh... Our chat keeps bringing up Annabeth. Is she? She's such the smart guy. Um, Annabeth from what? From Percy Jackson. Oh. Uh. I mean, like, she could also be the Lancer is the thing. Like, she's definitely Percy's I primary foil. Could, I think you could argue that she's the Lancer. It's been a while since I read those books. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, the problem is, like, I reread the first book semi-recently, and that's when Annabeth is at her Lanceriest. But also that book is... It's very fun, but in hindsight, I was like, mm, this isn't written as well as I remember. Uh, and Annabeth's frustration with Percy is entirely like, oh, our parents hate each other, so we have to be mm. rivals. And he's like, that's weird. And that's basically as far as that ever goes. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, if we had to give her a letter grade, I guess it'd be like, um, she's just too much other stuff, you know? And she doesn't tend to fly off the handle by herself. Well, she does, actually. I guess that's the entire point of... Uh... It's kind of the Piccolo problem where, like, yeah, maybe she started as a bit more of a Lancer character, but as soon as we got to know her even a little bit, it's like, well, now she's got a lot of other stuff going on, and the Lancer thing is very tertiary. Yes. Uh, Indigo, I will say that I've seen a couple people suggesting one of the two possible Lancer characters from Stormhawks. <laughs> what do you think about that, perhaps? They're suggesting it's somewhere between Piper sure. and Finn. Uh, Piper, of course, being the token girl lady woman, and then Finn mm -hmm. being Finn the, uh, the funny one. Finn's the funny yeah. one who's like an expert sniper, and nobody ever fucking talks about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> they love making funny guys also the snipers in those shows. <laughs> that's what they, not to break, go back to Voltron, but that's what they do <laughs> the Lance, too. They're like, you're a sniper now. It's like, why? Though? Yeah, how's he supposed <laughs> to crack jokes when he's 500 yards away from everybody else? Um, let me just eh, add a little, uh, I feel like. Like, Finn's the funny guy, not so much Lancer, but Piper, she seems more like the second-in-command, right? Yeah, I think if I had to pick one of the two of them to be like, this is the second-in-command, this is the Lancer to the leader, uh, Arrow. Uh, oh, right, I forgot that's his fucking name. Hunter... <laughs> the name is Arrow. Lest we forget um, the bad guy, Dark Ace. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'd say Piper's probably more... Like, sh like, people would want to say, oh, that's the heart, because, of course... She's the girl. Token girl. Yeah. But... In personality, I think she is more in opposition to Arrow than anything else. Yes. Uh, even as Finn is the goofy one who otherwise would fill that particular role. But I think making him goofy just gives us more leeway to make him the heart. Yeah. So, also, know, he mostly hangs out with um, 
the the big guy. You remember the big guy? Oh yes. Yeah, that guy. Like they they're mostly just those two guys, those two funny guys. Mm-hmm. So they they're kind of they can they like contain each other. But with Piper, it's like they have like an actual arc sort of. Uh, and uh, I don't know. She has like some kind of dangerous power up thingy with crystals or whatever. I I don't remember if I ever literally linearly watched through yeah. to the end of this. I would show. say that she's maybe like a weaker example of a classic Lancer archetype, where like she's not quite she's not like a Raph. Uh, oh, she's, she's certainly not, not a Reza. Yeah. Um, she's sort of like a weird mixture of the two. So I'd maybe put her like D tier. C tier <laughs> or the show correctly. Which one? C or D? C, maybe line between C and D. Mm. It's been a while since I've gone back and no, watched that's Stormhawk. fair. I I think she's like. Uh, <laughs> I recall that she was a more interesting character than perhaps I expected from the show. <laughs> um, but uh. I don't remember that her she did anything particularly fancy in the Lancet department. Mostly what we just got was, like, cute reinforcements of the fact that she and Arrow were, like, besties. Uh, with, I guess, yeah, like, I think no they, romantic they had, subplot? Like, a good, like, bestie dynamics. I mean, the show was only, like, a season long. But, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, they had the opportunity to turn it into, like, a thing, and then it's just, like, instead, like, they're just holding hands over the abyss, and it's like, yeah. Um, Chad's got Miles Edgeworth a few times. I remember seeing him on an <laughs> earlier draft of the list. Do you want to make that the uh, yeah, last one? So Miles, sure. Yeah, uh, Miles Edgeworth from Ace Attorney. He's the, um, like prosecutor that you face off against pretty much frequently throughout the first game. Yeah, um, he's like your your he's... husband slash rival yeah, forever. He's like your old friend from law school. Old friend from like he's <laughs> why you went to law school. He's I've read got the lore. A tragic backstory. Oh, the most tragic. Is he's accused of murder at one point then you get him out of the charge for murder and then his attitude towards you changes but he never stops being like goff what are you doing here <laughs> entirely he just sort of like more his animation just starts mournfully looking to the side instead yeah. of looking always peeved and above it all um he just starts looking all like awkward a pretty... and <laughs> yeah that's not like i like you uh, or anything, phoenix right i think he suffers from the fact that he doesn't quite become like a true lancer for the first bit of the game he's kind of just a straight up antagonist because for the game you know you're uh the defense and you go into trials against the prosecution and most of those trials involve miles and then as soon as you defeat him and a new prosecutor comes in for you to be against then miles can start being a part of your little team but even then he doesn't really ever like necessarily join the squad so to speak i'm sorry <laughs> chat just said unnecessary feelings and i know what that's a reference to <laughs> yes there is a line where he describes unnecessary feelings i'm not here because to comment on whether or not miles and phoenix are dating that's for someone smarter <laughs> than me to debate <laughs> what, we're gonna have it's to definitely do implied <laughs> we could have ranked lancers based on how much romantic tension they have with that's a whole different leader. tier list it's <laughs> that's like, that's like change up every single one <laughs> I think Inuyasha's um, still in about the same place, Kevin. Well, well, Ke- not Kevin, because he and Gwen have the thing. Uh, Riza. Arguably, you could say that Batman still gets to stay there. <laughs> Fox, probably debatable. Uh, eh. Yeah, no, I'd say Miles is like, like he's Spock got a lot higher. of the classic um, traits. He's got a lot of the <laughs> classic Lancer uh, attitudes and aesthetics. He's like the goth one compared to your normal law attire. Oh, I yeah. assume. Goth. I don't know a lot about the legal system. Everyone uh, knows the most goth <laughs> suit you can wear is pink with ruffles. Compared to just a straight up suit? Yeah, it's. it's <laughs> is that, that, that's. I mean. It's whimsy goth, right? It's a whole subculture. <laughs> Back uh, in my day, they called that shit pastel goth and they liked it. No, pastel or goth gothic and Lolita. Goth are two different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> I've got my shrimp scampi to get to. No, uh, I, Miles is like, I think, a perfectly adequate Lancer, but not an exceptional one. Oh, boy. Cutting. Uh, I put him like C tier, maybe. C tier? All right. Uh, he, he suffers from not having a lot of opportunities to actually play the Lancer to the player character who he's who he would objectively be the Lancer to. Right. Because the player character is wandering around the game, playing the game, just... and Miles is locked into whatever location the story demands he be at any given moment, and he's not always, he's usually not with you. You have a different tag along kid. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, my entire OBS just froze for a hot second. <laughs> the whole chart go shift over. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to not make it go I wrong. Think it'd be very funny if it was just overlapping the letters. I think that'd be a very humorous place. <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? I love Edgeworth chat, but he's Lancer wise is Lancing is Lance Lancerness is not his strong point. 
We've been streaming for a while. <laughs> we have been. Okay, OBS finally unfroze its thing, and I can Woo. I can fix the stuff. Okay, huh. where are we put Edgeworth? See, we could do See, that. Yeah, I hope that feels right. All right, don't break everything. I'm trusting <laughs> you. Oh, she ain't moving. <laughs> she ain't moving. Oh God, <laughs> what's happening? All right, we're fine. Everything's cool. It's <laughs> going in okay. Good you gotta think of God. a better way to list these tier list things. No, everything's cool and normal. It, I think it would actually be more complicated to do anything else. Um, oh my God. Uh, well, I don't want to keep you from your shrimp scampi, but I will say that chat has, uh, at various points, volunteered every member of the core OSP crew. <laughs> um, All right. Well, we can place those if you want, but then after that, I definitely have to get back to my shrimp scampi. Honestly, chat, I, yeah. Let me eat dinner, chat. <laughs> I think it's much funnier. I'm begging funnier. you. <laughs> I think the real chat, bad boy move. I just want to eat some shrimp. <laughs> I, I went out, I went, I it was a very adult move of me. I went to the supermarket. I was like, what should I get? I had my list. Like, I got was on my list. And then I walked past, I walked past the seafood. And I was like, I never get anything from here. But there was, a, it was a sale. It was frozen shrimp. It was on sale. And chat, I made shrimp scampi. It was a whole thing. Chat, chat, I'm begging you. <laughs> Let me go have my solo Lancer arc of eating the shrimp scampi I made yesterday. <laughs> chat. This is going to be your tragic eyes, backstory chat. for future Lancer activities. Oh, God. Um. Oh, man. Uh, well, I think the true bad boy maneuver would be to leave chat forever unsatisfied on where we would rank ourselves and each other on the Lancers tier list. Um, Say the word, and I will go leave and start heating up my shrimp. <laughs> I think we're about to. I think we're about to end the stream. So <laughs> thank you all for tuning in for just over four hours. We're gonna let Indigo Woo. go to her her tasty notion. Uh, I do. It's yes. Very lemony. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, and and uh, obviously the vod will be up. So. Uh, if you just caught the tail end of the stream, uh, feel free to go back and watch it from the beginning once we end the stream. Very oh, yeah. soon. Thank you to everyone in chat Ooh, who recognizes my yeah. status as the edgy red-themed Lancer. I see you. But of course, to everyone who's saying that Indigo is the true bad boy of OSP, you are 100% correct. Oh, that's strange. Because there's nothing I... more bad boy than constantly insisting you're the bad boy. <laughs> that's strange. I, I don't really see many of those uh any of those comments scrolling by. Well, maybe. Oh, so much oh, bye everybody. Seeing some old cast true bad boys. <laughs> <laughs>